Mystery. Good morning. Are you playing uh, Catch a Rising Star in Providence, Rhode Island, my friend? This week, yeah, man. Nice. Yeah. Catcharisingstar.com. But, Thursday, uh, Friday, Saturday. Providence, you got a chance to see Patrice O'Neill. Very, very cool. Is that a new club? Uh, no. Okay. Now, Patrice was talking about the, uh, we like to call them the Devil Rays still. The Devil Rays. Tampa Bay Rays. They just oh, call they, them the Rays. Did they, they, did they change the name for uh, yeah. religious reasons? I'm sure somebody complained or something, and uh, someone buckled. And just uh, like the Washington Bullets. Yeah, they had, they had the Washington uh, <laughs> Wizards because uh, the bullet bullet no, is very uh, yeah. makes people deadly nervous. Yeah, you gotta love that a team called themselves the Bullets. Yeah. It the, probably had nothing to do with crime. By speed no. or something like that. Or yeah, yeah. See, right. But it is a pretty accurate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Watch the team name. Yeah, sure. They have to change it just to change the feel. Yeah. The DC drive bys are playing the Phillies. <laughs> the Washington Bullets and they, they had the they had the cool bullet logo. They they were. They I, were I good. love that. The little the little bu- now it's you know the Wizards. Well now we got the Rays. The Rays are you know no still. devil. No, no, devil. no devil. You can't put any uh, Indian things in there. No woo woo. No, yeah. No woo woo like anymore. No warlike thing. No. I didn't know woo woo was a bad thing. It is. I didn't know this uh, was a oh. bad thing. Well, uh, well, pulling your corner of your eyes apart to imitate Asians is not really a bad thing, but mm. it is a bad thing. Then they get mad, yeah. They get angry. Yeah. But, you know, uh, a lot of uh, sports teams have been named after Indians. Kind of, you know, which is uh, which is actually a, a compliment. Yeah, because it's their warlike, right? Warlike mm-hmm. fighters. You're a warrior. You're out there battling. You, uh, and you want to emerge victorious. Sitting bull. Yeah. And uh, whatever the rest of them, them uh, Pocahontas. Poke. Well, that might <laughs> Geronimo. Be. Geronimo. 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 Um, well, the Redskins. Larry the Indian, who no one talks about. <laughs> what about Ted the Indian? I, I, <laughs> the, the dude that cries over garbage. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he was the manic depressive Indian. <laughs> Nothing to do with the garbage. The really upset garbage Indian. Uh, he was Chief actually... J. Strongbow. <laughs> <laughs> and his unknown cousin, Jewel Strongbow, who was around for a couple of years. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, you're going way back. <laughs> the girl on the Mazzola, yeah, the Mazzola butter thing. Yeah. The Lando Lakes butter. Oh, Lando Lakes. The Lando Lakes butter sure. girl. Yeah. And if you cut that right and folded it, you can make it look like her kneecaps were her boobs. <laughs> Which was a lot of fun when yeah, you were a little a kid. kid. Yeah. yeah. But if you're naming your team after some kind of Indian thing, you, you, you're, you're basically saying we're strong, War. we're fighters, we're, yeah. What else do they have? They try to race everything. So dumb. Yeah. But what, I'd like to name a team... <laughs> The, the Kentucky Escape Slaves. <laughs> the, the, the Nat Turners. That could be a problem. <laughs> the the Frederick Nat Douglasses. <laughs> I want to get them. <laughs> you imagine that? And, and the Harriet Tubmans are taking the field. <laughs> the Harriet Tubmans. Right. The Anne Franks are 0 7 so far. <laughs> Anthony, the new thing is just to t- cut out the knees and just put them up there as boobs. Oh, is that it? No, there was a, there was I know you used to fold it, but it, now yeah. they just they're, they're lazy, so they just cut out you the cut out the knees and pop and, them and in pop there. them up there as uh, yeah. boobies for the Lando Lakes uh, girl. We'll put that up on onaradio.com. Now the Devil Ray, well the de- the Rays. You were saying, wow, how exciting! I can't wait. It's gonna be the Rays and the Phillies. How can you wait? Oh, Tampa Bay versus Philly in the edge of world. my seat. Whew. They'll make more money. I'm helping baseball right now. They'll make more money if they put it in pay per view. Yeah. Other than, like you said, if they sell advertisement for the free uh, game, they'll yeah. make less money than if they sell a pay-per-view and only people in Philly and Tampa buy yeah. it. Those are the only people, only baseball fans yeah. in Philly and Tampa are going to watch this. No one cares. It's not like, you know, when you get the, the, you get the Yankees uh, Red Sox thing going. You know that that's a lot of Red people Sox. Watching. Anyone going is, yeah. is is much better than the Rays and Yankees. Anyone going? Sure. Or yeah. the, well, and we're gonna lose the Dodgers too. Which yeah, is a big market. That probably would have gotten and, some Yankee fans just to see how Tory of runs. Of course. The game. But the Manny Boston thing, if if the oh. if the Manny Boston thing would have been tremendous, mm-hmm. but no one told the Devil Rays and no one told. Did you see the thing though? The uh, Red Sox and I, and you know I love anything racial. Of course. That makes white people look bad, but I was reading it and I couldn't even understand. They would, 
I didn't understand what they were trying to make me be, were angry or <laughs> informed. It, MSN has a thing about how the, the Red Sox are, have no white, black people. Like, it's, is they racist or something? I don't. Wait, what are you trying to say? I don't know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> You're lost. What happened? It's the. It's Wasn't that about the lack of Latin players or something? No, like the that? lack of black players or something. The lack um, of, on like, the Sox? Latin they did at one point, too. They did a story on Latin. Nah, it wasn't Latin because there's the, everybody on the Red Sox is Latin. They almost. did it after there's many white people Latin. in Latin. Yeah, after many Latin. There's after no many, black people. Well, I don't think I don't think the black athlete wants to play in Boston for the most part. Oh, but they Jimmy the Greek. Jimmy the Greek. I was just gonna say, okay, Jimmy the Greek. Why don't you enlighten us? <laughs> you see, you see what they did back in the old days. All right, Jimmy. That was such a Jimmy take, the Greek. Uh, take statement. a bath. We don't play baseball anymore anyway for some reason. Look, I don't know what's, what's going on. What do you mean? Black people don't play baseball that much. Anymore. No? No, nah, the, the numbers are dwindling. They kind of went down and, you know, Dominicans and... and That's uh, a smart... Well, I had a son. I, I make him play golf or baseball. You can play baseball till you're 49. Yeah. No injuries. If you get a baseball injury, you're a sissy. <laughs> 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 What'd you do? You twist an ankle? Really? What happened? Mm -hmm. You ran against the wall going for a fly ball, <laughs> stupid? The bridge of your nose hurts now? Yeah, look at these football players that are rolling around in wheelchairs. Are you yeah. They call football players old at 32, like, uh, what's the boy name? Uh, Tony Gonzalez from Kansas City wants to get traded. And, try and they go, well, you know, we don't know if we can get full value for him. He's 32 now. It's like, 32? 32. Do you know that's a young man? So if he retires at 35, do you? what is he? Yeah. He's a what? young, he's just a big, young, yeah, what you, old man. What are you that's doing in life at that point? All those guys just open up car dealerships in some crappy little town somewhere and hope that pans out. Mm -hmm. Shakes hands with people. Hey, I'm the guy. Remember, there's pictures of him, like, on the walls of his office in the car dealership playing football. <laughs> and if you weren't training yourself to be a dude who knows how to talk, at the end of your career, yeah, yeah. You can't even get a job. No, because that's why. Again, I'll go with the car dealership thing. You go to we we've traveled around a lot, and you go to some of these markets, and you watch TV, and you see these guys that used to be sports figures, and they're selling cars because they own the dealership now. It's like you'll definitely score <laughs> when you come down to my car dealership. We have touchdowns and savings. Lynn Swan Ford. <laughs> try Lynn yeah. Swan Ford. They're just trying their best to, to blurt something intelligible out. Like, come down. You'll be driving like I used to drive over the goal line. It's like, all right. What, what is, we need another analogy. This is Jack Tatum Chevy. We break high prices back. <laughs> oh, God. You won't be able to move if you come <laughs> <laughs> you come on down to Jack Tatum. Oh, that's awful. Oh, oh that's awful. Oh. <laughs> oh, but some people are not prepared for the end of their career. Lawrence Taylor Chrysler. <laughs> come take a crack at our prices. <laughs> <laughs> We're breaking the legs of high prices. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh. oh, God, I'm so happy I don't know his name so I don't get in trouble. <laughs> There's an O.J. Simpson oh, slashing the no. price. Oh, oh, well, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know. <laughs> uh, and Pac-Man, like, he's... Pac-Man... Oh, God, what pa a... You know Pac-Man would be, like, in deep, real trouble if he wasn't playing football. He would be... He Dude, would, he's he, got, got he, he got suspended. He, he got suspended. Might yeah, be no, over. I know. He got suspended for beating up his bodyguard. It isn't was, even his bodyguard. Yeah, the Cowboys... Gave him a bodyguard to keep him out of trouble. Right. And he got in a fight with the bodyguard that's keeping him out of trouble. But the point I'm making is... This guy this is, is just this, trouble. But this is him behaving because he's in the NFL. If he yeah. was out on the streets, forget it. He'd be, he'd be oh. uh, away for life by now. <laughs> oh, this is him behaving. He's insane. Uh, but uh, come on, can you, do you dismiss it as insanity when... You, you got a million dollars and you can't stop. Like if somebody, <laughs> like they're telling them, don't do. It. Like if somebody said, Patrice, you're gonna lose everything if you need eat another banana nut, um, mm. chocolate chip muffin. Ooh. And that, you know, to uh, to almost just like everybody else, you go, all right, I'm not gonna eat that. <laughs> what? But if you said, Patrice, you risk everything for a nice, you know, Dunkin' Donuts flatbread turkey. Mm. <laughs> if you eat another one, it's over. Yeah. And you're just like, <laughs> uh, everybody else is like, okay, so it's like, <laughs> it's like Pac-Man. Hey, look, man, don't stab nobody else. Yeah. <laughs> or you're going to lose $10 million. <laughs>
Hey, no. hey uh, someone wants to defend my Jimmy the Greek statement. Uh, good. Uh, James in New Hampshire, help me out here. Hey, OB the Greek. I just want to give you some little support. I know uh, Tim Duncan of the Spurs actually has a clause in his contract that says he cannot be traded to Boston. There you go. Proving my wow. point. Why would he have that? Because he doesn't want to play. In Boston. That's the old school Boston. It's, I don't know. This is not the Bill Russell Boston. Which, Maybe it's the Celtics thing, though. He may be which, held to hate the Celtics. Which Celtic did they pull over because he was driving a really nice car? D. Brown. Was it oh. D. Brown? I know all the race. I know every. <laughs> I know the racist timeline in Boston starting with. My earliest memory was me, yeah. and then um, <laughs> and then the next one was uh uh What's, Charles Smith. What was Steve mm. Brown? He was on Route Nine. He was on Route Nine in, in Wellesley. In Wellesley, I was, oh, I was gonna say like. What was New he York. doing in Wellesley? Exactly. <laughs> he, he was just driving, driving through. Did he have like a nice Mercedes or J Jag or something? He had a really nice car. And the police, uh, the police pulled him over. Going, there's no way a black guy can have a nice and car. And Bill like Russell that. Told, called him a. Uh, he said, "Stop crying." They used to egg Bill Russell's house on a regular basis really? as he's winning championships. He, he, won, he won him what, like 15 championships? 12 million right. championships. Right. And they egg his house and break his windows and, <laughs> sto and stole his rings. Did they steal his rings? <laughs> they stole his goddamn rings. They stole his rings. Is that true? Yes. Stole his championship rings uh, out of Boston. Oh, that's oh, great. Oh, my God. Am I going to scream about that November 15th when I'm up there doing that show? It's all over. Yeah. Oh, Jimmy. <laughs> Love Boston. <laughs> so, I, wait a minute. Are you doing... Wait, that's Comments Come Home that time. I'll be up there. Uh oh. oh. Common Come Home is the same day. Oh, oh, I believe so. Oh, good, good job, agents uh, of mine. <laughs> Wonderful. I wonder I'm not <laughs> sold out. <laughs> we get back to the Bill Russell thing. So he's winning championships. They're egging his house. Uh, they, he hates Boston. And how do they for steal that? his rings? They went in his house. Because <laughs> he lived in Wellesley. The <laughs> doors are open. They, you, it's against the law to have locks in Wellesley. <laughs> so they just walked up in his uh, house. How great is it that he's on that court with his blood and the sweat? Yep. And, and the robber's like, well, we know he's not coming home because he's winning the city winning another in, championship. Went in there and took his damn rings. <laughs> oh, my God. He took one of his 11 rings. <laughs> damn. His thumb ring they stole. <laughs> Those dirty, rotten uh, guns uh, out there. We got more on the Duncan thing. Dennis. Helping yeah. out my Jimmy the Greek thing. Go ahead, uh, Dennis. The, the reason Duncan doesn't want to play there is because Russ, because Bill Russell wasn't allowed to live in um, certain areas in White Boston. Yeah. When he was winning eleven championships for the city, and the Red Sox were the last team to have a black player like fifteen years after Jackie Robinson. <laughs> the game. Yeah, this is where so I grew up. Do you understand why I'm angry? Is, does it make sense? That was great about the Jackie Robinson thing. Like, all right, Jackie Robinson comes uh, comes around, and then. You know, then there's a, a bunch of teams like, eh, we'll give it a year or two. But giving it 15 years. 15 years, Boston <laughs> waited. It's amazing. You want to be a little careful, like, I don't know, but 15 years. Like, <laughs> First black player was Jim Rice. <laughs> yeah, right. it, I don't get it, man. Is, is that Wait, 15 years after the last, after Jackie Robinson? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. After after wow. they broke the color barrier, that's a whole that's a whole career for somebody. Some another black yeah. dude started his career and retired before Boston. <laughs> and Boston's like, all right, I guess it's gonna be okay. And y'all call it the Babe Ruth curse. It really is the we're a racist town curse. <laughs> <laughs> so, some black person put a curse on the thing until I don't know what happened. Yeah. Right it off, I guess, because uh, Manny and, and and Ortiz finally kind of made it. Yeah. All right. Black. Let's, uh, let's say hi to. I, us. I had a good joke, but it's. No? I filtered it. <laughs> yeah. Instead of Curse of the Bambino. <laughs> ah, so, curse of the... Mm, yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Are you loud and clear? Very good. <laughs> let's, go to, let's go to D.C. Uh, home of the Baltimore Bullets. Baltimore Bullets. <laughs> oh, Washington <laughs> neighborhood. Uh, yeah, but it used to be the Baltimore Sam. Bullets back in the day. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah, it was. Was it? Uh, Steamer, what's up? Hey, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, and Patrice, this one's for you since we're doing the racial card thing. The uh, racial, racial card? I'm sorry. Could, could you not dismiss this as a card when we just was stating facts? You, do you accept You're those facts? You're the race card, Did, Do you accept those facts that Bill Russell had his ring stolen in Boston, D. Brown got pulled over in Wellesley for no reason, uh, that, that the Red Sox... Didn't put a black play on the thing till 15 years after the color well, line. Well, look that up. Is that a, is that a race card? Did somebody get out of jail? What are you talking about? The race card. <laughs> Those rings. Are okay. I, what are you talking about? 
No, hey, Patrice, I'm on your side, man. I'm, on I'm, your I'm side. sure you are. Go yeah. ahead. I just wanted to share with you that the, uh, when, when the Boston Braves moved to Atlanta, they were considering naming the team after the original baseball team in Atlanta, which would have been the Atlanta Crackers. Really? Yeah, but... It, uh, well, <sighs> all right. Well, you know what Cracker is, right? Mm-hmm. You know I've that, heard but, things, uh, the what, the whip cracking? Yeah, the crack of the whip. Is it really, though? It's absolutely. It's not saltines. N- like, people think it's, you're named after the white crack. No, it's, it's the crack of the whip. Yeah. We, that was the guy. What we get, call a whipper. We got the story on the black player for the Red Sox. The Boston Red Sox, <laughs> this is just hilarious, I'm sorry, <laughs> were the last Major League Baseball team to integrate their roster. In 1959, 12 <laughs> years after Jackie Robinson broke the league's color barrier, barrier by joining the Brooklyn Dodgers, the Red Sox brought infielder Pumpsy Green up for the minors. <laughs> Pumpsy Green? <laughs> Pumpsy Green. Come to Pumpsy Green Chrysler. Because that's what was in his back, all kind of pump shot. Pumpsy. Big Pumpsy. They, he Pumpsy Green. Uh, oh, my God. 12 years. That's where I grew up. Twelve years after Jackie <laughs> Robinson. That's where I grew up, man. I understand that you're two. You're you're not so sure. Pumpsy. I was going to play in your city, but twelve years later. And 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 the the new Celtics, all black, all black. And yeah. and, and it, I, I like to add, sit down with a nice card carrying white person from Boston, a real one that will have a real conversation. Ask him how yeah. he really feels about that. It was a big. It was a big parade and everything when they won. But I'd like to s- just sit down with a nice dude from a uh, Sully oh, from, from uh, Sally or from something, Saturn yeah. Hill and go, what did you really feel, dude? Not one white dude was significant, you know, on the team. Like, if it really does uh, that way. It, it, yeah, I'm curious. For, I'm, I'm really, I don't know. I don't know because I can't really get a nice, only honest racial thing I can get is coming in here, get a good, honest. Uh, I bet for that, a, a white, like, Celtics fan like that, it's <laughs> It's the Celtics. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, the Celtics. Yeah. They're, <laughs> You know, it's like an Irish thing, and there's just a bunch of black guys <laughs> on the team. They probably should change the name of the team. Uh, yeah. You know. It's like they really should. That is, it's the, like, the, glory be, glory be, I'm part of, I'm part of the Boston <laughs> It's like, that doesn't make sense, a bunch yeah. of Irish guys running around. See, they're keeping their racism alive up there, uh, because they really should change that name. Uh, bl- black coach. All black. I don't know if it was a white. I think the white guy, the one white guy on the team, I think is um he was a center. I forgot his name. Uh, I don't but he know. was on. He wasn't even on the playoff roster. <laughs> they had. I think Scalabrini was on there, and another dude, and they weren't even on the playoff roster. So it was all black. What about Pumpsy? <laughs> Pumpsy Green. Pum- Pumpsy. Good old Pumpsy. Green. I love the fact that the first guy they get is named Pumpsy Green. Yeah. Like they wouldn't have just held out for some guy with just you know I don't know Bob yeah. Smith. <laughs> Yo, we Pumpsy Green. He only played five seasons in May. Yeah. yeah, all for how, how, how did Pumpsy do? Wait, what was this? wait, the New York Mets picked him up in '63. The Mets picked up Pumpsy Green for six, 17 games. He only got eight at bats his whole time in Boston. <laughs> <laughs> his hands was full of cotton. What's up, Dan? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pump, pump. You got some Pumpsy Green info, Danny? Wait, yeah, I was just reading up a little bit. Jimmy's not too far off. They pretty much used him as like a pinch runner. Oh. And like use them as like a day off guy, so when one of like one of the other guys wanted a day, they, they would put, put him pump C. C. and they really pinched him. That's what they would do. They would sit there and <laughs> pinch him as he's trying to hit. It's a pinch hitter. <laughs> they would hit him and pinch him. Uh, they would talk about him right in front of him. Oh, you ought to see him run. We throw him on the base. He runs right around. Yeah, yeah, put your amazing. hand up for him to stop. <laughs> old Pumpsy sitting there. Pumpsy. Poor Pumpsy. Can you imagine? Being so insignificant that you don't, no one knows who the first black player for the South. For the oh, the he uh, he only had 196 <clears throat> hits in his career, and they picked up a sucky black guy. Yeah, yeah. they just did it to because they were probably getting starting to get some <laughs> civil rights pressure from who. Them. Back in uh, fifty, what was it? Nine, fifty-nine. I bet late. It was just no civil started rights cranking. Mm, just nah. started cranking. That, no, it was no like. There, yeah, there was no like uh uh, uh what p- p- political correct pressure from back then. It was money pressure back then. No yeah. one like goes. And why they pick up black pumpsy. people into the? People I have no Why would they get pumpsy? Pumpsy sucked. <laughs> sucky <laughs> ass pumpsy. Sucky. Pumpsy stunk. Sucky. Good ass. old pumpsy green. Oh, whack ass pumpsy. pumpsy could run. Let's say hi to Scott in Boston. Whoop. Scott, what's going on? How you doing? Hey, I had a friend of mine. His dad worked in the clubhouse back in the late seventies. And they 
segregated back then. They had George Scott, Jim Rice, Louis Tiant, and I'm not sure who else, but like in separate area of the clubhouse. Segregated them, put like four lockers together. Come and on. had those guys, set, I swear to God. When Jim Rice was playing? Come on. Oh, yeah. Maybe they yep. just chose to like I'm hang out you. together. <clears throat> I'm telling you. That's uh, no lie. Mm -hmm. All right, I don't know mm -hmm. if that's true. Mikey, what's going on? I'm fascinated with Pumpsy Green. Oh, it's all about Pumpsy Green. <laughs> I, I am fascinated with Pumpsy, Pumpsy Green. We, I want to know everything it's about, all about Pumpsy, Pumpsy Green. Where he came from, where was sure. he born, what yeah. did he do? Yeah. You know he was born down south. Oh, yeah. No what? way he wasn't born down south. What? Oakland, Oakland, Oakland yeah. California, Pumpsy. Oh no, man, that's a that's that's a that's a southern name. Oakland. There's no way he was born in Pumpsy. Oakland. What do you mean, Oakland, Missouri? Uh, yeah, Oakland. His name is Elijah. Elijah. Yeah, Pumpsy. but why get Pumpsy? Yeah, we need to know everything about him. Why Pumpsy? Why he meant Pumpsy? something awful in Boston? And <laughs> oh, that I'm when sure. He landed and they like a. It's a nickname his mother gave him when he was a little kid. Yeah, what, but why? Biography. How do you know this? I'm He's stunt brain. That's, that's Wikipedia. You can get anything. You know. Uh, uh, Mike. Pumpsy brain. <laughs> what, what do you got, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> Mike. Yeah. Mike. What do you got, Mike? Hey, what's up? I'm uh, Mike Davis from Boston. I'm a diehard Celtics fan, yeah. a white Irish kid, and I could not be happier that they got Kevin Garnett and Ray Allen and Paul Pierce. The last jersey I bought was uh, Larry Bird. How old are you, though? Know? <laughs> last so, jersey was I, Larry Bird. When I was in college, Bird. until Kevin Garnett came to the team, and I could not be happier. How old are you? I'm 30. And where are you from? From Boston. No, no, no. What part of Boston? Somerville. Uh, yeah, he could be a car carrier. This is a, I mean, that's a decent <laughs> car, story. Car because carrier. Because <laughs> Somerville is near Cambridge. A, a lot, a lot of you know, a mm -hmm. lot of salad eaters in Cambridge. You know, like yeah. the, that's the intellectual the more, the part more of town. Open Somerville is the almost the the yeah, I don't know the poor part of Cambridge sort of yeah. thing. I'm not sure I'm accepting him mm -hmm. as like. Because he's a 30-year-old guy from Somerville. He's not really a car carrier. Mm -hmm. I need a 40-year-old white guy from Savin Hill, uh, Dorchester, or uh, <clears throat> not even Wellesley. I need a hardcore white boy from, from South of Boston. Is Dorchester a hardcore South Yes, yeah, Savin Hill, Dor uh, Quincy. Oh. I want a Quincy guy. Sure. A, a, um, a Quincy guy, a Savin Hill guy. Um, white part of Dorchester guy. Mm -hmm. Um, would you be a welcomed neighbor in Savin Hill? I don't. I'm not, well, see, the... this is weird thing. Savin Hill. Uh, there's parts of Dorchester. There's uh, you know, oh, you'd be open arms. There's Mattapan and Dorchester <laughs> where the black people are. Then there's the Dorchester by Quincy where the white people are. That's Savin Hill. All that area. So 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 Quincy. Uh, <clears throat> maybe. Maybe a little bit of uh, Peabody, <laughs> where Nick DiPaolo and them are from. Like, all that Route 1. You know, <laughs> s s s Revere. 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 Sure. See, I want a Revere guy. To do what? Just to, just to say, come on, man, talk to me. Be, be, be incognito and just talk a, a car-carrying 40-year-old white guy. Who who was happy to see all black do or maybe even a fifty year old white guy wow. who was happy to see the Celtics with all black and it, it really didn't matter. All right, we got something <laughs> to do today. John and Marilyn, what's up? Hey yeah, guys. You know, here in Boston we've come a long way. We went from Pumpsy Green to Coco Crisp. <laughs> <laughs> was that? Yeah. Coco Crisp, yeah. yeah. Good old Coco and, Crisp. And, wow. And you, notice yeah. How, how much, you notice how much he looks like Sam? Uh, <laughs> nice. Let's go to Casey in Virginia. Casey. Yes. Hi. Hi. Um, I just want to tell you guys, like, I'm from Redneck, Missouri, and I married a guy from Malden, and they're the most racist people I've ever met. In my life. <laughs> <laughs> you would think the hits would be bad, but seriously, I go to Malden, and it's crazy racism there. Uh, That's all Revere over there, yeah, Malden. What we noticed about Boston, man, they they just separate everyone very mm. nicely. The blacks oh, yeah. are in one area, the the Jews are in one area. Oh, we're the, surrounded. The uh, blacks what? are surrounded by yeah. Greater Boston. It's it's just yep. amazing, though. The Irish are over here. Amazing. I've never seen such a segregated. We're city. in the middle, and 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 it's just some. It's just really. Yeah. Oh boy. Let's say hi to Marky Mark from Boston. Marky Mark. 
Hey, what's going on? Hey. Yo, so um, I just want to take notice to the fact that that Patrice is totally right about the Celtics. You know, the whitest they can get here uh, in Boston uh, with a bunch of black people on the team. Now, I got no problem with black people, but all my friends are all fruits, and they're all like, "Whenever bring the fact," I'm like, "Yo, we're in the Celtics. Got a bunch of black guys. We even got a sign roster guy who's white." The fact that I bring that up, I'm called a racist <clears throat> in Boston. Uh, what the <laughs> heck, guys? Is, is, is that racist? I ain't a racist guy here. But come on. That's uh, that's geez, yes, you are. You sound very open-minded. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Am I racist? Yeah. I'm not a racist guy over here. <laughs> we got Larry in Boston. He's saying he's a car-carrying white guy. Okay. Uh, Larry, what, what part of Boston? I was born and brought up in the North End. Is that good enough? Ooh, All right, that's pretty oh, good. Natalia. Oh, boy. That's Larry. Oh, Larry. boy. He sounds like he knows uh, Whitey Bulger in them. Yeah. Oh, boy. Okay, he's he's a car carrier. Yep. He's in the North End. I can't even, I have to go around the city because there's a toll that gets you to the airport on time. I got to be very careful yeah. and go around, all the way around yeah, yeah, to yeah, the back way to get like... to Logan. <laughs> I can't even, I can't even get a good sausage over there. Yeah, listen, listen, man. I grew up in the era, era of John Havlicek, guys like that, Bill Walton. And back then, and back then, really the only, on the Celtics, back then, the only, Decent black player was Jojo White. Well, if you want to go that far back, I'm 47 years old. I'm going pretty far back. All right, all right, Jojo, right, Jojo, so, and uh, so are you happy that the Celtics have a black team? It, it, I'm not unhappy or happy. I'm happy that the Celtics have a good team of players. Color don't make no difference. Color doesn't make any difference unless you know up, it's the house next I up, door. I, grew up growing up, I went to Boston Latin School. All right. <laughs> I grew up, I had a lot of black friends, and I know saying that now makes me a racist. Right. But, no, you know, not necessarily, but I get you. But you know what? But you know what? I was, I was, I was born, born, uh, brought up in a different era. You know, back then there was a lot less tolerance than there is now between the races. Uh, maybe tolerance. there's a lot of. Let me ask you, <laughs> let me ask you a quick question. When did right. when did your day of tolerance happen? Like not not the fact that the law made you tolerant, but the fact that you said, "Man, I'm tolerant now." When did that happen? I, no, no, no. I, there was a, I was never in that situation because I'm not I'm colorblind. I was never in that situation. That didn't affect me. This is amazing that everyone from Boston that's calling is just so progressive and yeah. open minded. Yeah, and sure. There's not one guy that's just not, like, you know, not, "Hey." I'm not, I'm not Hey, listen, I'm not saying that. I hung around with guys from Southie, man, where where nobody of any race other than white could walk through. Never mind, not just black. Nobody of any race. I hung around with guys like that, but that just wasn't <clears> me personally. Right. All right, Larry. I mean, my, my neighborhood was like that, but that wasn't me. All right, Larry, we got to get to a couple others. The phones, everybody wants to talk about this. Uh, we got, I'm white, I will talk to Patrice. I'm from South Boston. We got Nikki. Nikki! Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? Pretty good. Yeah, I grew up in South Boston, actually an old colony, and uh, that Ooh. last guy was a real sweetheart compared to... Uh, <laughs> Wait a minute. Was you, How old are you, and did you live anywhere near D Street Projects? D.C. Projects? D Street. D Street. D Street? Well, yeah, I mean, it's close. It's a couple blocks away, but um, I, I grew up there in the 80s, so it was really bad when I was around. He's, and, a, car, uh, he's a car carrier. <laughs> yeah, my father grew up there during the whole uh, busing issues and everything. Father, so. oh boy. So you, uh, Ray Flynn, my father knew Ray Flynn, <laughs> Kevin White. Oh, Jesus. All right, yeah. all right let's hear uh, what let's, he got to say here. Go ahead, Nikki. Yeah, I'm sure his heart changed, too. <laughs> see, the whole Celtics thing, I mean, people don't even pay attention to it anymore because it's sort of a black sport, so we don't even really pay attention to it. That's the rational, that's a real car-carrying rationalization. Yeah. This guy's a real white guy. It's like, yeah, uh, you know, that makes sense. It's Bruins and Red Sox where I'm around, so that's it, man. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, basically what he said is, anywhere where white people still have hope, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is the sports where white people still dominate, that's the ones they pay attention to the we, white guy. We, we root for the astronauts. <laughs> 
<laughs> he just wrote off basketball yeah. on the whole. Just the whole. It's theirs now. Sport. You're kidding, dog. Whatever. <laughs> you got to pick your battles. <laughs> it ain't like when Larry Bird played. And, boy, he was smart. It was yeah. much smarter then. Now it's a bunch of running and jumping. All right. <laughs> Let's do one more. Steve in Boston, how are you? He's uh, very happy. Uh, what are you happy about, Steve? Now I'm a little confused here. Well, I'm just very happy that Larry Bird is one of the greatest Celtics, and he's white, and Kevin McHale. I love Larry Bird is my favorite basketball player of all time, but I, it still Larry has Bird nothing to do with it. Threes all day. I love Larry Bird. Are, are you uh, you were happy when the Celtics were white? I mean, yeah. I mean, they had a time, but they're being <laughs> It's a different age now. I mean, you got yeah, it's Oz. It belongs to us. It's Oz. Patrice hit on something. It's Oz. We. <laughs> I'm trying. Oh, that's Look, funny. What is what is yeah, Boston doing? Fair. They got to get some <laughs> white players <laughs> on the team, even if they sit on the bench. Let to me, get people in the stands. They need a white guy hero in Boston. If they're yeah. not acceptable, <laughs> it's just, you can't have just all black. If there was a white guy that came off the bench, they would have made him spectacular. <laughs> they need a white guy hero. Hasn't been one since. Oh, uh, that's really, really The good. only black guy hero they was looking for was Lynn Bias. Black Boston was ready for Lynn Bias yeah, if he didn't what die. what happened there. Yeah, yeah, if he didn't die. Yeah, let's he go played to... for what, Boston University? <clears throat> no, nah, he played for Maryland. He was a, he would have been, he, was he would have been the Jordan. He was better than Jordan in, in college. Dude. Oh, really? Lynn Bias was a beast. Some people say. A beast. Yep. Bill in Boston, what do you got? Hey, yeah, I just wanted to, uh, grew up in uh, East Boston. I live in Memphis. Uh-oh. And, uh, I got buddies. I'm not a big basketball fan, but I got friends of mine who are fanatical about it. They won't watch the Celtics on TV. They'll listen to him on the radio. <laughs> and, change, and change Garnett's name to Bird at their, in their own mind. <laughs> Kevin Bird. <laughs> on radio. They you sounded make... a lot taller on the radio. <laughs> Where's Sheriff Branford? <laughs> on radio, they can make believe they're a white team. <laughs> <laughs> they want watch the, uh, the score scroll on the bottom of another channel. <laughs> <laughs> There's my white Celtic. <laughs> but they're black. I don't know they're black. Uh, I only listen to him on the radio. Coach Doc Holliday. What? <laughs> Doc Rivers. <laughs> some, <laughs> some white sports center where they just change all the names to make them nice and white. Oh, God damn. Never have to hear We're not all names. retired up yeah. Well, Kevin Garnett uh, sounds funny, Irish. Man. That sounds like an Irish name. Oh, gosh. Well, you know, the same right, guy gave him that name. Mm. So. Jeez. <laughs> Uh, and know what's funny about uh, Pumpsy Green, by the way, Ant? Uh, what? The name? This is how far behind uh, the Red Sox were. Uh-huh. They went with the first black hockey player in Boston before they went with the first black baseball Did they? player. What? Yeah, what was his name? Wow. Willie, Willie Zamboni driver. <laughs> <laughs> Cleophas Zamboni. He was walking across the ice. They're like, look, we got one. <laughs> the Willie O'Ree story. <laughs> Willie O'Ree. I believe, what was it? Uh, uh, <laughs> they used to make them go lick the ice <laughs> before they get it. They, they put a different letter on the front of his uniform. <laughs> 1958, he was the first black hockey player. In Boston, had the first black hockey player. <laughs> they wow. The, they decided to get the first black hockey player before they went with the first black uh, Red Sox. Oh, that poor guy. Oh, man. Yeah. That must have been that something. That poor guy. The, the crap that must have been yelled he out from those He must have had stands. hockey blade cuts oh. all over his nose oh. and eyes. They, they probably beat him. <laughs> oh. No teeth. Because that's the only <laughs> sport you can get away with really you know, having a fight. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's part of the he sport. He must have been the toughest. Toughest man oh, yeah. on planet Earth. Tougher than 10 Kimbo slices because he this played was, in a sport where you can fight. This position was puck. <laughs> We're only five minutes into the first period, and this is Willie O'Ree's fifth fight. <laughs> <laughs> and he hasn't even gotten off his own bench yet. <laughs> right. Right. Just, oh, my oh, this God. poor guy. That poor swollen man. <laughs> he Willie. spends more time in the penalty box than any other player. <laughs> Uh, like, what happened? Uh, <laughs> the same penalty as the white guy got. Why do I? Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, Boston. Uh, Are you, this got to be a lie. There's no way. Where's a picture of him, Danny? It's, it's true. The oh, Willie, yeah, look at him go. The Willie O'Ree story. Yes. Oh, you can't be. Yes. You can't be. Oh, my God. 
Willie O'Ree. All right, we got to take a break. Uh, yeah, take a little breaky. little break. Uh, we got Ludacris coming in. You're going to help us out with Ludacris? What do you need? I don't know. You don't know? I know he's in Max Payne. <clears throat> Oh, he's, he's in the new Max Payne. Yeah, we like the Max Payne, but, uh, you know. That Pac-Man Jones fight happened, uh, it was either at, right after one of his parties or at it. Oh, really? Ludacris? Yeah, I think so. Ludacris, yeah. Ludacris is, is what they call a renaissance man in, uh, hip hop now. He's, uh, yeah. He's, I don't know if he's as high as Jay-Z, but he's, he's a, he's about there. He's a mogul. And I think he's trying to retire from hip hop. He's, he's, a, he's getting to that point. I think. He's a good actor. All right, we'll continue with Patrice O'Neill. Uh, Patrice <coughs> is going to be at Catch a Rising Star in Providence, Rhode Island. Go to catcharisingstar.com. Thank you, sir. This All week. Right. All right, stay there. Opie and Anthony. That's what he's promoting today, right? Yes. Very cool. Opie and Anthony, yeah. Patrice O'Neill in studio already. 877-212-ONA is our phone number. Uh, Joe B. from Philly. Here we go. Is it a coincidence that uh, the U.S. is about to have its first black president, and for the first time in our history, the U.S. has bad credit? Oh, damn. See? But he has nothing to shut See? up. See? By the way, I learned a new thing, a new uh, term. What? Called the Bradley effect. Never the heard of Bradley that Bradley effect. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. Never them. heard of the Bradley effect. Can I tell effect. you what the Bradley effect is? I think. Don't kill him, Tiger. It's uh, the people that uh, will go in the voting booth and do the complete opposite of what they're telling all their friends. Lying polls. That's right. Governor oh. Bradley was running. For, uh, I think uh, Tom Bradley was running for governor of California. He was leading in the polls by 4,000. Yeah. Oh, according, boy. according to your people. Yeah. They were right. all going to vote for him. Went and closed that curtain. And whoops. And said, hell fell no, on I the can't white vote man, for but, Bradley. Exactly. You know, that would be a great strategy because uh, if, if their confidence is so boosted by poll numbers, they won't be as aggressive uh, in their campaigning, especially in the, the last few days of the, the campaign. They. They. You know what I mean. Those people? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, and <laughs> and they won't be as aggressive, which uh, will, will uh, hurt voter turnout and stuff. And then... Uh, Whitey, Tricky Whitey, goes into the booth and goes, uh uh and pulls the lever for, I uh, the always, white guy. I've always rejected polls, and I just, and that's why I just mm. don't, I have no faith that he'll be president, but yeah. I enjoy the whole. What would happen thing. if John McCain wins in a landslide? A landslide. Wait, what? Like, like, a uh, uh. What the hell is this? You heard of the Bradley effect, right? A ridiculous. Oh, just like. Reagan type oh, landslide, man. or. Oh, uh, they had a God, would that just be like, well, this, I'd love to hear the talking heads the next day where they would just be like, where is, Bob. what happened? I mean, this is just, uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh. Hey, before we move on, we got more on Willie O'Ree, the first black hockey player. Really? From back in 1958. How much more could there be? Well, fast, well, this is a great fact if it's true, and we need to find out. Fast Freddy writes, Willie O'Ree was the only right winger to ever wear a goalie mask during play. I believe that. It had to be true. <laughs> that was... That just was just taking slap shots for his face. Yeah. Oh, my... That's when hockey was all about not wearing anything. I mean, the goalies were barely wearing masks. He had to be the toughest person <laughs> on planet Earth, man. He had to be. There's Is that no true? way they weren't hitting him. Find out about the goalie mask at Willie O'Ree. They weren't chopping at his skin with those hockey sticks. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh, so, uh, getting back to, uh, to the election. So, the debate is tonight, yep. the last debate. Yep. And what do you From think? Hofstra. Is McCain going to lose his mind and go after him and call him uh, a terrorist and all that? Well, that's what? what they're saying. They were saying, uh, is this going to be the one where he you know, pulls out his uh, uh, relationships he's had with uh, s some radicals back in the day, some of those radicals? Mm -hmm. uh, but then they're saying, if he does that, then Obama can come out and say <laughs> that he was involved in... Uh, you know that whole uh, 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 the scandal. The White yeah. water? Was he a Keeney Clark? Yeah, yeah. Uh. That whole uh, debacle. So they they could both trade barbs that way. I don't know. I think I think people are bored with the economy talk out of these candidates because that's all they've been talking about. Because they just jump on and blame each other for it, and then you get uh, the market goes up a thousand points one day, and everybody kind of forgets that it's still mm, pretty treacherous. Yeah, but. Uh, I think they're going to have to come out and really, really kind of state their platform a little better, because it's all about finance. It's all about 
uh, what Obama's going to do with the economy and McCain. What other platforms no other, are there, though? But the, for, forever Terrorism. there's been everything. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, defending the country. Immigration. Yeah, immigration's a biggie. Their tax um, plans. And then the stupid what do you things where hear you try to get the French oh, there. I want to hear him talk about... Um, well, what do you want? In terms of what do I want from a candidate? I, I want I want to be able to uh, obviously exercise my Second Amendment right, which Obama wants to completely this is just guns take apart. Yeah, okay, not guns. It's the right to bear arms. Actually, go go. So go people ahead. go. Oh, guns, guns. You you gun people. No, I mean, I'm just saying. It's I mean, it was it's, it's, it's an outdated it's kind of thing. It was it's the number two. It was made it's number two. It was made during uh you know back when this country was actually fighting for freedom and they just needed guns. But we, we don't really need... Well, go, but go ahead. Sure, we need guns. We need guns and slaves. Go, go, keep going. Guns and slaves. <laughs> I didn't know they were... Well, that was part sorry of the Second that. Amendment? I mean, that was part of the whole... The um, thing, but, but go ahead. Taxes. Yeah, taxes are a big thing. I don't like the but idea what do you that, want from the tax thing? What uh, I'm asking you is not like what is your mental platforms that you want to be addressed by mine, i'd rather have a candidate that wants to cut the ridiculous spending that's going on in the country and not tax the crap out of uh uh companies that employ people out of people that have uh, made successes of themselves in this country and <clears throat> and then just take that money turn around and give it to people who uh, obama uh believes needs it you know, based on his judgment. Well, his that's that and his I'm, upbringing. I'm looking at this like uh, McCain. Two things that happened. Obama's committing to saying he's going to help out the middle class, which is actually the poor class. The lower class he's helping out. Now, now McCain, not, don't, McCain don't. is dancing around the fact that he wants to. He's going to try to help rich people keep their money. Mm -hmm. I. I can't imagine that if you go with a platform of poor people keeping their money, you can't win. It's not I would stick with poor people Patrice, keeping their money to, see, to go over rich people to keep their money. You're buying anytime. the crap, though. It's not rich it's people keeping crap, their money. It's all crap, but I'm saying if I'm going to say something, I'm going to say poor people are not going to get you're more You're buying time. the hype, though. It's not what rich hype? people keeping their money. It's employers of the country keeping up more of their money so they don't have to fire but uh, it's not but more it's people. Not, it's not the corporations. Yes, it is. It's middle class, l low business. It's it's those small businesses that we're not even concerned. They, we, you're talking corporations, mm -hmm. and but when you're talking about businesses, they're middle class too. Some some guy that owns a subway franchise. We, he's not talking about that. Yes, he is. He's not a rich guy. That guy's not a rich guy. According to Obama, he's making enough money to be considered one of those taxable rich people. Look, if you're making yes. if you're making a million dollars and somebody else is making a hundred thousand, the million dollar person needs to come out of their pocket. If if, if anybody does come out their pocket, somebody million dollars come out your pocket Patrice, more than a guy does. with fifty thousand. It, it does. We already give, man. Do you know every every quarter it's a ridiculous <laughs> amount of money? Oh, we already. <laughs> it's a ridiculous. <laughs> it's already there. Yes, it's they do. already there. We give the a rich, lot. The you? rich and the corporations <laughs> are paying a lot more taxes. Then the middle class and the poor. Let me ask you a question. So, mm -hmm. thirty-three percent of ten million dollars, mm -hmm. and thirty-three percent of sixty thousand mm dollars. You think that's a fair? It's that's not thirty-three percent for, for for who? For somebody making a million bucks? Thirty-three. Thirty-three percent. We'll take that deal Listen tomorrow. To talking thirty percent. We'll take I'll, that deal tomorrow. I will Patrice. kiss the ass of the politician that lets me pay thirty-three percent tax. Oh my God! It's a bit that's a at dream. least. At least. A 50-50 split with the government I'm doing right now. At least a 50-50 split. You don't have, like, a Cumia Incorporated or something to hide your money? There's no hiding it. it but I, I'm incorporated. I have a corporation. I have that. Yeah, what about the plumber? Did you see the plumber talking with Obama the other day? He is a plumber. He probably had his own business because he's ma he was in that bracket of, of making too much money as far as Obama's concerned. And he said, he goes, why should I have to give up my hard-earned money uh, for for you know, your your uh, programs and what you want to do, he goes. No, we gotta spread that wealth around. And he is just some poor ass plumber who made good. You know, he's making a good living, but it, he's not rich by any means. He's still going out and, and humping his ass in someone's uh, attic and, and basements every day. And and Obama says, well, what about the people behind you? We have to build them up. Since when is everyone entitled to be built up? On the money of other people that are working their asses off uh, uh, to to make uh, their money. But isn't I? Right, I'm I'm not far away from what you're saying. Mm -hmm. My my thing is, I right, if if we're dealing with like your story, 
Your story is. I got a weird story. That's but, but I'm ridiculous. saying most, a lot of people have your story though. Bum made good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. I wouldn't quite all, word it that way, a, but all right. Still all, bum, but rich. <laughs> we're all bums made good in, in, uh, essentially. That's, that's the American dream. I mean, exactly. I'm talking about this. I'm talking about, uh, y- you know, Nike, Nike or somebody or yeah. General Motors or whatever mm-hmm. taking, taking their money and, and going somewhere else outside of the country, yeah, to pay less money to 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 foreigners to to build stuff and and take taking American product. Yeah, you're right. That's and sucks. leaving the country. I think is what needs to be controlled. I don't think he's trying to control. So a how about plumber. take care of that? Oh, how do you take care? But of he's that? Good how do you stop these maniac uh, things? Other than other than having them collapse. And then controlling them, which now makes us sound like we're yeah, socialists. That's, that's crazy. We, yeah. the well, government owns. Obama's one of the biggest socialists ever to run. Uh, but no, uh, he, well, he, but he's socialist in terms of what you're saying is uh, everybody helps. It trickles down, but instead of trickling down, it's actually you're helping down, which is kind of the idea of communism. But but the <laughs> the socialism thing. Is basically what's going on with the government right now is that they own our property. We have to answer to the government for our personal stuff, which is way worse than Obama trying to get free health care. He's he has he's going with the idea of utopia as opposed to yeah, that corporate well, thing, which is on come the, on, man, it's not as bad as as a corporation. On the backs of who <laughs> who who has to now support. People that uh, either by their own uh, means or bums or, or made other good. Things. What? And I and I and not, and not just you. I'm talking about. Look, if I get a, if I get some money, that's that's significant. I'm a bum made good. But do you? And I want to keep my money because I always. But these rich, sons rich people of a ain't bitch, worried about these it. sons of bitches think. That we tiptoe around zippity doo that we don't pay any taxes. Whoopee! Look at all the money I have. I'm gonna throw it in the air and bathe in it. It's, the tax <laughs> is already ridiculous for people that are in the bracket he wants to tax more. It's already ridiculous. Why the hell pay you more a 50, taxes? 50 split? 50 50 gov- uh, partner with the United States government. That's and he accurate. wants more? He wants more. How about cut the goddamn spending? I have no problem with him cutting spending. He wants to cut spending, d- cut the crap out of it. But, you know, what? why? Wh- everyone must be lifted up. Shut up. But I don't think he's going They're not with entitled. That, yes, he is. He said it. I don't think he's he going He said with it. But how can he... Get me the that- goddamn quote. How can you do... Now, here's what's going to happen now. Mm-hmm. Is that the corporate... The, uh, the fact is, capitalism... Evidently doesn't work. I don't know if I'm saying that. If I should say it, that. No, no, no. Evidently, I, it didn't work because capitalism says, "See, you and everybody in this room is a self-made person. You, you don't have a bunch of employees and a bunch of this and that. I, the corporations took the the jobs from the country, mm-hmm. and this is what I think. People like me who understand once I turn 45, I get money, but younger poor people have to understand." If you make things in this country, pay a little more, pay the people a little more, the country would be back to where it was when we had things happening and we made it here. Hmm. But the fact is, if you pay $5 for a T-shirt, but if you try to explain to somebody, listen, if you pay 12 for a T-shirt, ultimately the country will be better, yeah. no one understands that. You don't understand that as a poor person. You want to go buy made in China for three dollars, and it destroys we're more the economy. A, they would we're, still we're make more... in China. They would just make a bigger cut instead of making two dollars a shirt for five. They would make nine dollars. But why not put well. why not put that in yeah. in Iowa or or wherever you want to make these these these? Why not keep it's a world, building here? You know why? Because it's a world economy we're in now. It's a world economy. It He's, wouldn't be if we made stuff here. Well, well How we, is it a me- world economy if China's making it? It's China's world. If we make it here, then it's our world. It's China, it's South America, uh, some South American countries. Well, that, just stop being cheap. Pay people the money, right? It, it, look, $50 million is the same as $25 million. Well, fix, What do you want? You know something? Fix that, too, because there, is, uh, 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 there are reasons that the, the companies don't go with American employees because... 
It's too goddamn demanding as far as money goes. Some of these unions are not too damn are demanding. Out of hand. May, maybe they just don't allow uh, American people don't allow you to just come in and beat you in the face with a shoe because you're not uh, <laughs> sewing the, the the night strike fast enough. It, it's it, it's the fact that they pay these third world people to get treated like garbage for ten cents, and then they sell you a shoe for a hundred dollars. Why not sell you a shoe for a hundred and fifty? Pay this dude so he has so he has some health insurance. Keep it, if you notice, once this stuff start outsourcing, mm -hmm. the problems start beginning. When we had everything in-house, man, this was all right. America was doing all right. When the wars were going on, when everything was being made here, mm -hmm. when when it was just, you know... Rosie the Riveter. Yes, making her bomb. It yeah. was people made money because we got no... in. We're not selling anything. We're only buying stuff. We suck. Because we got no, because the idea, because the idea is the, the corp, now you, regular Joe, rich guy, has to make up for the fact that these corporations took their jobs and left. Now, middle class or low or poor people, they don't care about what's going on because they already lost their job. So they hope you mm. die. They hope every rich guy, misery loves company. So oh, they boy, hope yeah, yeah. that you're going to have to pay the tax because they already lost their health insurance. They're already suffering. That plumber's already suffering. Ten years ago, his job went to India. He can care less. All of this, when I watch TV and I see rich white people worrying, I know I ain't got nothing to do with it. I ain't got nothing to do with it because they're not showing poor people worrying. It's it's Lehman Brothers is going under. Who gives a damn about Lehman Brothers? I, ain't got, what, I don't know. You do. Yeah, well, it... it it does trickle down, exactly. as you said. It trickles down. It's you're worried about it. I'm not. I'm not rich. This yeah. is rich people worrying. Now, see, you got a nice watch. Uh, yeah. <laughs> According to Obama, you're that's, rich. That's yeah. N-word rich right there. According to I'll Obama, throw this in the garbage. According to Obama, you're, 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 you're very rich. the crap out of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, 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 I'll take it. Because we need it. We're just bad right now. We're not. We're not good now. But now that the you let the corporations run ragged. Now the government got us. Now they got us. Oh, it's they, that Big Brother stuff. It's just happening. They're controlling the banks right now. We're that's that's not scary. That's a little weird. That's not scary <laughs> to you weird. that the government. That's not scary. That's a little. That's a bit weird. Private, private. It, it, there's no pro. China's gonna own our homes because we owe China. Yeah. China owns my house. If they come and get it, they gotta give it to China. <laughs> we don't own it. The government don't own it. The Arabs own it. We're done. I'll agree with you there. I've always so said. Why are you complaining we're, about taking your money and save us? As a nation, we save us. I'm I'm saving myself. Save us, man. I'm saving we're myself, us, bro. Saving yourself. Yeah. Means nothing if the country's gone. What are you gonna do? Go in your bunker with your gun. I'm the yes. Stop it. Yes. Stop it. I'll be the last man on earth. You're not Texas. Chief I'll be. I Africa. am legend. Oh, you <laughs> I got the car. I got the gun. All I need is the dog. <laughs> Gotta get the dog. I, that's it. <laughs> I am legend. Some nice daredevil footage on TV. That's... Well, listen. We gotta take a break. The phones, man, just just on fire. Uh, people agree with Patrice. People agree with Anthony. Yeah, so you... That's a good point about Obama looking for a utopian type of thing and, and as opposed to a corporate type of uh, a social. Yeah, his thought. vibe is just like everybody, we, we blew it, can, we need to help now. And people with more can help more. I know it's unfortunate, but we should have stopped Exxon Socialist. from going across the seas. We should have stopped Nike. We should have stopped, you know, Wrangler. Wrangler's gone. Now now my jeans, are, some some Chinese girl made them. And I buy them, and they're still one hundred and twenty dollars. <laughs> Let's take a break. Is Ludacris here? I think he is. So not yet. No, nope. I don't think so. He's probably on his way. All right, we'll uh, we'll continue with Patrice and Jimmy and the rest. Maybe some of your phone calls before uh, Ludacris gets here. Opie and Anthony, stay there. Get into this. It's the Opie and Anthony show. Patrice O'Neill in studio, and Chris Ludacris Bridges. <laughs> yeah, made going? his way into the studio. Yes, yes. You want people to start calling you Chris, right? Man, you know, for the movies, of course, Chris Bridges. Ludacris is a character within himself, so, you know, every movie part, I don't want to be like, hey, that's Ludacris. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, of course, you know, we're just making sure we're keeping it all the way professional. Uh-oh. Yeah. That means he's retiring from rap. No, nah, that's <laughs> not. <laughs> it's gone. It's done. He's fading out the Ludacris. Oh, it's over. He's fading yeah. that out. 
I am legend too, Jack. It's coming. <laughs> yeah. A year it's from coming. now, it's, oh, yeah. it's going to be Chris Bridges. Out of here, Jack. Nah, man. I actually have an album coming out November 25th, so album number six, man. I'm loving it. I'm still loving doing both, so we just balancing the two out. Are you going to start doing any movies where you're in SUVs with a bunch of kids going across the country or something like that? <laughs> I mean, you never know. <laughs> yeah, I think you never know. <laughs> Get a little RV action? Yeah, something uh, like that. Uh, don't do that, please. I know. Keep, I'm, just, I'm messing real, with you. Keep your edge. Keep real stop. Once you make a female, is uh, that like it? He, all of that just is. Let me ask you a question, Chris. Am I gonna say Chris or Luda? Nah, yeah, it don't matter. I know you was Luda, Chris. I'm just gonna he, be it's all good, man. You can call me Luda. What is the thing? Because I'm sure you grew up, you know, hood. What is the thing that uh, since you've been successful in the world that you go, man? I would have never thought I'd be deeply into this. Where you go, <laughs> boy? I would have called me a sellout. Oh, you understand? Oh, nah, no, no. Nah, but nah, nah. listen to me. I eat su coming from where I'm from, eating raw fish, sushi. I try to get my friends to eat sushi, and they just look. Oh, at I me see like what I'm, you're saying. You, you, you feel yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like yeah. where you go? Uh oh! Like you get your toes done, or you do something where, <laughs> where you go? Oh man! <laughs> what am I doing? You know, I definitely never thought I would be as bougie as like like you saying, like eating certain foods and stuff like that. Things that I never thought I'd like. Sushi is definitely one of them. Yeah. But yeah, I feel you on that. But I mean, one thing that I, I I sit there and say I've always wanted, and I go down my driveway in Atlanta, Georgia, every time, and just like. Thank God, it's, it's like 22 acres of land, 15,000 square feet of house, and it, it, that that just kind of like blows my mind every time. I mean, every time I go Damn, down my yeah. driveway, so it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> Damn, I don't doubt it. Uh, we were ta we were talking about the uh, the election, and, and me and Patrice constantly at at odds on this whole thing. Um, it, it seems to be uh, more uh, class against class on this thing. Uh, now, you've obviously made a few bucks. We've been, we've been blessed to have made a few dollars. And it seems like we're going to be the people that might take the brunt of this tax hit what, what, if what, Obama what, wait, gets... Wait, wait, wait. Uh, what? Is, what is this... What is this tricky white way into leading him to be us? Class? I, Why don't you ask him what he because thinks I'm before not, you say, "Hey, we're hey, because I'm not putting I, I'm not going to let you. Patrice, I'm not going to let you do this. He's got an angle. I like that. Oh, I like man. Anthony's angle. I'll this tell you like this, man. But this I see clever. where you, I see where you're going with it, man. Sure. My, my my thing is that everybody gets out there and votes and just makes their voice heard for the next four years of our lives. That's what's extremely important. Do you want to pay more taxes? <laughs> do I want to pay more taxes? Me, I don't some think some anyone tells me when you're writing that check, you feel a lot like like me so that handshakes <laughs> <laughs> i don't think anyone wants to pay more taxes man but of course you know we all we all play a very big part in trying to you know change our lives for the better so you know whatever we have to do in order to make that happen somebody's gonna have to make everybody's gonna have to make sacrifices basically is what i'm saying it's just about sacrifices which means that says right there the black president <laughs> listen to you. And look he's not look he has a career mm -hmm. and things he has to yeah I'm telling you, I'm gonna, I'm going to tell you what a person with a career, black person with a career talk is. Uh -huh. We have to make sacrifice. He doesn't want to do it, but we have to make sacrifices. We all got to do it. We all got to <clears> make them. Mm -hmm. Which means the black president. Well, do you want to make some <laughs> sacrifices, my friend? There you oh, go. There we go. That's what Let me tell you something. About. Good question, I'll be Chris. With you. I make giant sacrifices. That's great. Well, I'm then a, there you I'm, have it. I'm already making sacrifices. I just don't want to make more sacrifices. By pressing that button like, that says like, Negro. It's not <laughs> pressing the Negro <laughs> button. Are, Boy, is that a sacrifice. <laughs> I know you got copper tunnel syndrome in both wrists. <laughs> <laughs> you are an ass, Patrice. <laughs> Anthony is the guy in Crash that sold the girl the gun. <laughs> there you have it. That's pretty much it, right? <laughs> uh, and speaking of movies, suck. man, you know. Max Payne. Ah, yes. There you have it. Max Payne comes out this Friday. You got myself, Mark Wahlberg, Mila Kunis, Bo Bridges. It's loosely based off the video game, you know, for all the gamers out there. But I guarantee you, if you never played a video game or know about it, you're still going to walk away from this experience very satisfied. The movie is ludicrous. I was psyched when I heard they were even making this uh, yeah. when I first heard that because I'd played the game. Right. Uh, very cool, very like creepy, eerie kind of a thing going on, and uh, yeah. Uh, what? How, how does the movie compare to uh, to the game? Like I the think, character himself. Man, honest, honestly, it's like the the game is one thing, but it's like the movie. It, it's loosely based off the game, but it takes it to a whole nother level. So you yeah. know, the cinematography is stylized. It has that kind of film noir feeling. You know, that dark Matrix type feel. Mm -hmm. But you know, the storyline, a man that. His family's brutally murdered, and he's out to seek revenge, and he's definitely destroying anything in his pathway to find out who killed his family. 
It's a great story, my friend. So yeah, I think cool. you'll definitely enjoy it, especially if you play the video game. And uh, yes, you are in the Jim Bravura. So do you remember Jim Bravura from the video Jim, game? Jim was uh, what was it, his little uh, buddy that would help him out every so mm. often. No. <laughs> no, <laughs> not really. No, no idea. Jim Bravura. Jim Bravura, internal affairs agent. So it was actually written in for a sixty-year-old white man. I went and auditioned <laughs> for the part, man, and, and the director called me two days later and told me I had it. So you know, I'm in there, man. They still and make I, you read for parts? They, sometimes, you know, just wow. to make sure that you, you know, you do a screen test. So yes, you go up against certain people. You know, make sure everything's right. Make sure the chemistry's out. Exactly. Right. And the good thing is, I don't die in the first one as the black man, so it's a, it's oh. a very beautiful thing. <laughs> okay. there's, there's room for me to come back if there's a sequel. It's a beautiful thing. What do you think it is about hip hop artists that make it uh, uh, the transition to film so easy? Like, a lot of good actors have come out of uh, yeah. rap. Well, I mean, you, you got to think that when we we write our own music, of course, so, you know, that's kind of like our emotion on paper, and then we do it visually on video. So when we do videos, it's already a form of acting in our own character and mm -hmm. basically the things that we've we've written down, like I said, as far as music is concerned. So it's a good transition. Half of it is being comfortable in front of the camera, in my opinion. But I think that's why so many artists, you know, they, they make that transition because they're already doing a form of it anyway. It's just about taking on different characters. Now, is, is the change in the name, or going back to your, it's like Chris Ludacris Bridge, is that more the studio? Because like 50 Cent's doing the same thing. He's being billed as like, you know, a, a Curtis 50 Cent Jackson. And, and it seems like uh, a lot of the rappers, they're trying to get to use. Is that a studio thing? No, that's something that I'm trying to do personally. It's just because, like I said, Ludacris is a character all within himself, so, you know, that's the music side. And you, when I'm Chris Bridges, it's me taking on other characters, of course. Satisfied Jim Douche Norton? Why? It's, just a, <laughs> it's a good question, Anthony Alitas Comia. <laughs> How much, how much did Bill O'Reilly cost you in 2002? Oof. He probably made me more money, so nah. thanks, thanks to Bill O'Reilly. Yeah, in the end, he made you a lot of money. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, we were just talking about boycotts yesterday on our show because, uh, you know, we're threatened with boycotts from time to time and, the you know, the special interest groups. And what, what do you think of that whole thing with Pepsi uh, getting ready? Of? Like I said, man, it was a learning experience. It made me want to learn more about how businesses can even do things <laughs> like that. So I take adversity and, and I make it a positive. You know what I'm saying? I think that's what life is all about. But yeah. for them to just go and just get rid of it just like that, you know, without even like hanging in there and seeing what uh, develops, is it just amazes us that corporations will do that. Believe me, it amazed me when it happened too. But I mean, like I said, at the end of the day, I got life. Life goes on, mm -hmm. and you know, you you just you keep moving and you make sure that you stay successful, so that at the end of the day, it was just like a speed bump in my life but you know you need some adversity sometimes in order to sure. become a stronger at the, person at the time though it's uh it's a lot more than just you know a speed bump when stuff like that happens because you're you, you kind of go what the what what is what is this about like this dummy bill o'reilly gets on and just starts lambasting you about uh you know why why is uh pepsi uh Hiring him, here's what he does, here's what, but it's like, you know, it's a lot more when you dwell so much on the past and stop thinking about the future. <laughs> That's what it is, I'll be honest with you. Let's think about what's to come and forget about yeah. what happened. Unfortunately, that stuff is still happening. Though. <laughs> yeah, that's why we bring it up. We're we're yeah. very passionate about it. We're saying, I think boycotts work. Yeah, like the people are all all saying to stop drinking Pepsi. It's, it's, yeah, it's no Pepsi. Pepsi is, you know, yeah, Pepsi. right. All right. Pepsi. What about the Oprah thing, 2006? That was a very long time ago, but what would you like to know well, about that? Well, I, I mean... keep the adversity going. Well, you... you, <laughs> but you but you've what been, about it? That you, was a generous statement. But you've been ask. involved in some you know, very controversial things that are worth talking about. We've never talked to you about them. You know, Oprah didn't want to empower rappers and doesn't believe in rappers and hip-hop. I mean, you know, that's pretty crazy. I mean, what, what do you want me to say, my friend? Well, just your, I guess, your thoughts on it. Yeah, I guess you could say my thoughts on it is that some people can have a disagreement and you can agree to disagree. So that's basically what it comes down to. You don't want to piss off Oprah? No, huh? no one does. No, all right. Mm -hmm. She's very powerful. She's I've very openly, powerful. I've openly voiced my opinion about the whole entire subject, and that's what I'm doing now. So you know. Yeah. No, it's not. It's not about keeping controversy going. It's, it's like a lot of times that these things happen, and they're frustrating to watch from the outside. It's frustrating to see, especially when I see other artists getting attacked. It's really irritating, and they're getting attacked on. Content, uh, and, and when I see the corporations buckle, or I see someone like Oprah, who's, who's an artist who made it, attacking it, it's aggravating to watch. And it's like, you know, we don't get to talk to a lot of the guys until, unfortunately, two years later. And it is something that people still associate. Like, this radio show has gotten in trouble, and it's annoying. People still associate it with a lot of the, the problems it's had. Man, yeah. y'all got to do your job, man. It's all well, good. We, I'm here to answer whatever questions we, we, you want we've, me to ask. We've seen a lot of really good radio shows, you know, go, <laughs> go away because of dumb things, and, you know, that, that's all. 
It's, it's very important to us, you know. And it's like, like for her not to, you know, be into rappers is ridiculous. <laughs> but you hit back musically too, <laughs> like on uh, a Bill O'Reilly, you hit back, which is nice. I yeah, mean, I it's mean, gotta you be know. satisfying artistically to be able to take a swing and <laughs> do it in the right context, which is uh, uh, through your work. Yeah, I mean, artistically, I voice my opinion through my music sometimes, and that's that's what we, you know, we do. And of course, he voices his opinion on his show, so we all have our own formats of doing things. Right. Same way this radio show has their own format of doing <laughs> things, you know? Let's all keep our jobs. Is it, yeah, that seems to be the goal. That's what it comes down to. <laughs> yeah, we try. But you know, of course, a lot of people, you know, a lot of rappers, we don't get open invitations everywhere, so we have to fight for, you know, trying to break that whole stereotype sometimes, and that's what everybody has to do. We yeah. all have kind of a stereotype. That's even what Crash was all about, trying to not be so quick to judge certain people. And that's the whole situation, that, you know, with, with the with the Oprah situation. And at the end of the day, like I said, I still have a lot of respect for and a lot of love for. I mean, if you don't respect Oprah, you, you have to respect her just because of what she's accomplished in her life. And I just feel like when it came to that, like that crossroad, it was just something that we agreed to disagree on. But wouldn't you like to right be able to make all your money without dealing with white folks? <laughs> I would. That's a God. I would like to get rid of my white agents. <laughs> oh, yeah. I wish I could make zillions just with black folks. I really do. Try not to look at your stupid faces ever good, again. That's good, interesting good that you said that. I really want to. Good luck. You end up like wait, 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 uh, end up like who? Ghost, like a lot of boxers. <laughs> <laughs> wait, Don King yes. made a lot of millions. Yes, yes, he did. Off the backs of the guys that did, didn't want uh, the white guy helping him out. So. It's so. <laughs> look at Tyson did give Rooney the boot. Good. That's what I'm saying, man. Not a good move. You can't just say so. I just want to see. So, so, so your pants. Oh, no. Just... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Can I talk about Crash for a second? Because it was. Uh... It's a long time ago, though. Yeah. Crash was a long time ago. <laughs> I know. Delvin in the past. <laughs> we better not. But that was such a great movie. It was like. It, was it ain't like... better than Max Payne, though. I haven't seen Max Payne yet. And I'll be talking about Max Payne two years from now, but I haven't seen it. So I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Max Payne is in theaters Friday, though. So I'll come back Monday and talk about Max Payne. I just That's right. Just can't. Mm -hmm. Crash. You got we all loved Crash. It was about, I mean, right, it was right. about, like, stereotypes and not judging people, but it seemed like every character in that got redemption somehow, which was great. Like, they show, like, the ugly, stereotypical side of every person, and then they also show, like, every person kind of getting redemption. It was, it was just a great, mm -hmm. great movie, man. Thank you, man. I greatly appreciate it. Were you surprised it won the best picture? You know what, man? I, to be honest with you, it was up against uh, some really good movies that year, and I knew we had a shot. But, you know, we I, I, absolutely, like the whole cast, we were kind of wondering whether or not it was going to make it. That's why we were so surprised when it did. But I knew it had a shot, and I knew it was a, a great movie. And it was kind of one of those word-of-mouth type movies that just built up over a long period of time. So I was real happy about that. But, no, I didn't know right away that it was going to get the Oscar. Was did everybody get that money that, uh... That situation worked itself oh, that, out? That situation is still going is still People going didn't get paid, on. right, from that Losses. movie, right? Yeah, like back ends. Man. Oh, wow. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, the people nice. stole some money from Crash. Oh, yeah. They got robbed. Probably a lot on DVD sales, too, because a lot of the DVD stuff, uh, the actors are still having trouble getting all their money. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about actors like I can do it. <laughs> It's amazing how pompous I am because I'm surprised that you had to read. Well, I, I've done some acting. I don't like to be called in to read. I'm like, they should just kind of offer me something. And uh, I, I can't even get into a Dane Cook movie. So it's, it's the fact that you're still reading kind of makes me feel better. Like, well, if he has to read after you know some of the stuff he's done, makes you feel better. Yeah, but <laughs> he he wouldn't, feel worse. I have to read. It doesn't make he me wouldn't have bad. to read. He's going to be reading forever. Yeah, he, <laughs> he wouldn't have to read if, like, in terms of in terms of rap, hip hop. L royalty, if if that had to do with any Hollywood, he wouldn't have to read a thing. But he's a rapper. Come, Hollywood's crazy. You know, they're not like, hey, little Chris, you're wonderful here. You got, you got to read. You got to read up until I bet you there's all every Negro got to read. Uh, it's probably except for Denzel. Except <laughs> they just fired Terrence Howard from Iron Man too. Did they fire him or did he quit? He fired. Why would they I didn't fire? know he was fired. He was, a, he was black asking for... Um, Too much money. Whiteness. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> they yeah. almost got rid of Favaro. I find out what happened. Favaro was going to go, well, I should get double. Really? Because Marvel's like, hey, look, Iron Man sells himself. We can put uh, you know, somebody in a wheelchair to play Iron Man, Jack. We don't need you. So everybody in Iron Man that started standing up for that money got the boot. Starting with Terrence Howard, which is, you know, that's how it starts. <laughs> mm, Replace no. Terrence Howard with Don Cheadle. 
He's not even the same body type. He's not War Machine. <laughs> <laughs> no, but to answer your question, man, like sometimes I do have to audition, other times I don't. It's kind of like half and half right now. But like he said, you know, I mean, I've I've been blessed to be in some good projects, but I still, you know, I consider myself fairly new, and I'm definitely, you know, continuing to increase the body of work and just to pick diverse roles and sometimes like i said they want to see you up against the, the person so they make sure there's chemistry so that's the reason that you would audition as opposed to them just giving you something all the time until you get to say a denzel level Do you I get saw, any people that get like uh annoyed at you or a little like uh oh man look at him now he's doing the acting thing he's kind of like, like you lose us uh, some credibility with some people you know what they call it in the hood? Some people. Some people. <laughs> the haters. It's yes. like, hey, look, like, like, like when haters. Metallica yes, does a song. Oh, yeah. when Metallica does a song that's not as, <clears throat> as thrash as it was on Ride the Lightning. People like they're changing. They're not the same band. I mean, the rappers get the same thing from people who are like, I only want to hear you do hip hop. I don't want to see you acting. I don't want to see you. Yeah, they don't want to see him do anything. They don't want to see him living. Yeah. They're yeah. called haters. <laughs> he can do anything. He's but, dropping an album. He's acting. There. He is haters, mm -hmm. of in, course. In this day and age, you know, you have a lot of uh, entrepreneurs, or I call myself an entrepreneur. So you know, there's a lot of different things we do besides just rap. And yeah, I think yeah. that people have accepted that at this point because they look at us as businessmen. So it would be good to expand, you know, that certain things that you're doing instead of just doing one thing all yeah. the time. I fell in love with Crash when you guys are walking with the, the pistols and you're like, we're, we're dressed like UCLA students or whatever you said. Right, right. And right. then they pull the guns out and, and rob them and yeah. took the truck. It was so great because Hollywood has gotten so bent on showing you every stereotype and then completely going the opposite way, like you're crazy to ever feel uncomfortable or you're crazy right. to ever be afraid of something. And Crash just put it right in your face. It was it was just I can't stop talking mm. about that movie. It was brilliant. Again, I know. Max Payne is, I know, but it's. Are it was, you a good guy, bad guy, gangster? Can we? Can yeah, Max Payne. Yeah, what are you doing? Internal affairs agent. So you know, Max Payne is considered the the anti-hero, I guess, or the, the, the kind of the bad guy. You're breaking an internal the affairs rules. agent. Yeah, man, just doing something different. Oh, yeah, we got. We are acting now, Luke. Go Absolutely. I, I, I was signed on just to be able to point a gun at Mark Wahlberg and get away with it. So that's really why I did it. We, we got to get uh, Chris out of here. So uh, Max Payne in theaters this Friday. Yeah, and then Rock and Roll, a movie that Guy Ritchie wrote and directed. Oh, that's yeah. actually in New York right now, limited release. So go check that out. And then an album November 25th, man, Theater of the Mind, album number six. So Jesus. greatly appreciate it. Got a lot Disney, going on. Man. Hopefully Oprah and Bill O'Reilly will all go purchase the album. <laughs> you know, you you're right there. They did help. Aerosmith did the same thing. They thanked uh, Tipper Gore when when they won because uh, her complaining about uh, labeling and all that stuff helped yeah. push them through and somewhere else. So he thanked, thanked O'Reilly when he won the Grammys. So. Yeah, yeah, that's why I said Yeah, <laughs> And Oprah, for that matter. Even though it did happen a long time ago, but Sorry hey, about it's that. all good. No. We're here. If you if you want to exchange numbers when this stuff happens, we'll tell we'll call you the next day. Don't even worry about it, it, man. Yeah, we can get it right on the radio. If I'm also could... a good actor too, so if it happens to be, <laughs> you're acting right now. I, I peep, I'm peeping you out. It's pretty cool. You're doing I'm very good. good. I'm putting my arms open. I'm actually gesticulating. I'm actually very good. Yeah. I don't know what you're doing. I think. You know what to do with your hands when you act. I know we're trying to go to break. But my problem when I act is my hands. I never know what to do with my hands. It depends on your character. Like, are you playing Rain? Man, or are you playing a basketball? Player? I always try to like audition like the guy's paralyzed below the neck. I just kind of <laughs> something you got to work on, man. Just work on it. You'll be good. All right, it's Chris Ludacris Bridges, everyone. Max Payne in theaters Friday. Thank you. Chris. Thank you very much, man. All right, quick break. We'll continue. Opie and Anthony. All right, we're back. The Opie and Anthony show. Chris O'Neill in the studio. This weekend, Catch a Rising Star in Rhode Island. Aid Zephyr. He writes, well, that was uncomfortable. Patrice checked out. <laughs> checked out. That's not a black thing. Not at all. Does Patrice kind of try to do a black thing there? Black, white. We get a lot of a lot of celebrities that do exactly what Ludacris does. Keep it very safe. What is it? You just don't I want... I don't know. When you're... And this is... Look, I, I've been guilty of it on a much lower level because I'm not that far. And in, in look, I, look, is, and I'm not, look, let me say this, man. I'm not, no, I, all I'm saying is this. Look, I'm going to Rhode Island. There'll be, there'll be two black people there, maybe. I'm not saying, I'm saying, look, it's very difficult to entertain and this and that and keep your head when everybody has to be entertained. But I'm saying, in terms of not every answer needs to be political, all that, like, who is he? hurting just answering something in a real oprah doesn't want to have anything to do with him it just on our level it's like when when certain comedy clubs don't pass you and this is for us whether it was lucian who ran the comic strip for many years or whoever it is and then you finally get passed at the club 
And I, my anger towards Lucian, once I got, he was a guy, he's dead now, but he ran the comic strip for years. I hated him. Hated him. When I finally got past at the strip, right. I really kind of stopped bad-mouthing him. Like, I, I, was, I was like, eh. And this was not even in a public forum like this. My anger towards Lucian wasn't as bad anymore because I good finally is, good passed. Good is good if it's good for me. You, you, were, but it, you were happy because it, it was you. It wasn't phony. It was just... I wasn't as angry anymore, I, even though I would have been like a little more likely to bash him than he was Oprah. But again, it wasn't on that level, and it wasn't public. But let uh, me ask well, you this. Okay. Uh, I, I, I just want to say the uh, the whole Oprah thing, you made a great point during the break. You said the reason he doesn't want to even talk about the Oprah thing, because there's a possibility Oprah yeah, will have him on bring him back. to promote Max Payne. Mm -hmm. like, uh, the question I got for Patrice, how would, how would you have liked that interview to go? Just... With just what we were doing. You know what it was? Uh, ready? Yeah. Just... It was not going to. It, it here's what stopped me. Like here's what stopped me from being involved. Cause look, I'm on you guys' show, mm -hmm. and it's it's just not for me, as a black dude, to challenge, ludicrous man. I, I'm just not gonna do it on on your show. It's up to you guys to challenge him. But when he said, he segued into Max Payne. That's when I I left, mm -hmm. in my head. When it went there, because. That's what he's here to do, and he has to go do it at this place. Sure. And that, that's the job and everything. But maybe I don't. This is what I was saying off air. Maybe I don't want what I ha what I have to do to get at that level. Maybe I can trick this business into giving me a couple of mil, and then take it and hide it under my mattress, and then and then go back because I don't yeah. know how. What do I have to do? Do I have to be that way? I don't know. But man. as an artist, and, and the, that way is. It just wasn't nothing significant was going to happen, you know? But as a comic, you're always going to talk as a comedian. You're always going to speak through your work. Mm -hmm. I'm certainly always going to speak through my work. As an artist, he, he did his attacks through his work. And, and I'm, I'm only playing devil's advocate because he did hit O'Reilly, and he did address that stuff through the work. And when you're out promoting a film... You're out promoting a film. He, well, he addressed it though. We're, we're gonna get the max. We're gonna get the Max Payne plugs in. And, yeah. But the stuff that has happened to Ludacris is, it hits close yeah. to home with us. I and agree. We want to know. Hey, what do you think of this, really? Mm. And what the, what course. goes through your mind? And blah blah blah. How could Oprah not uh, want you know hip hop artists he, on her show? And she says she doesn't want to empower them. That's crazy. What he, do you think? He addressed Bill O'Reilly, and he addressed um on on the bio. He addressed Barack Obama. He addressed Bill O'Reilly, he addressed Oprah in what? In in rap. In in his rap songs. That mm -hmm. was his his what the interview should have been. Yeah. He did it in a rap song. Right. So here it was like there's the rap part, which is the whole Chris Ludacris um uh last name. The thing is I'm here is the actor Ludacris and he said that Ludacris was a is a as a character yes yes and I, that I, I did he can that he odd. can rap as that character this is how his character felt so he's now separating what his rap is saying to what he's going to be saying when he it, it when just, he's Chris Bridges dude, the actor dude it was you were really annoyed because you 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 bailed because I didn't want to put his head down and just I like I looked over at one point and I'm got I like. Thinking, well, why is Patrice um, asking any questions or talking? Because my, I'm the only. I, it's just the only honest mother no, ever no, in the room. No, no, right, I, no, no. You want to no, I, I try to keep it uh, real? No. Well, what's the deal? When I talk, it ain't E.F. Hutton, man. I'm just a a a, a maniac, <laughs> a, a loser, a maniac. Nothing I say means nothing. Did you not? When I want, when I go on Fox mm -hmm. and talk about Don Imus. I'm a fool. Like no one cares. But these guys, man, Chris Rock, Ludacris, 50, these guys are powerful, man, and they can say something. When I say it, I'm an idiot. Nobody cares until somebody who's seen bigger in the business says something. But man. once they reach that point, they stop. And when saying they get that to that stuff. point, it's like I, I'm gonna damn man. It's just. Mm. Man, who gives mm. a who gives a damn? Uh, Max Payne, who who cares? Mark Wahlberg will be talking about that all day. And if you ask Mark Wahlberg, I wanted to bring up the fact, you know, he plays a guy who gets to point a gun at Mark Wahlberg's face. But th it was a break. I was gonna say why to shoot him for um, good vibrations when he when he was a rapper. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? It, it, but I'm not saying he ain't keeping it real. I'm saying this the dude what he he can. 
Man, yeah. he can he can mix something up, man. I, I mean, is it because I got nothing that I, maybe I'm talking because I don't know what's out there that's going to make me change. So I'm setting myself up to be a hypocrite right now because somebody go, Patrice, here's a $100 million, and I never want you to open your big black mouth again. And I might go, oh. I, believe me, we're trying to pull our cash. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Kim, I, I, why did he get annoyed so fast at uh, at the Bill O'Reilly? Talking about, like, the he past. Talk about Matt's pain. But that's thing. not just the past. Talk about that's that already. Like, I know. No, I'm saying, like, you said it was the past, and it was kind of like. Yeah, but for us, it's not. It's We've like never weird. talked to you before, and it's, you know, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. it's good stuff. Is it annoyed? I, I, and I'm, and I, another thing. We weren't doing it just. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of him. Is it annoyed? Or is it like when you walk into a radio show? Cause we do enough press on the road. We know how some of the radio shows are cool, some are dicks. Is it annoyed or is it defensive? Like you don't know what the show is trying to do when they go after something or, or mention something. We're, we know what we're trying to do, mm -hmm. which is just basically talk about something, which is what put them in the spotlight in our eyes. What difference does it make? Um, I'm if you go on a show and they ask you anything, I what 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 difference? Does it really to make me, to you? No different. But we do. This show gets sick of every time that somebody asks about sex for Sam, the the the, the response is, yeah, well, all right, we've addressed that. Like, and it does happen sometimes. So that's one of the like where if they, people ask about certain instances of the radio show, like what about the voyeur bus? Like they'll ask me that in interviews. But if they ask you about sex with Sam Norton, and you're tired of it, but there's context to everything. Right. If they talk about sex for Sam to make you look like you're an idiot and you were fired. It's a different context than they want to know about it because they don't know about it, and you know yes. the difference. Most mm -hmm. time, I know, but either way, and I'll answer it, but when they ask for the reasons of just wanting to know about it, I don't get angry. I don't get, like, but I'm like, ugh, with this, what are they, because it does happen, or every time it's brought up in the paper, it's just a reference point. Right. But even though you know it's just a reference point, Again, it's still a little annoying. And why? I'm not saying he shouldn't. I look. Well, what I'm a comic. I answer things differently. Why I, I checked out of the thing? I'm gonna just tell you why I checked out. I'm a fan. That's why I checked out. You're, Jimmy, you're a fan of Ludacris. I'm Steve, a fan. What do you guys say? Just to fan. confirm what Jimmy said, when he left, he was absolutely. Uh, it was absolutely confirming what you said. He just did. He wasn't familiar with the show. He, he wasn't angry. He wasn't defensive. He wasn't anything. He just. It was his first time. And he didn't really know. He didn't really get the vibe, but he wasn't angry and he wasn't upset. He, you know, he was just doing what he was uh, supposed to do. You walk into a room with uh, a station that you don't listen to, and again, I've done it where you, you're just not exactly sure where everybody is coming from. You don't know exactly all right, why they're raising this. Like uh, what we've been through this, they just trying to start some crap on my name. I'm not saying that. I'm not. I'm only saying I've been in those situations. You don't know exactly, and I didn't take it like, oh, he's trying to mother f us. I, I didn't get that vibe. I didn't either. Yeah, we were. It, the, 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 it wasn't. It wasn't. That's not what I'm talking. I, I know. I'm saying, dude. I had a million things I, I could ask. I wanted to ask him. It's just, you know, he's royalty, really, in the hood. I mean, he's royalty. He, he is. So when he comes in here for real, he's a big, big celebrity, but yeah. not here. Especially if I if I wasn't here, he just. He, oh, okay. Hey, well, what's up, man? I want to know some. But I could have drove it. And I and I was trying to drive it into that place where it's like more and more stuff, mm -hmm. but it was just I'm here for Max Payne. I'm not here to yeah. cause. You know, but you you already. This is what I'm saying. It's you already caused it. Like it, it, we're not embraced by Hollywood. It's just not going to happen. Who's weird though? We like, yeah. Niggas! But I'm saying, you're looking, <laughs> you're making it that, Christ. and I'm saying that every celebrity on that level we that comes here has nothing to do and with it, that. And that's what I'm saying. Every celebrity on that level who's not black, that's what they do. They, let me tell you, man, Chris Rock, and this is the thing, we're in the same world, so I'm, I gotta be careful with that, but I'm gonna say, he found out that he wasn't one of them when he did the Oscars. Hmm. And and he found out that he really wanted to be one of them, which is I watch MTV and he he trashes when you watch the MTV Awards, he trashes rappers and he sing, he got the funniest stuff you can think of talking about all the rappers because mm -hmm. he felt like an outsider. He felt like I'm a comic and I'm going to hit these guys. Yeah. And he's relentless and he's ruthless. He did the Oscars and he and Sean Penn. <laughs> Gets up and says what he says to Chris, and it and it flustered him, cause he realized, oh man, 
I'm not an outsider. I'm trying to be an insider. And he let Sean Penn hurt his feelings? Sean Penn, if I'm at Chris's level, at that level, where am I going to go? Where can I go once I'm at his level if I say to you, if I say, uh, uh, Sean, shut up. Yeah. Go, go play your little retarded characters <laughs> and go stand. Go, go, go ride your boat through well, for Katrina. The, for the, you didn't think he was pretty brutal on some of those people? Though? I thought but he, when, he ruined their night. Yeah, but then right? Yes, but, he ruined their night. But, but, but what Patrice is saying, when Sean Penn stood up for a joke uh, Chris Rock told about, uh, I, we always I, forget I, his I know, name. I know. It, uh, uh, what, what Patrice, I think, is saying, Chris should have got up there and hit him right back. Crashed him. Hit him yeah, right true. back. Because that... he's an outsider to Hollywood. Right. Man. Yep. And we're outsiders. But as a comic, and, I, and I'm not saying I would love to attack Sean Penn or see him do it. For whatever reason, he didn't. Maybe it just took him off guard and he didn't want to, you know. What, for whatever reason, the one moment of him not attacking Sean Penn doesn't, it doesn't matter because it's not like the rest of it was polite. The rest of it was pretty brutal for a for an Oscars host. I mean, even me and Colin talked the next night. He really was kind of uh, crappy to a lot of them. So it was almost like he came in as a comic, doing what a comic does, and it was only that one moment where he maybe not reacted. Because to that was the one moment of of confrontation that that them said, "You're not us." You're the Sean Penn. It was a them thing where he goes. His name is what is that guy's name? Is Jude Law. Jude Law. Jude Law. I would have been like both of you. Phone. Shut up. Neither one of you have actor. anything to do with me. Yeah, uh, Jude Law is one of our finest actors. Get out of here. Today. He sleeps with his nanny. That that was, <laughs> I'm kind of with Patrice. That deserved the beating because that was so ridiculous. But it was shocking because not he taking away with that man. The edgy stuff Chris Rock was doing during right. the Oscars. But you have Sean Penn saying something as ridiculous as that. How how do you as a comic not go for that? Only because and and, and punch back a little bit. I don't understand that. The more uh, black people do get into. Uh, uh, I don't know Hollywood, um, politics, things like that. Golden the more cups. the more angry you get that they're doing this. No, you see it wrong. You see wrong. it as you'd ra would you rather see fire hoses and German shepherds again? No, 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 no. I mean, no. or or this uh, there's an acceptance with uh, you. Twi you twisted that up, Anthony. You're did twisting I? that into me being angry about. I I love this is what's making me angry because I love there is no. B black hierarchy of us. There, every there's a black hierarchy of me, and then we're in this. But Oprah is her, and Ludacris is him, and Fifty is him. And mm -hmm. but I'm not saying that they. I want everybody to have some money. I'm saying, what is it? And I said this earlier. What is it about that level that makes you not say anything? Fear of losing that level. Yeah. And it's all celebrities on that <laughs> level. Yeah. You're looking at him the way a lot of guys would look at you. Even though it's a total... And you're, 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 you're not the typical case point because you're Patrice. But say most comics that are on your level who are like still brutal, but, you know, guys like us don't... We're not stupid brutal. We know... We, we'll tease people and this, you know... And, and there's people who might have known years ago, why is he doing this? Why is he, why is he not coming that hard? And that, in a way, is he's on that level higher than us. Right. Th that's what I'm saying. It's leveling up, yeah. and a lot of celebrities do it. Like what, when they when and they I'm not saying it's supposed to be a maniac, Norton. No, I don't. I, don't I, know. Know. I mean, look. I mean, we're talking about it, but it's like, you know, I'm going to say the wrong thing until I say the right thing. I'm not saying that he's supposed to come on here and go f Bill O'Reilly. Or right. mm -hmm. I'm just saying we just wanted to get his point it's, of view on the whole. Yeah, thing. that's yeah, all. Exactly. Hey, well, we weren't about it. We it would be fun if he did because we hate the guy, but. Uh yeah. Just we not just wanted his thoughts on just it. Just not just not like the carefulness. That, I'm not saying come <laughs> All right. I'm not saying a maniac. I'm saying the just carefulness of mm -hmm. just I'm hey, I'm here for Max. But like just the careful just what what? But you know, it's it's just being very safe. Yeah. And it's not a black thing. We've seen it with Absolutely. Uh, big uh big white uh white uh, stars. Dude, you got a as studio well. sending you out mm -hmm. like and they're saying promote this and you you make it X amount of million for a movie. It's almost like why go through the hassle? And we weren't saying attack Oprah. We weren't saying attack Oprah. Right. We were really just asking about it. But if you walk into a situation where you don't know the players, it's not like we're a station the guy's been on, like Kevin Smith comes in and he'll talk about anything. Mm -hmm. Cuz he knows us, he's comfortable and he's 
when you're in a situation where you're promoting this major film, and you know, in the last couple of years, it's not like he's he's been doing major films for ten years. What where do you go with that? Like, do you attack these icons now that the storm has settled? Let, let me ask you this: I, I just, I just. Uh, I think he should have, because all we were asking was, how'd you feel at the time? Yeah. You could be honest and say, well, you, you know, you, you probably wanted to go down there and twist Bill O'Reilly's head off at the time. Sure. He, he cost you so much money. And that's why I said, and I, I said to him, I went, at that time, when it happened, like, like, that's when you can say, yeah, this is what I wanted to do. Uh, you know, in, in hindsight now, it wasn't that big a thing at the time. That was my livelihood, this son of a bitch was taken away. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, that's that's honestly uh, we could we could talk about uh, Bill Donahue. It's the same situation. At the time, I wanted to take his gray head yeah. and smash it on a curb. And now he's been on the show, and I'm like, you know, all right, he's just doing what he does. I'm not kissing his ass to not get advancement anywhere. But time, water under the bridge, whatever you want to call it. But <laughs> at the time, and I could be honest, I still I could sit here and go, yes, at the time, I wanted to smash him. Okay, so you're right. At, at the time, I would like to have heard a little bit more about that. Yeah, but be a once, little honest. Once you get to a certain point in your career and you see how fast it can be taken away or like he mm -hmm. happened to rebound and do really well, but when you see how quickly one of these guys, one of these massive people, like when you see how the machine works and, and how it can just chop you off, like for for you to lose a major endorsement just because stupid old right, it's you're probably hesitant for no reason at all. So that's considered a sellout. No, it's not. Not at all. Eh, technically, it's I not, mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. You just not, disagree or or not do it. I would do it too. Can, can I, not can be, I, ask I don't think what you out, what though. you said. I think a sellout would be if O'Reilly attacked him again, and he was like, "Ah, oh, well, you know, that's just." Been, oh, no, and, to me no, and you said a thing like mm. if if he knew the show, and yes. you said Kevin Smith knows the show. Let let's say this: if he knew the show. And then you ask them those questions. If he knew you, he knew what mm -hmm. you were about. He, his friends, say, say his radio yes. show friends, ask him those questions. Then what would, would maybe be you're to just happen? more comfortable to go back there and know that if you say, "Man, I was really aggravated. I hated the guy." You kind of know that the, you, when you answer certain questions, you might not know where this show is going to take it or what we're going. I don't know. I'm not, I'm only. Speculating, I've been on different radio shows before, right? And I know, so, you know how it is, man. Sometimes you walk in and there's a weird vibe. Sometimes it's a great vibe. But once you're on more than once or twice or three times, then you're more comfortable. I can't wait to get back to that show. They took care of me. They treated me right. Um, you know, I, I felt comfortable there. First time in any show, especially. Look, the reputation for the show is very aggressive. Mm -hmm. I mean, I do, I'm amazed at how aggressive this show is when I do other shows. Like, Jesus, we really do say some harsh things, even on <laughs> terrestrial radio, yeah. where we, we, I mean, we really do address things with brutality. <clears throat> so a lot of times you're going on a show that, look, people are aware, this is what they know about Opie and Anthony. Oh, those are the guys, Sex for Sam, Sex in the Church, they know the crazy, outrageous stuff about us that he probably thinks we know about him. So I'm only saying, look, I would love to have had answers, but that's why I'm not mad about it. That's why mm -hmm. I'm not, because I didn't feel like it was being... He was trying to be a dick to us. I think that a lot of times he just you're not 100 percent sure where someone's going. Yeah, I don't. I don't think he it's was. Just always one my take. I don't think he was. I just. I just. It's that. It, it, I'm just. The, it was. Just the let me get to it. Just it wasn't. Let me get to forget the... all of this knowing and it's just. So what did mm. you feel about what happened in your life? And and, and then it just answered yeah, yeah. as opposed to I'm not. What is he doesn't remember insight on your personality, who you are before we get to the plug. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah and, that might have been. And that's way more interesting to us than, you know, talking about Max Payne for 20 minutes. Sure, cuz there's, there's, there's a problem. Yeah. We need to, you know, get our listeners and, you know, into what we're doing. And and we know that talking about Max Payne for 20 minutes is not going to get the job done. I'm sorry. It's just not. Don't forget, mm -hmm. and that's why you you look at these bios and go, wow, that's something that's worth talking. And he's about. had some interesting and he might, stuff happen in his career. And he so might give us another. He it. might give us another angle. Well, these guys don't understand our side of this. They they want to come in here and just give us like very very boring Max Payne plug type radio, and that's that's not going to do him any good or us any good in the end. See, I know that as a comic and stuff, and I'm sure he's done a lot of radio stations, but a lot of the guys, a lot of celebrities do TV, and when you're doing TV, it's a very set way of doing it where you're on for six minutes or seven minutes mm -hmm. you get a little clip of the thing shown mm -hmm. they talk about the movie a lot mm -hmm. it's very you know what i'm saying it's like you know exactly what the drill is you know exactly what the routine is 
uh, when you walk into a radio show where you have 15 minutes, and all of a sudden there's five guys, and they start bringing up stuff from the past, and the studios, you just don't know exactly yeah, where it's going to go. We get, I, I know why we do it. Yeah, we I, get to go long for them, okay. you know? I call that what you just described, who gives a crap TV. It happens I all the time. I couldn't agree more. And that's dude. why I don't watch any of that stuff, because I know nothing is uh, is going to happen. Dude, I agree. It's gonna, no, I know. I, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm with you. I'm just, I'm just reiterating. And I would just like to, look, if I ever got to the level of respect and money and, 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 and glory, I would love to just let every other black person who knows what happens on that way, what the what you got to do and got to deal with, and explain even what he, even the fact that he had to do Max Payne, explain that. Just tell me yeah. what it's like to be at your level and be black. Mm. Let me know. Yeah, he he didn't seem to want to be um, please black at that moment. I, Are you I voting for Obama? Be, he just wanted to be the guy. Yeah, I know. You're voting for Obama? Well, I just got to tell you, it's just important to get out there and vote. But most celebrities on that level would say that. Up. Most celebrities, it's not a black-white thing. Most celebrities on that level promoting for a major movie with, with Mark Wahlberg or any... We're not talking about I can't tell phony, white, phony white people. That was that, a little that's odd. That's what white people do. That was uh, a little you know odd. celebrity thing. It's not a I white even, black thing. Not a celebrity thing. But I didn't even catch that because, you know, if he says I'm voting for Obama, then everyone voting for McCain might not... Some of these people aren't going to go see Max Payne now. Yeah, or it, it might just be for the political argument... I'm not saying that. It might open up might a have, right. that you don't want to get into when you're promoting a film. Well, you know something? You're promoting a film. You want people to kind of like you, know you a little bit. I think it would have been good. It would have been compelling radio to hear his point on, on you know, a, a, a guy that is successful, making a lot of money. Why are you voting for Obama knowing that uh, more of your money is going to be taken away? Just things like that. And then you get that answer. Well, the important thing is just get out there and vote. I agree. It, that was kind of a ugh It's answer. obvious he's voting for Obama. He has a rap song about it. Yeah, yeah. Love the Obama. Yes. But it's about, you know, people that might be buying the movie tickets that are voting for McCain, and next thing yeah. you know, they're going to go see some other nah, I'm with Patrice movie. on this one. Definitely. I'm not even against Patrice. I'm not yes, against Yes, you are. I'm really You're not. racist. I'm only, I'm only listening, listening to his argument. You could kiss our black asses. I'm only, <laughs> I'm only listening to his argument, and it's almost like we've been we've seen enough guys who don't want to go into certain areas and they're doing promo or whatever it's for it to not be... As much of a black and white thing, it's just a celebrity on a certain level thing. You get to a, a certain level of celebrity, and you get exactly what happened today. That's why we say no to a lot of these guys because we know it's like it's not worth it because we know we're not going to get good radio out of them. Oh, our music ended. Oh. More importantly, Let's get out of here. happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday, dear Marissa! Baby girl's birthday. Coin city Happy yourself. Birthday. Coin city yourself. Another year older. <laughs> hey, over at uh, Sirius XM, we have uh, Edward Norton calling in. Oh. Uh, I think it uh, in about in about forty five. Norton. So Not it's that like, one. which should be about what I expect. <laughs> oh Jesus. <laughs> that I, I expect out of Edward Norton. That's all. Last time he called in, he was plugging. Uh, it was a it was a political. It was a, an environmental thing. I and mean, I'm like on Ludacris, the rapper. Like it's a lot of things. Let me ask Look, this question. I'm a fan of the dude. And Norton and it was called, just a lot of. And Norton called our show a couple times. What, what do you remember from the last time he called? Um, mostly discussing his view on environmentalism. Yeah. That's what he called us to plug some environmental things in. Yeah. All right, Patrice mm. O'Neill's going to be where? Patrice, catch a rising star in Providence, Rhode Island this weekend. I'm going to be I'm nowhere. Done. Catch a rising star dot com. We got to get out of here. Let's go. All right, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh, 57th Street to the elevator Across. bank. You forgot the elevator. Across six to the elevator down the elevator. 57. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well we're it, not it, even in that building. a real disagreement because as comedians, I love comedians. A guy, Colin, who's a guy on a bigger level than we are, who will say almost anything to anybody. I I love comedians for that reason more than I love any other performers. And and what you just what you just said, it's I think there is just an attitude. It's you you are anti-establishment kind of I person, or you're not. And Colin is big enough to or Nick DePaulo is right. big enough to not cause himself problems. And I always look at white guys that cause themselves problems, and I go, he doesn't have to. He doesn't have to. But white guys that will cause themselves problems. Look at Lewis Black, that interview you played with him. He he's causing them, he was gonna cause himself problems at some point if it if it if it dug into him too much. 
Look, I want to, I'm not, man, I, it was a lot of things, and like you said, you guys have seen it all in terms of interviews, and you've been disappointed by many. Yeah, yeah. My thing is, he didn't disappoint me. All I just was like saying is, man, what the fuck happens in hot, please school me. That is completely so what legit. The fuck yes. They yeah. do for <laughs> you to not say fuck Oprah. Not saying, nigga, you a sellout. You didn't say fuck Oprah. It's like, I hear it, man. I hear it, Louis Chris. I hear it. And that's why I was like, you want me to call you Louis Chris? Chris? I'm, I'm just trying to keep him happy. Uh -huh. And I just want to know, please tell me what the fuck is going on. Please. So I can, I can know, to know if I'm ever going to be there or not. Yep. Please tell me. Uh -huh. Are you a Scientologist? Are you, are you, what, what goes on? It ain't talent. And I'm not saying Luke is not talent. I'm saying it's not talent where you go, I'm going to just make it because of talent. I used to believe in that shit. And I go, God damn well, you got to be friendly with somebody. Yeah. But it, at what point, if I have 20 mil in my pocket, mm -hmm. I, I figure... That I can like the whole. I always said this about about uh uh, uh Mel Gibson mm -hmm. and that whole thing where they would try to make him anti semite. Yeah. And I was like, wow, didn't he make a half a billion dollars from that from that Jesus movie? And I go, how much money do you need before you can be an anti semite? Let me tell you, if you have a half a billion dollars, you want and feel you need a billion dollars. You it, that it's it's just the way it is, Patrice. Do, look, are you satisfied with what you have right now and what you make? Man. It's not even monetary Let me tell you dollars. It's, it's creative, no, no. too. It, End of the world money, dude, it is, is creative. $500 million, man. Like you but, don't want to be out. But let me tell you something. Creativity, creativity, and I'm, I'm not saying this to sound fucking conceited or anything. Creativity will just fucking come out of you. It doesn't matter. If you're a great actor, you don't have to sit there and go... Fuck, I gotta be creative. Alright, I gotta put everything else on a shelf and be creative. It's just gonna happen. No. The bottom line is, it gets to the point where, and this doesn't, this isn't a sellout thing or that it's all about money and materialistic things. The thing is, you benefit from your creativity just because you did. Some people are very creative, very talented, they'll, they'll go to their grave fucking poor. Some people aren't very talented and they make it. It, it there's a lot of luck involved. But when, once you, you are there, and you're making a good living, you got a nice place, whatever the fuck it is. I understand. You, you don't only want to keep it, you want to advance. When I say, can I say, one second, when I say creativity, I don't mean the ability to create it. I mean the place to do it. Like, mm -hmm. you, you don't want to be ostracized. Like, do you remember when, when Homeless Charlie happened? Here's a perfect example. How we were all, it was scary because we knew nothing wrong had happened. Right. And yet it was all about to be taken away. And every one of us, you you read the Panicky apology, Pete. but dude, you read the apology. We were all in agreement. Yeah, none yeah. of us were being mavericks behind this. We were all like, we hate doing this. It stinks. I wasn't going fuck you and don't do it. I was like, please read it politely. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, we were all thinking that way. Right. We're not a sellout radio show. We're brutal. But when you see it's already been taken away once, and when you see it possibly going to happen again, it's fucking scary. Yeah, we still would have been the same humans. But when the opportunity, the place to be who we are, which is on this show, could have been taken away, well, I, we were all kind of smart about it and said, you know what? The mm -hmm. bigger picture is we will have so much more time to I understand in a, a critical situation right? like that. Anthony, well, you're, you're I agree with Fred the Vaccaro voice. But I, I just want to say, it really is. I'm, 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 voice bitch. I'm getting, you were going to ask me for money? You're, you're a millionaire, right? Well, I'll answer that question, Patrice, by telling you this. Uh, everyone needs money. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think everyone should get out there and earn their millions. Now, if you have five hundred million dollars, uh -huh. you're okay. If you have a billion dollars, a billion dollars, you are a multi. Yes, millionaire. You're a thousand millionaire. You can buy a thousand things for a million, a million dollars. Yes. Right. You are a millionaire, mm -hmm. a multi millionaire. Yes. So you're okay if you live. Like a, if you're a billion, you live like a multi. If you have five hundred million, mm -hmm. you buy your fucking mansion that's worth ten million, and you have to keep up, keep it up a million a year, some it's shit. Not, it's not mm -hmm. all about money. Exactly. I think no one yes. said it. You want to still do your thing and be creative, and you know, we. I mean, the fact is. Let me tell you something though. I'm not gonna sit here in front of a fucking microphone and uh, 
live back in the apartment I was in in fucking 1990. Mm -hmm. I, 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 of course not. I don't want to fucking do that. I don't want to be that. I could be just as creative and sit here and do that shit, but I don't want to fucking live there again. But it's about also like, like cockroaches and fucking uh, uh, shit all over the place. Fuck that noise. It, it, part of it is about the goddamn money because yes. that seems to be the measurement of success in this country. No, when you have enough, like Mel Gibson has, more, let's be honest, more than the show. Mel he Gibson probably has enough doesn't think he does. To do what he wants. Mel Gibson, if saying. he wanted more money though, Mel wouldn't make movies like Apocalypto, which was brilliant, but he would make movies that were more mainstream. He wouldn't make The Passion of the Christ, which is not a, looking like it's going to be a mainstream hit. Mel is on an artistic that place. That made him. It did. Million. But a lot, he could be making Lethal Weapon 6 knowing it's going to be a hit or another just, movie like they that. They were just talking about that and, and uh, they, they backed out or something. But do, do you know what I'm saying? It's like for but him. He's ready to do that. He was one of the very rare cases who was, he's an anti Semite, and, and a lot of the studios won't distribute his shit, but he's so big and so above it. He's iconic. Mel Gibson's a bad example because he's iconic. But some people, are, on. some people are famous and some people are like Al Pacino. Uh, Robert De Niro, Denzel, Morgan Freeman, they're, they're not famous. They're not, they're, they're you iconic, even, yes. They're, they, you don't even right. see them. Yes. Joe yeah. Pesci, you don't hear from a Meryl Streep, you don't hear, so, if you're gonna be a person that doesn't wanna fuck with anybody, don't fuck with anybody, but then if you're gonna be a person that's on something where you're supposed to be saying something, no, it, uh huh. And look at Sean Penn. He's a fucking maniac with what he believes but bring in. It, bring it back to us. I mean, you decide what you're willing to do. I mean, we we can make more money than we're making now if we decide to go mainstream. We've we've had chances to can do we? Yes, we've decided. Hire not. that hole. Let's do it. But and let's go. I don't want to get fired. But we've decided a long time ago that that's not our thing. There's a balance. We love money, but we also like having integrity with what we do with our radio show. We absolutely could be making a hell of a lot more money if we decided to maybe soften our delivery and go a little mainstream. How much money is how much money's the end? So, what, so how much is money? How much money can I give you, right? Uh, honestly, and I go, Dude, I'm, I'm, I, I go look. I don't want you around anymore in radio. I, How much can I give you to get the fuck out of radio? But I, we could. Uh, I'll take ten grand. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like I like what I do. I mean, the fact is, if uh, we get kicked off the air again, I, I'll be fine. But, but no, I, 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 I still no like amount doing, of money would nah, get you off. I, I like doing this. You have a you have a pay a payoff for your, for your your rest of your career. I don't th I don't think so because and not because of the same uh, reasons. The thing is. Like I said, if you have a million, you want two. It, it, it's you. You become. Uh, you you get a lifestyle that then costs a little more. It's relative. It's all so you fucking relative. Live, so if you have ten million, there's it's it's rare chance that you'll live like a multi thousandaire. You probably won't. No, I I, I like would slowly like start spending money. Right. It's it's like like uh, Howard Stern, five hundred million dollars. Do you think he's completely satisfied and goes, I don't want to make any more money? Do you think? No, of but course he does. It seems like it's possible to be like Bill go, Gates, things like that. Well, he he's very charitable. Yeah. Uh, but the thing, and and that's like an insane amount of money. That that's the amount of money that probably people go, I really don't need any more money. Is when you're in that thing where they list the top where he ten lost fucking half people and still and still, and still it's the like richest in the more world. billions. Than, yeah, yeah. There there are those people that are on the top ten wealth list that probably a lot of them are like, but you know, if I didn't make another dime. But to be truthful, if if uh, the career ended, you know, and and there was zero income coming in for me, no, I wouldn't be fucking happy, and I wouldn't be able to fucking live like I live. It's it's not, and I'm not, and I'm not spending a lot of fucking money. Relative to what I make, I'm not like overstepping uh, uh, my my means. But so I got a fucking mortgage, just like just like somebody that's working uh, a job making like fifty grand or whatever, or a uh, uh, two people are working in a household. They're pulling in eighty thousand. They're paying their mortgage. They're paying their electric bills. They're doing this, doing that. They got a car. It's the same fucking thing, only it's relative. It's up a notch. I I might have a better car, a bigger house, things like that. But I can't fucking stop working tomorrow. But what makes what would make Bill Gates, you know, like say if he did the radio, 
What? I'm, this is all it says is me wondering. Seinfeld has two hundred fifty million. He can stop working yeah. because he probably well, can't well, have a well, lifestyle what, that exceeds what that if, unless if, he goes lunatic. What's got Bill, eight billion what would, cars? What would, what would Bill <laughs> you know? Gates do, right? If Bill Gates came on the <laughs> show, but those guys, what would keep him from going? Ah. Then, ah, the nigga from Dell can suck my dick. Like, what would what, you have to face what? those guys? It, it's a matter. It becomes a matter, I think, for those guys of social. It's like you know you're socializing with them. You're not like once we got to know Bill Donahue, just, we became less angry at him because we saw him in a different way, not just as this fucking guy, this thing, but oh yeah, he's a guy that has humor. He's a guy. You start to see them differently because they acknowledge you differently too. So to them, Ludacris is no longer just this fucking black kid rat. He's all of a sudden, oh, that's Chris. He's a nice guy. I had a drink with him. He's a funny dude. We had fun with him. They look at you differently, too. They, they, everyone sees each you other know what, differently. As you're saying this right now, I just realized something. Mm -hmm. I'm irrelevant. Oh, Jesus. I'm, I'm not of the new... I'm not of the new world. What do you mean? Your I, old world? Uh, I, think Boston, I think Boston has damaged me beyond repair. I, don't be, I just don't believe in... Hmm. in white society like that i just believe them the reason i don't believe obama's going to be the president is the same thing what you just said made me realize that i just can't see a different fucking america i, I can't see it i think i'm I, I re I'm, and I'm being really honest, man. I, I just think I'm irrelevant. You're, you're think not irrelevant. irrelevant. You're not irrelevant. You just you, you don't want to get your hopes it. up and be hurt. That's not irrelevant to to, to not want to be disappointed, to not want to love something so much or, or want something so much that when it's not there, it really hurts. Is that's not irrelevant? I mean, uh, and, and you know, I don't, I don't consider that to be irrelevant. I just think I think I'm not. I don't know. Wow, Patrice just had you a speak your mind, Patrice. You, you've always yeah. spoken your mind on Tough Crowd. You, you spoke your mind, and yet you weren't. You you played the game in the sense where you knew what you had to do to be successful on the show. But you you always spoke your mind. That's I just silly. want to clear things up on Pal Talk. Um, Patrice didn't say I'm an elephant, so don't uh, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lost. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Seeing Ludacris is a big seeing Ludacris gentleman. like that. What does Patrice want for this country? <laughs> or for you? Like, see, what does yeah. seeing Ludacris like that do to you? Because it, it affected you in a way. It was like you're looking at it differently than I am. Um, but it, it seemed like it hit you in a different way. I just you wanted him to hold I, true to who he is. I just want when he's hanging out with his friends and not hanging out with uh, the Hollywood what? and the. I just, I just maybe, uh, mm. I just feel like. If I'm if I make something, it's more than I should have made. And if I make millions in this in this country, and that's what I mean. I just this is a world that, and I love America because there's nowhere else where a motherfucker like me could make money. Mm -hmm. You know, talking. Yeah. And uh, you know, so this is not an anti-American. This is just. I think this country, niggas are villains, man. You'd think that. I think niggas are villains, and I think motherfuckers who make it um, are still villains. I think Oprah's a villain to this country. I think that she is trying her best. And I think Obama shows you how much a villain we are because it's going to take white people to make him the president. It's going to take white people to put him where he needs to be and and it's real i don't i think being a, a black celebrity is not real it takes white people think... to accept you or go into the movie theater and pay the tickets like you just don't like the idea that white people have to put these people over that's a numbers game though and it is no, i'm not it's percentages it, it, it's, yeah. it's the idea it's the idea that i i look you think there's consider, still a big control issue I over black people? I consider more white guys to be my friend in this world right now than black people. I got two, three black friends maybe left because mm -hmm. I had to leave Boston. That's where my friends are. Most people I deal with are white, you know. Yeah. And it's not, I'm not delusional about it. I'm just saying it, we're not accepted, dude. We're, I, we're not accepted. No matter what Ludacris does, and I just use him as a euphemism for all of us. Mm -hmm. No matter what he does, 
he gonna be a nigga, man. To to the people who he's trying to not be a nigga to. But who though? And to whatever. But, 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 but seriously, but, like, to, to to the great odds, but, no, no, nigga. No, no. I don't. But, no, fucking but it's know. a legit question because, like Louis Black was saying, people lump in the government and they look at the government as this thing. entity. Yeah. Who are the people? I'm a white guy, and I, know I I'm have not no clue. Guy. I have no clue. So that's, maybe that's, that's what I'm afraid of. I don't want to. Look, if this, if this business really is a beast, I, I, I would think Oprah's in the belly. It, she is, she's as deep inside of oh, the beast. Oh, hell yeah. I'm not even in the mouth, really. I think I'm just still running around waiting to be f food. And, You're like a but bed she's bug. not a yeah, villain. A bed bug on the tip of a the nose. A villain to, to what? She has done something, but all it will take is one thing for, White people to go, naughty, naughty nigga, no matter what you do, you yeah. might as well just be you and make that money. And, and that's what he was doing. And I, and I, look, I've been there. I understand all that shit. I understand not having a fucking dime that a motherfucker gives you. You know, my girl would tell you, dude, I, be, I used to sit up it, with headaches worrying about money. Yeah. But at the same time, motherfucker called me and go, Patrice, we need you to do this, this, and the third. Like I stopped doing web junk, um, because it, it, I couldn't talk about Chinese people kicking each other in the balls no more. <laughs> I, I was done, and I said, "Look, for me to do this, this is how much money I'm gonna need to continue to lie." The first two hmm. things at web junk, I kept, I, I was honest. The next thing, I was lying, and I said, "This is how much you gotta pay me to lie." And and that money was goddamn good watching it come in. Those checks every week. Oh my god damn, look at this. <laughs> and once I, I decided to stop, I stopped. And I'm not holding everybody to some standard, dude, because there's things I've done mm -hmm. that I shouldn't have done. But I'm saying, what the fuck, man? When you get to this level and you don't share with other black people, share just information. Sh what the fuck is going on for you to be at the level that you are at? Will Smith, please, please do me a favor. How did you become this big? And please don't say it's just talent. <laughs> Where you get to be a nigga on screen for an hour and 25 minutes until the first other person come, just a nigga <laughs> and some monsters. Did you want something from Ludacris? Like, not, 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 not something, you know what I'm saying? Like, did you, you, you seem to be taking what his, him being a typical celebrity in a really personal, like, is it like, I want to be proud of any, I want to be proud of anybody who makes, I want motherfuckers to at least, hot removal gun. Let, <laughs> let me know that there are some, despite if that makes sense that i made it despite i'm in here despite something man i'm in here i wanted my dumb ex-managers man to make it with me and i it, it couldn't happen i want black management black eight i want that i i want it i want the shit i want black people to be respected man and he's a respected black man respected loved and i want the motherfucker to come in and say this is how you get to be that hmm. and and i respect ludicrous man when i watch him but then in this forum i watched him and i didn't respect him but how is he not saying that by doing what every other celebrity has to do it's how, not by, every other celebrity no no, no but no, it, it is we've had enough how is he not saying that because this is what you got to do people it's different not when you're that on that level of celebrity they're all the same on that level of celebrity as far as the way they answer questions <laughs> and you're reading into it from a black white issue and I'm saying is maybe he is telling you this is how you get respected. You don't say stupid shit or you don't get controversial when you don't need to or in situations where it's not necessary. Maybe he, that was an example of how to do it. Maybe that was an example of how to do it. You know what, though? Uh, it, we don't we don't operate. This is what, what I tell people about Boston. If I had to teach a white class and not just like if I had to really teach black people how to be proactive in whiteness. 
is to understand passive aggression. That's one of those things that white people will have over you. And I learned this by get, getting in trouble, unfortunately, with the law. And I had a probation officer. And I realized... Skagnetti? Skagnetti. Yeah, fucking prick. That's fucking Skagnetti. <laughs> and I realized no matter what, and this is what bothers me, I guess. And, and again, my training from Boston. And a lot of people don't have training. If you lived in Brooklyn your whole life, you don't have white people training. You just hang around niggas till you don't. Mm -hmm. Then you see white people and go, oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> white people. <laughs> that motherfucker, I, when I came in angry, the angry... Fucking, um, the victimized, angry, fucked over by the system nigga, right? When I came in there and, and I was being that and I was fucking salty and I was looking at him like I wanted to kill his whole family, things were bad. When I came in there, finally got just tired of it and he sees, I go, hey, good morning. And they beat me down. I finally changed my name to fucking Toby. <laughs> He didn't give a fuck about what was in my heart. He didn't give a fuck what was behind my eyes. As long as I came in and smiled and said, hello, sir, he didn't give a fuck about as long as I came in there and I smiled a big fucking smile and made him feel comfortable, everything was okay. And that's all. That's what I learned when I was 17, that white people don't give a fuck. They don't give a fuck no matter what you do. No matter what you do. Floyd Mayweather, Mayweather he was talking about, reason my, my black, white people just want, and when I say white, dude, again, I say this on stage, man. White people, when I say white people, it ain't you, motherfucker. Jerry the trucker, shut the fuck up. John the milkman, nigga, shut the fuck up. White people, you happen to be not you, the system that fucks you too, but makes you think that you're one of them. It's, 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 that's what's, fucks. they don't give a fuck. And I'm looking at Ludacris like, man, they don't give a fuck. No matter what you do, you're doing the right thing, yes. But it don't even fucking matter. Shit's changed Did you ever so think that the way you're much, looking at it, though, bro. has been skewered and maybe? I just said I'm irrelevant. You know, no, no, but I, I, might be. no I'm not saying irrelevant, but I'm saying without saying no. irrelevant or going all that way, does it ever, like, maybe the way you're looking at it is 50% right. And, but the other 50% that you're lumping in there is not right. Because again, it, it's, it, when you talk about Obama, how white people have to put, people like the guy. It, it's like, it, it's not, as black and white with every single issue. He's doing... Even though it doesn't exist. Let me exist. tell you something. The only thing black he's being, Obama, and I understand this, because he needs to be the president. Mm -hmm. The only thing... The only thing black he's doing is being black. And he's still a nigga. None of them are that honest. But again, on that level, none of them are honest. None of them. Not one white guy comes out and says a fucking honest word either. Not one guy on that level, and these are guys who are part of the system, who are as accepted as you can be, they get thrown out. Trent Lott said one wrong thing. You can't be more in than Trent Lott was. He said one wrong thing. Out. They throw each other out, too. On that level, it is disloyal to everybody. Yeah, but they don't throw an entire fucking culture out. See, you're right. A lot of times, white people will give up... White people will give up one of their own just to make a big, like, okay, we're going to trade. All right, niggas, here we're we going to trade you. This is why I, I spoke up against this whole Imus thing. It's like, I don't get, what is, this is our platform now. Don Imus, we will trade you one old white man saying nigga and an old television icon saying nigga mm -hmm. for you never saying nigga. The fact that black people right, right. own language own language we can say anything we fucking want that was the reparation reparations was the fact that we can be honest about what has happened to us and white people can't be honest so the fact is white people are sitting there going man i can't say nigga how the fuck we gonna stop niggas from saying nigga now i can't i'm not gonna say that bill the fucking cable guy is is doing this and thinking of this. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying at some point, do you believe that white people are going to let niggas run around doing shit that they can't do? So what happened was we will trade you one Imus and one uh, uh, Michael Richards 
for the fact that you can't say nigga no more. And we're going to invent a euphemism for nigga that I'm going to say way more than I ever said nigga in my life, <laughs> which is N-word. Yeah, yeah. But the you you keep saying was pushed by Jackson and Sharp. The you... Well, so you was pushed by the NAACP, bury him. Yeah, that wasn't that's white why, people didn't push that's that. That's why I got mad, because this mm. that's that whole thing was irrelevant, out of date niggers dealing with irrelevant, out of date white people, and that's who's doing shit now. Me and Patrice have to go to the old racist home. It, I think because because uh, I feel Al as Sharpton, irrelevant as you do. Al Sharpton <laughs> made a deal. We're gonna hear what the deal was. Get rid of Imus. Get rid of this motherfucker. All right, we we trade you two big white icons. Here's what we want: we want a, a couple of goofy niggas on on MSNBC <coughs> to read the news, and we want black people to to not be able to say nigga if we can't. Mm -hmm. And and the radio. But why is it if we can't though? Like, why is it still a white person pushing it thing? For it, like when you look at rap lyrics. Sharpton and Jackson, those guys were, were targeting, which is why I was so aggravated at rappers. They were targeting it way more than white society was. The white people got mad about the cop killing shit, but with the word nigger was all no, you, black the people only pushing place, that. The only place you heard it was like in a bar somewhere. It was like, well, if they can say it, why can't we say it? That's where you heard it from Whitey. Yeah. But then uh, everyone else, Jim's right, it was j j it, fucking Jesse. It was those guys. Didn't I just say that, though? Yeah, yeah. No, yes, no, but you can I'm say it. If we don't say it, you can never it's, say it. But it's not. See, again, I'm saying white is. Look, I said this a million times. The, the, thing, the thing that makes us angry, and a lot of us don't even know it. See, Jews, the thing that was good about the Holocaust, uh -oh. and listen to me. Oh, Jesus. I don't fuck that, man. Just If it is Jews listening and ready to say something, I know, just listen to I know me. where you're going. Even back in the pyramid days, Jews had a villain. It was Pharaoh and it was Hitler. Mm -hmm. So you can look at a motherfucker. It, it, it was so much Hitler that a motherfucker can't even have the Hitler mustache. <laughs> no, that was... It was it was names. It was Himmler. It was Heydrich. It was Rommel. It was fucking Mengele. It was a bunch of motherfuckers. These motherfuckers and their cronies. Who were the villain? Right. Black people, when we say white, the color white is like the mustache, except for there was no crime ever committed. There was no crime ever said to be done. It was, we're going to own you. Now we don't. Goodbye. All we got left is your skin color. I don't look at you as an oppressor. White people, when I say white, it is, it's vague. It's not even you. I, do, I wish I could move on. Not every German is looked at like a Nazi. Mm -hmm. Because Nazis were defined. Whiteness was never defined. And, and as far as the world changing, everything is internal, man. You have internal changes. When the fuck has there ever been an internal change in this country in terms of how we feel about each other. I I don't like being a villain, man. I don't like feeling like a villain such, no matter what I do. But there's been this huge change over time. Yes, In internally. your own lifetime, there's been a huge change that I see. I see it on the... Can I ask you a question? Uh, if you're a golfer... On the streets. If you're a golfer, yeah. if you're a golfer, mm -hmm. a white guy, golfer, right. from 1910. Right. And then the fact is that somebody decided now niggas can golf. Hmm. Where's the change other than niggas can golf? The change is that it's not this thing where we need the National Guard to, uh, where every time a Tiger Woods tees off. But it's, it's it, legislation it, it, and that's change. But people going, this is, wait, but you act like it's just someone puts down a law. Blacks do this. All right, let's just talk on call niggas. That's not the, you said there's no internal change. When something like that happens, that's, you, I, that's what I feel they do. But tigers embrace. Tigers embraced. White people don't look at it like that. I'm, I'm a white guy. It, it's not a matter of he was when, embraced by Fuzzy Zeller when he called him old chicken eating. Okay, that's Fuzzy Zeller. And, and yeah. then golf's a, a fucking shitty example. You talk about internal change in a society. People having internal change. You, do you really think that everyone is only going by the letter of the law? Well, we gotta let them vote. People don't feel that way. The majority of people don't feel that way.
The majority of people hate seeing that kind of stuff that's wrong. Here, here's my problem. There is no gray area. You don't credit that. No, I do. I, there's no gray area white people, meaning this. <laughs> Either I got to deal with, uh, and not you guys, it's just, mm. it, 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 I got to deal with fucking nigger, or I got to deal with I've never even heard the word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll give you I, that. I, I want to deal with an honest fucking, I'm not a racist, wanting everybody to die, racial white person. I've never mm -hmm. met a run-of-the-mill racial white person. That, who who that admits that black like, people annoy him, but yeah. doesn't hate black people. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Let okay. me tell you something. Fair Patrice, enough. I want the same thing. Patrice, I'll, 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 I'll be completely honest with you. I, when I'm driving down the street, I'll be completely honest. I'll be completely yeah, honest. partially honest. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll be exactly. partially honest Save with you. a little bit. When I'm driving down the street and I get cut off, uh, uh, or uh, some Asian guy is in the car in front of me, just doing that fucking thirty mile an hour shuffle down the expressway, I will look at him and and just blurt out a, a horrible Asian epithet. I'm in my car. He doesn't hear it. It's not hurting anybody. I don't give a shit. It makes me feel better. Fuck it. But it that doesn't mean I'm I'm like wow I fucking Asians fucking that yeah I, I'm not I'm not doing that uh, if a black guy is is doing the same thing cuts me off fucking uh, or some fucking little thug motherfucker is crossing uh, against the light and and doing the little shuffle in front of my truck so I can't fucking move oh you damn well know what's going through my fucking head. I'm not going to look at the next guy on the sidewalk and go, ah, you're all fucking. Nah. I'm not. I'm not going to do that. I don't. I don't feel. Look, so what? I don't feel that. I don't feel that black people, like Oprah or any, I don't think. I don't feel they owe money. I, I mean, I don't feel a motherfucker owes me their money or owes black people. But I do feel like I owe my mentorship to a motherfucker underneath me. I I owe. But how do you distribute something. that to people? I don't know. How but, do you but then we, distribute? We how does Ludacris then distribute that to you and say, "All right, because you, you're talking, he made it." What's the machine? Let me in on the secret. I don't this, even think that motherfucker knows what the secret is. I think he just made it and went, "Holy shit! Look at my house in my driveway." And you know, you know, there's this machine. You know that I can't tell you how the fuck I got sitting here. I can't. When I was doing construction, but, but see, white people. The beautiful thing about being white on that level is that. You and you don't white people get to be individual. You, there's nothing that you do that represents an entire group. And when a when an entire group is still trying to figure out their place in some ways, I, I just feel like if you that question I asked them, which had sellout in it, but I was getting at is, you know, no, not sellout. I'm sorry about that. But what do you do different? And you go, wow, shit. Nigga, mm -hmm. I get my feet done every week. That's all I was looking for because you know what? That would help some nigga on the street who's keeping it real, who love Ludacris, and that motherfucker go, shit, man. Every week a facial do me good, nigga. <laughs> That's yeah. all he owe. All he owe is to get this young man who's in on, on the corner, man, who don't believe in nothing. Who don't believe in nothing, just to say, you know what? Wow, I I, I like I like that group, uh, Leonard Skinner, man. I, I don't know. I like I like man. that music. I like the way that you think. I like some corny shit. Yeah, I watch Yogi Bear coming up. Just a a motherfucker that you think keeps it hood. Just say, look, man. I really like if you maybe he does that, but just not through the vehicle of your question. Maybe he does do that. Through doing films and for being in an Oscar-winning movie, that's not enough. But no, no. But maybe he, and he's also again. I have to defend the guy because he has attacked in his work. He has attacked. It's not like he laid down and praised O'Reilly. This is not. A, this is not about Ludacris, though. Don't. Play. No, no I, I mean, I'm always. It's just because he. It's, it's, all right. It's a, it's do you think? I, do you think then Ice Cube is looked at so people could go? I could be in goofy shit and and look like a, a an idiot. No, nope. climbing up the ladder no. and falling down off the roof. No, you know why? Because Ice Cube doesn't go, look, man, let me explain to you what's going on. Here's what a motherfucker on the street look. Because I'm in the middle. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm getting to the place where, oh, here, 
Hey, these motherfuckers come get ready to rob me. I'm, you know, looking at young killers like shit. And they don't know me, so what the fuck they gonna do but rob me and shit? But, Cube, his thing is, they looking at him like, nigga, that motherfucker, this is what I want to stop. Do you understand? Like, look at this motherfucker doing this goofy ass out of there yet. Nigga, what the fuck? But, Cube is 40 something. <laughs> He's not a killer no more. Mm -hmm. He used to be a killer. So please let me know what it's like to used to be a killer. <laughs> and then something happens and you're not a killer no more. And, and, and ultimately, please just let me know how to get someplace without having to be lucky enough to once had been a killer. And then I rapped. Because right now, rap is the only... Because he said, Ludacris said something. He goes, look, I'm a, I'm a young black entrepreneur, please just throw the other shit in there. Because I know I can't freestyle rap worth a fuck, and not everybody I know is a funny motherfucker, and not everybody I know can dunk. Mm -hmm. So uh, please let me know. And that's that's doctors, that's pilots, black pilot. Nigga, talk to me. Talk to me. What the fuck? Please tell me how you decided to be a... Because we need an us kind of thing beyond... The negativity, but a, a positive us. I think I a mean, lot of the things you're bringing up, though, are basic human things and clear. not so race based. Like, like the whole thing with easy for you I, to say. No, I, I think they are. Like, like how does how do you go from killer to making goofy movies like that? Uh, the guy is he's in his forties now. It's called what mellowing with age or this. I don't think it has well, to do with motherfuckers like motherfuckers don't know about that. Good credit. Let's take good credit. All right. <laughs> I, my mother had to co-sign me a truck. Mm -hmm. Okay, when the bill collectors used to call when I had no credit, didn't think, right. didn't know what it was, didn't know how to get it right, they call and I go suck my dick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really. I used to listen to American Idol with them. I used to be sitting there going, wait, let this motherfucker finish singing. I'll talk to you after this. Yeah. Get back on the phone, laugh at him, fuck with him. And then one day I looked, my credit says seven something, and I went, holy shit. Then I had to figure out how to be a motherfucker with good credit. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? And I have to share with somebody what I used to do. And then what happened, I had to get co-signed by my mama, who got her credit right by waiting 15 years. <laughs> you know but, what I mean? But, I just but how is just that? Just a little uh, information, man. Again, Look, that's a human thing. I fucking... You, my, you, the car I slept in was repoed. Dude, because it, of my it's credit a human, was shit. It's human experience, I know, man. But again, what white people can't do is... And, and, and what black people can't do either is separate the color thing from the issue. Like, I know, dude, I know your story. I, I'm not looking mm -hmm. at you like a white... You're, like no, I said, I you're a fucking bum made good. And, <laughs> yeah. I, and I say that with all due respect, man. That's what this country is, is bums made good. Mm -hmm. But once you make good, dude, you owe somebody something once you make good. Mm -hmm. You owe something. Not your money. You owe something. Yeah. You owe. All right, listen. We got to break you. You're, you're, you're absolutely right. We got we got Ed Norton on the uh, on the line here. Edward. Edward. Hey. How you doing, man? Hey, man. Yes. We're uh, we're having an intense conversation about uh, black black and white and race and Obama Opie. and McCain and it's getting uh, pretty pretty good in here today. Opie Anthony, uh, Jim Norton, Patrice O'Neill. Um, and hey, how you doing today? I'm good. You guys? Good. Good. We had here's what, what this is about. We had Ludacris came in. And uh, do you want to like when you're a celebrity, you're a, you're a big star. Does there get to be a point where you don't want to talk about certain things publicly uh, because of what it can do to you or what the overall consequences of it can be? Um, you know, I don't worry so much about that, but on but I also like don't necessarily think that uh, you know. I mean, it depends on how you talk about it. I I, I think. Uh, you got to sacrifice a bit of honesty. Is that well, like no, like? No, I, I just think you know. I, I don't always think that my my opinion is uh, necessarily what the world needs. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that. That's a good point. It's it because there's this credibility issue. I think is kind of what we were talking about, where people now ludicrous, uh, especially now working his way up to be being a you know in movies, doing movies, and uh, it seemed to Patrice. Like, he's kind of not being as honest as he used to be in order to keep that that bit of celebrity and, and, and success going. Well, let me, let me make sure you're not, don't, because this is it's a dangerous thing to miss. I, I don't, it's not that I'm saying he's being dishonest. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, what is it 
what is it that once you get to a certain level in this game, I just want to know what it is where you just can't say shit. <laughs> That's uh, that really impacts. And you talk about having an opinion, Edward. It's like your opinion does need to be heard because in this business, perception. So, cause I can, I'm just a crazy, useless motherfucker talking. Cause I'm perceived to be nothing in the game. But a man who who got respect, Oscar nominations, this that, your opinion is valuable. Valuable. I don't. I don't think it's less valuable than anybody else's. I, but I, I guess my point is, um, I, I only thing is, I try to make sure I'm actually informed about what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? Because people will ask you your opinion for a lot of things, and I think sometimes people reflexively answer. They'll like just answer just because they got asked, and not enough people say, you know what? I don't. I don't really know enough about that to 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 speak with um with with standing on it. But but th- hmm. you know things I feel like I know enough about. I'll. I'll I'll give give a perspective on. I mean, I I agree. Like, look, you know, we're in we're in some perilous times, and I definitely think it's not it's not a moment for people to keep quiet. I I agree with that. Like mm. you're you're cautious because like you know you're Edward Norton, you know people are going to ask you and listen to things you have to say about subjects that they wouldn't listen to the average person about, regardless of how informed you are. Like so, you're, you're more careful about answering because you don't want to. Uh, I think you know on some level you just got to be careful like people give you a platform for one set of reasons it doesn't it, it, it it's great I, I think you know I'll tell you something I admire about Barack Obama very sincerely which is I, th- I think he I think he very sincerely uh, holds within him the notion that that people with a different view might actually have a point and and I think there's a there's a I don't think it's a political p- posture with him I think having known him a little bit I, I think he's a a guy with a it's really interesting to me that conservatives are want to like slap the radical label on him because he he's actually if there was ever a quote unquote liberal that conservatives should be comfortable with he's the one because he is a very measured guy i don't think i've heard him say you know you shouldn't go into politics if you think you're the revolution and and i and i think his um i think as a listener and as a person who genuinely takes in the notion that that the opposing side might have a point. Um, he's he he's someone I think it's a, he's a real model to me of of kind of listening with respect to the other uh, side of the conversation. So you're saying that you, you, like just from what you know about him, he's not a knee jerk reactionary guy. He will actually weigh options as opposed I think to a lot it's of politics. The politicians. furthest thing from a reactionary guy. I think I think it's very interesting to me to hear conservatives talk about him as though he's a radical. He's he's a much much more measured. I think politician than what we've had. I mean, if radicalism is what's gone on for the last eight years. That's radical. That's that's ideological radicalism. Do you think uh, he's going to win? What's that? Think he's going to win? I do actually. Now, uh, really do. based um, based on what I would. Based on the fact that I think that you know you can you can only you can only sucker people the same way for so long. You know what I mean? And Americans. We may be we may be complacent because we're comfortable and that makes people lazy and complacent and 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 kind of more inclined to to just kind of go along with what's been going on. But but on the other hand, Americans I think get very. I think Americans we may be slow to kind of perceive, uh, you know, the the ways we're getting hoodwinked and bamboozled. But uh, but once we do, I think Americans have a real righteous kind of. Uh, Anger at being suckered, and I think, and I think that the, I think that the, you know, I think that the the emperor's clothes is off this particular set of lies that we've been being fed for a while, and I think mm. I don't think he's going to win by a landslide, but but I think that I think people are kind of recognizing that we're not that we're not as dynamic uh, as we used to be, and I don't think he's going to win. You don't think so? Based on the fact that there's. 200 million white people in this country and I don't think enough are going to vote for a black president. That's that's what I that's why I don't think you're going to win. And again, that's why I think maybe I'm just maybe I'm outdated. I think that you need a lot of white people to walk in and push a button for the black president. I, I think it's I, easy. I think he's got I think he's got that though. I don't think he does and I think that if you're in Los Angeles or if you're in New York Maybe Chicago, 
and uh, I don't know. Alabama, with a lot of they, black folk. They took Barack over Hillary. Uh, white people had the choice, and they took Barack over Hillary uh, uh, very strongly. But this is this is based on the fact that you believe in this system. And again, some shit I heard that bothered me. That's why I'm trying not to pay attention because I don't want to be bothered. I don't want to be upset. Is the fact that I, I knew the Bradley effect, the Bradley effect, where motherfuckers lie. They say I'm gonna do this. But they're not going to do it. And it's a hundred people representing the entire, like Nielsen ratings. It's one goofy family in Ohio representing what I watch. I, I think yeah. that, I mean, I think that there's going to be, there's, there's a lot of interesting things at play in this election. I think that there's no doubt that, that it's going to be, it's going to be a real referendum on how much the country's grown up or not. I mean, I think with conditions, with conditions in this country as bad as they are, um, if 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 those if, if those kinds of prejudices prevent us from making a dynamic change when we need it, it's going to say a lot about about who we actually are, you know, and what and how much we have actually grown up. And I think um, and I think uh, and that's true. I, I think it's going to be really interesting to see. You know, it's going to be really interesting mm. to see. I think it's going to be a very revealing. Which way, you know, it, it it's just, it's pretty wild. I mean, it it's going to say a lot. Um, whichever way it goes, it's going to say a lot. Now, you uh, you you know Obama? Have you uh, hung out with him? <laughs> I did. Well, I interacted with, hang on a second. Mm -hmm. okay. I, yeah, I interacted with him. Um, I, I work on low-income housing issues and stuff like that. I interacted with him when he was first in the Senate on on those some of those kind of, that kind of work and um I was I was really really very sincerely impressed with him. I thought he was a very unvarnished uh kind of guy, very self-aware. So you knew you knew him or had interacted with him before he was on the national yes, uh, stage, so. very much so. I I I I I thought I was very 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 impressed with his intelligence with his with the the measured way that he listened and uh, he he was very very um uh, you know, he he seemed to me to be a very very, uh, you know, not even a, just a deep thinker, but a very good manager. He see, he just seems to me to be a guy who, who who knows very well effectively how to use the intel the the, the skill sets of the people around him, and I think that's a huge huge um, asset for someone. I mean, people keep talking about experience. Like there there is not a person on the planet who's ready for that job. That's just the truth of it. Hmm. Nobody is ready for that job. It's that that job is beyond anybody's experience level. It's I, I'm much more interested in somebody having a sense of the times that we're living in, and 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 having and and being able to articulate a vision for who it is we're aspiring to be in 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 the years ahead. You know, mm -hmm. I think most of the best presidents have done that, have understood what the country needed at the moment that it was in, and I think. That. And is there is there a piece of you? This is, I just I'm just trying to try to maybe catch up to maybe where people are. <laughs> is there anything in you that sees a black guy, Edward? Anything that you go, wow, this it might be a black president, or is it all colorless? I mean, I it both excites me for that reason, in the sense that I think to me I'm not I'm not immune to the symbolism of, of wanting someone to lead us who I think actually represents the diversity of who we are. But at the same time, it's irrelevant to me, completely irrelevant. So, I mean, it's weird. It's schizophrenic. On the one hand, I think the fact of it is it, it is there and it's historic and exciting. Mm. But on, His but blackness, on a right? level, it means nothing to me. The, the fact that he's a black guy, right? Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Mm. Um, Boy, you are a good actor. Just, no, no, I mean from watching American History X. <laughs> you know, I mean, this, wow. Hey, uh, yeah, the, the, the curb scene took fifty-five takes. <laughs> I just couldn't do it. Can you CGI my foot off his head? <laughs> we, hey guys, I gotta jump. Oh damn! Yeah, we yeah, were getting a oh, yeah. The publicist called on the other line okay. saying you have to go, Dude, but we, we didn't even talk about Pride and Glory. This movie, you know, a lot I'll of. I'll call you back. How long are you guys on? 
Oh, yeah. oh, all right. You just got to go do something else for a little bit. Yeah, we're yeah. on another hour. So. All right. How about yeah? yeah call us when you can, right, and, we'll, and we'll t uh, we'll talk uh, pride and glory when you call back. Ed. All right, good enough. All, all right, right buddy. Thanks, That's man. awesome. Ed Edward Norton, everyone. The first half of the interview. I don't uh, agree with his politics or anything. But <laughs> he's, 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 I think he's a great actor, and uh, I expect that. I expect like everything that ha that's is what I expect. But maybe it's really? the truth, though. I expect. But what's what's my thing is I'm not saying you're wrong. I expect it, but what's phony about it? If that's Edward to tell the truth. Like he 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 he's pretty he's honest answer him. about like hey you know b b him being a black guy is part of it you know where it's like wow it's exciting and stuff. But here's like, the thing. I think that him calling made me is is helping me out is this when you say the same thing. He didn't say, oh, I, this is what I mean, do you see black? And, and something, something, some, some, something, 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 some, something, and something else. Yeah, I see that motherfucker's black, yeah. That's all I'm at. I, that's why I'd ask. That, I, what did but he, he did say, say that in a historic. Don't forget, he's also he, a guy that knew him, and and he was he was instead of harping on words like uh, platitudes, like, call well, it's hopeful and it's great. He was saying, yeah, I think he's a really good manager. And he's a guy who manages people around him well. He was a guy that was actually giving you tangible reasons why he likes Obama instead of some phony. I think it's all wonderful. All I want to hear is the just the words that look. Fucking, you talk to me about, and just to let you know, there's not, you talk to me about Robert Blake, Beretta. Mm -hmm. uh, this is old school shit. But the reason I thought Beretta never killed his wife. Yeah. It, it, I, wrong, right? He goes. I think he did. He oh, goes, he so did. wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. But here's what made me feel that, th that way. And then the reverse on OJ, what made me finally really believe he did it. Yeah. One is he wrote a book called If I Killed the Bitch. <laughs> yeah. If I Killed the Bitch is what I would have did. Where I go, you fucking asshole. Robert Blake goes, my wife, I hated the bitch. I wish she was dead. Mm -hmm. I, The wish came true. <laughs> that's just, a, that's it. Is but, that an exact but, quote from him? But I didn't, I didn't do it. Which I said, holy fuck. If you're a liar, you can't even lie like no, that. No, you'd be, I'm so devastated. That motherfucker said, just... thank God that bitch is dead, but I didn't kill her. A motherfucker to say that, that to me seemed as honest as you can get. Yeah. But I could be wrong, but I'm just talking about just, is he, do you see that he's black? That's what I mean. Mm -hmm. Either, either as a white person, this is the frustration. You gotta be a fucking maniac with a, with a, with a hood. Or, right. You gotta be a person who s doesn't see color. But he did, he didn't, it, I, I know what you mean. But it's like a lot of times you're expecting too much out of people on a phone interview for them to just come right out and go, okay, yeah, he's a black guy and I feel this way and that way. It, as opposed to when you ask him a question, like, do you like Obama? He's giving you a genuine answer. When you ask the racial question, he, I, he was saying that like, yeah, I, I understand and in a historical context, it's great. But, I mean, it's not the main reason I like him, and I thought that was a pretty genuine answer. It's almost like I if, didn't if, say he was being disingenuous. No, 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 I know, but do you see a black guy, Norton? What do you mean? When, when I you see Obama? Yeah, I see the first black president. You, but and you see a black guy. But not in the. I don't know how you mean that. In the sense, do I know he's black? Yeah, but when I started to like him was when I heard the answers he gave Matt Lauer, and I heard some of the answers because I didn't like him. Well, I want a black president enough to to go for a guy I didn't like just to see a black president. Mm -hmm. When he started giving like really tangible answers, like I go, oh, yeah, he is specific. Like you heard that, oh, he just talks to all these platitudes and whatever. And, I, and then I heard fucking Palin doing that. But what I heard him doing, I liked the answers he gave when I heard him answer directly. So that's mm. when I started to like him. So did I see a black guy? Like, I see you as a black Of course I know you're a black guy. But I see Patrice. I, I don't, I don't, I don't see him as Obama on that level because I don't know him or love him. But it, it's... But I asked him on a level because I don't know him. Right. I just asked him on a level, do you see a black guy? It, it, yeah, I do. But it doesn't need a context. But, but, but that's the thing about all of this that, that is dangerous for Ed Norton dangerous for Jim Norton, dangerous for anybody, is that the people who, for some reason, fucking assholes are in charge of context. I see, I see black guy first. <laughs> That's what I see. And, I saw, and, when, and, when, when he was running, I'm like, oh, black guy wants to and run. And you don't give a fuck, because you've established, and this is, listen, this is the reason. <laughs> Here we go. Pee Wee Herman and Michael Richards don't have a career right now. Yep. Mm. Is because of this. Look, Fucking blacks. I will, <laughs> I will never <laughs> take a job for Disney. Mm -hmm. 
Because I ultimately know at some point I'll jerk off. Like, 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 you're going to jerk off. Ultimately, I'll get caught jerking dildo. off something. I'll get caught yeah. doing something un-Disney. Mm -hmm. I know me. Right. So I need a job where it doesn't matter if I'm a jack-off at some point and get caught. Exactly. He said him, he's a jack offer <laughs> who set himself up to be a child man. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, one of these. Michael Richards set himself up to be, oh, Jerry's a, wacky he's a guy neighbor. who in his heart can just go, nah! And he set himself up to be a liar. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's what I'm talking about. Just, if you just say what you are for mm. half a second, no one will be able to stop you. These people won't be able to throw things in your face. What about this? What did you mean? Remember that motherfucker that said, he goes, that he insinuated that fighting dogs was as in is worse than rape yeah yeah <laughs> and i had to i had to sit there and, and and look in the air and go wait a minute if i if i see a woman getting raped on the left and somebody choking a kitten on the right <laughs> yeah which do i jerk off I, to <laughs> i jerk off to both <laughs> see what i'm saying i don't know like ultimately we're, we're so ready to be pushed in the corner of the 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 ass why do fucking cornballs Get to run? Why? Why do cornballs get to fuck up my ludicrous interview? I really want to <laughs> know that. I really want to meet them. Really want to know them. But cornballs out there, the people I don't know, the white people that's not you, <laughs> make motherfuckers yeah. answer questions like zubid zap zibab zubid bow. Like I don't want the jazz answer. Just say the shit. It's just be yeah, be honest. And just give an answer. I, that, 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 I agree with you 100% sure. on that one. It's like, Idealistically, of course, we would love that from those guys. And there is a way to say shit. And I'm not talking about zuba da diba jazz saying shit. There's a way to be completely honest and say it so it doesn't come off nasty or anything. It's just honesty. It's like, this is me. This is how I feel about certain things. This is how I get at certain times. This is what I, whatever the fuck. There's a way to say it where it doesn't sound like you're an extremist or a nut, but it's just you. Be fucking honest about it. Just you know? be you. That's it. Just be you. But you're right. So there's so simple. many people just want to dance around shit <clears throat> and not give a right answer. Uh, you know, I, 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 that answer, do you see, you know, black and they're like, oh, oh, I, no, I wasn't even well, what, He's black? I, you heard it. it it's ridiculous. That's what, you heard it. It's, it's not a question you used to. I wasn't trying to muscle him. I'm just saying. Do you see black? And and, it, and he never he did, said black. He did fess up to it when he said, yes, him being black and being the president did excite him. That was something that he did want to see. Okay. He did that. say that. Yes. Uh, you know, but but then do you see do you see color? Do you see color? That was kind of a Scooby Dabby Dooby Doo. But you may get. <laughs> you may. You may. I love the jazz answer. <laughs> I, I'm just gonna say that now when people ask me shit. That's a tough question for somebody who doesn't know who's asking or what the context of the whole day is. Right, been. you don't want to get on the phone in a all of a sudden. Do you butt. see black? Well, yeah, but what do you mean by like? But, uh, they, they, we could have been talking about how only racists see black first the whole morning. Right. He doesn't fucking know that. All of a sudden, you're saying this guy, do you see black? He knows Obama. Uh, fair yeah, enough. Yeah, but a lot That's of times true. context okay. doesn't matter. Fair enough. Right. Fair enough. That's fair. Why don't we take a break? Righty. <laughs> I'm going to have me a motherfucking pretzel. Do you want pretzel, baby? Fix Norton's mic. No. Oh, dude, it's I'm, I'm sorry. To, I, this is... Do right. it. Just keep doing it. you guys hear that? <laughs> well, now, now you're your mic here. is all fucked oh, up. No, 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 no. Hold on. Hold on. Keep doing the sound check. And of course, you got my mic from uh, before. Yeah, oh, and of course, this happened. Of course, this happens today when we were bragging about how great the equipment, is, yeah, the equipment here. is here. Of course, no, it, it might have been today. unplugged. Hit it again. Thank yeah. you, Danny. It was well, I, I, you, uh, you want to do a quick sound check? Uh, I, I got to do one. Oh, all right. Okay. Yeah, Jim's uh, sound check. <laughs> 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 uh, Patrice, where are you going to be? Uh, fixed it. It ain't got no gas in it. <laughs> what did he call it? What did he call the guy's name? He called his fucking sling blade mm -hmm. over at so and so's what? 
An operation? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm working over his outfit. His outfit? Yeah, Bill Cox outfit. Bill Cox outfit. <laughs> outfit. Fixing lawnmowers and whatnot. Guy's a fucking detective what was basically a garage which fixes <laughs> shitty lawnmowers. <laughs> Calls it an outfit. An outfit. <laughs> he's, he's acting like it's a fucking force to be reckoned with. Like, his outfit. Like it's a Ford motor play or something. Here, I'll sleep on a cot, you <laughs> right. fucking yeah. you parent murderer. I got some hard <laughs> sucking candies. and yeah, watch out for the rats and the cockroaches. <laughs> in exactly. Our outfit. Fix some we have plenty of those. Right. <laughs> I go talk to J.T. Walsh about fucking a little boy. <laughs> exactly. It's Dwight Yoakam. Creeping that. He was rocking ruled. Stupid outfit. We'll take uh, a break and come back. Catch a rising star, Providence, Rhode Island, Patrice O'Neill. Are you going to be doing comedy up there, Patrice? <laughs> Probably no, not. not anymore. <laughs> no, it's like I gotta, I, I gotta drive up there tomorrow, so I'm hoping I can like white people again. This is your one man uh, show. My one man show. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be a good name for the one man show. I want to like white people. I yeah. want to. <laughs> hey, that's not a bad. And then just go yeah, off. I want to like white folks. Mm, yeah, okay. I want right. to believe in you. We want to believe. I want to believe in you. <laughs> I do. Do. Ask me if I believe in white people. Uh, do you believe in white people? 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 Now, all right. Ask if I believe in black people. Do you believe in black people? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I think we'd, we'd, we'd answer that question. <laughs> Knowing Whitey, we would answer that question in death metal form. <laughs> yeah, just, no, 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 no. <laughs> no. I do have a Brenda Vaccaro voice. You are a fucking gravelly throated ass today. I should be blowing John Voigt while I'm on the phone with Murray. <laughs> or was it Maury and the cat? <laughs> Maury and the little dog. You were gonna ask me for money? <laughs> oh no, wait, Brenda Vaccaro is the other one. Brenda Vaccaro's. She's the one that played, uh. She used to do this commercial, and that's what I remember. Shit. It was like, hi, I'm Brenda Vaccaro. <laughs> And she'd take this big inhale, and it was a horrific uh, commercial. Maybe you could find it somewhere. It really is bad. Yeah. This is this little taste. Rock. No. Mega Go. This is Mega Go. Mega Go? From Mega Go. Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, I know where it's going. Don't try to die, and I'm a crime, but she's a rock, 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 she's a rock,
Now, see, Steve, that yeah. probably would have been the way to do it. Yeah. I, really... I didn't like the singing, although I don't like death metal, like the singing, but the, the music was very Dude, good. Dude, the distorted lyrics are where I, you know. Yeah, because I like to hear them. The I'm not, in this case, incredible. I'm not a fan of death metal, but holy crap, yeah. was that good. We were going to just play yeah. like a little sample, but <laughs> it just takes over you, man. Yeah. Mega, that's mega goo. In this mega case, goo. not understanding the lyrics is better. Yeah. Thank you. But you can well. hear it in there. <laughs> you can hear the whole thing. Well, there is a version where you can understand the lyrics. Well, which is the exact opposite <laughs> of that one. Well, we were going to just give you a taste of real wise yuppie and then oh. let me go to the one ants uh, referring to. Just because this is a drastic difference in the uh, Pendulum song. Yes. Uh, penned originally by Steve's old band Foundry. This is the same song you heard from Mega Go. Yeah. The dance mix version. Oh. A lot of dance mixes coming over there. A lot of dance mixes? I hope it. Oh. Love swinging like the other way. Are you dressed like Ziggy Stardust, motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. Oh, God. Ziggy <laughs> <laughs> Stardust. Okay. <laughs> I gotta get it, I'm gay. <laughs> This sounds like the beginning of Blade Runner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not him, though. The cover of his song. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. That's not me. The audience sent in covers of his song. Yeah. We're trying to get a very good song. You got it. song would have opened for Devo. Yeah, <laughs> wow, there you go. What I've learned from this contest so far is that a lot of yeah. our listeners are very musically talented, uh -huh. but they have no voice. Yeah, <laughs> they, yeah, they yeah, can't yeah. sing, and then they try to process yeah. it, and it just makes it even worse. Well, it makes well, it worse. Well, Brother Joe did a version. Brother Joe had to do uh, his own version. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's obviously done in the style of James Taylor. <laughs> down, down the crime of down the time. How you gotta pay for what you've done, you better run I've had all I can take, all your screaming in my ear My back is gonna break if you push me one more time It's getting heavy Wow, freaking Joe Yeah, that, that's a that's classic right. cool, man. Uh, Blood's getting cold It's so sweet I hope Joe makes it into a hit and then sues Steve <laughs> Wait, why? I don't know. Because it'd be fun. Yeah, no reason. How about one more? See you raked over the coals in the legal system for no reason. <laughs> yeah. One more taste. Uh, what is this, JV2? I think it's J7. J7 he goes with? Okay, J7, he did uh, this version of Pendulum. One more before we take a break, because I think Ed uh, Norton's going to call back.
Some techno, huh? It sure is. Uh, damn. One more or no? I was raving. I mean, if you want to talk to Norton, he's calling back like in like five minutes. Let's take a oh, break. Okay. We'll talk to Edward. We'll come back and then we'll play more. Edward yeah, we'll Norton after the break. Stay there. We, uh, we're back. We got Edward Norton on the phone calling back. He's a man of his word. We like that because sometimes people go, ah, I'll call you back. And next thing you know, they, uh, they're they off doing their thing. Uh, Edward. Hey, uh so why don't we talk about the movie? There's a there's a nice buzz about this movie, Pride and Glory. It's a good one, yeah. I'll, I'll vouch for this one. <laughs> <laughs> See, they play their role. We play ours. We we had openly admitted um, some of the movies that we pushed just because we liked the guy, and you know, I don't know. Like, uh, yeah, maybe it wasn't so good, you know, but well, yeah. well, you know, what we do is we're we're lucky enough to get screeners, uh, and I swear. I, I, no one offered me a screener of Pride and Glory. So I have no idea. So what I'm about to say might uh, be a little weird, but uh, we'll 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 get the buzz ahead of time, and we'll purposely not see a movie so we could have uh, integrity when we <laughs> when we talk to some of you guys. Yeah, I haven't seen this. Yeah, uh, but we know damn well that it's probably not going to be a good one. But we're we're hearing that this is really going to be yeah. a good movie. This yeah, Pride and Glory. A good one. I, I it's. Uh... It just, I don't know, it reminds me of, like, the, the guy who directed it, he just, he really, I don't know, he had a, it, like the deer hunter, you know, the way the deer hunter really feels like, like about working class mm. people, and it feels like, it just, he just achieved this really, I don't know, it, it really strong authenticity, and if you're a New Yorker, it's like, it, it's cool, it's a, it's a real in the street kind of badass. Yeah, for the people that don't know, the movie's about what? It's uh <laughs> It's a, it's about a family of cops in sure. New York and um and the one, you know, one of them kind of realizing that some of his family is tied up in some some shit they shouldn't be uh in and and kind of having to figure out what the hell, you know, what he's going to do. Um but it's it's uh it's a very hard hitting film. There's there's a bit you you know you guys were making the joke about the curbing scene in American History X. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a scene in this movie. I'm not with Colin Farrell in it that I, I since since I remember standing in the back of the audience watching that that scene in American History X, watching the way audiences would pretzel up, you know, when that happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there's a scene in this movie that's that does that harder than anything I've seen in a while. It's, really? Yeah. It's a it's it's one of the most like the audience at the film festival we first just went just went into fetus position it was like it was amazing to watch is it let me ask you a question as an actor cuz you're like a, you're a nice dude you're not a brutal guy even though you are acting, are there any scenes you've had to do in all these years that were that were just hard to do? Like they said when they, like an example, they did Amistad. They said it was like really chaining black people. They said it was really like a weird experience and painful for a lot of the actors. And it went beyond just, hey, we're actors doing this. Mm. Like it was hard. Is there anything you've had to do or, or been asked to do that you, like, even though you know your acting was kind of difficult? Um, you know, sometimes it's not the things you would think. I mean, stuff like, stuff, you know, violence is is done so technically you know it, it takes so many angles and you have to do things with such kind of choreography and precision mm -hmm. that it sort of takes the emotion out of it i think i think sometimes it's um you know it's uh i mean i guess uh you know i've never had to do anything with like treating a kid really badly or something i mean i think that would be tough but but mm -hmm. but uh i i don't know i you gotta you kind of gotta 
believe in the, the the big picture on a thing. If you like American History X, if you if you don't if you don't believe in what the movie's about, then then you're in trouble because you're going to have to do a uh, you know a bunch of stuff in it that. You're going. Why? Why are we doing this? You know, like, like I, I, I was thinking that movie in particular with the the scene you do with Elliot Gould is a uh, pretty brutal, right? It, it, yeah. See, now that I mean that's an example, but but what's interesting in that is like what 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 makes that good is like Elliot. You know, we we worked a while. We worked on the lines together. You you kind of craft mm. a scene, and then you're really you're really doing it together, and 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 so you're kind of all been going over and looking at it and going, is this you know, you, when you work on it with somebody, it kind of takes the uh, yeah, it takes the edge off. It, it, it is amazing when you watch it because as a, a viewer, you're just watching it for the first time. You see, and you just go, "Holy, Holy shit, crap. that yeah. is brutal!" Yeah, yeah. that is brutal. I, I, I think, I think that you know, there, there's this movie. Pride and Glory has some. Um, Pride and Glory has some really, really hard hitting stuff in it. I, I think it's, it's um. It, it reminds. It reminded me when I read it of like Serpico, you know, like some of the really mm. good Lumet films in the seventies of really kind of gritty, gritty um, street life of cops. And does it take and, place you know, in? And the cops who have seen it have been really, really into it. Does it uh, take place in you know the today or is it? Yeah, a... it, it, and it's all shot up in Washington Heights. Um, okay. And, and it's uh, yeah, I think it. I mean, not to put too political a thing on. We were talking politics. It's it's kind of, I kind of think it's about things that the country's been going through, like institutional lying. And, you know, what do you, like I was thinking, when I was reading the script, I was thinking about Abu Ghraib and, and like the way that, you know, there was some soldier, some soldier somewhere who was like really loyal to his, to his, you know, to his comrades and to the, to his army and to the country and all these things. Somebody said, I'm going to mail these pictures because this is not, what we signed up for and i was reading the script and going this is this is kind of about that like what how, how do you make how do you decide when it's that moment where you're going to kind of blow the whistle on on an institution hmm. that, that you're loyal lying, to you know what i mean when when do you when do you start holding you know the institution accountable um, well you not to interrupt you but you play a cop who's um you're kind of investigating a case that that it it, it, says it reveals uh, an incendiary uh Police corruption scandal, and it involves Colin Farrell, who plays your uh, your brother-in-law. So he's kind of a guy that's in some kind of trouble, and and you're investigating something that uncovers him. Yeah, exactly. Colin's amazing in it. He's he's. It's a really down in the shoes performance for him. It's does crazy. does he have to do the whole thing without the accent, huh? Yeah, you know, it's Jesus. great. He sounds I, like he's that's like, like that's, that's so, weird, so goddamn hard. I don't know how they <laughs> I don't do know. it. I could do it for a few like seconds or a few words or a line or a sentence, and then ah, it's just me. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we're, do you... We have a good brawl in it. Colin and I have a have a fight in the end. That's it's it's it was up there with the it's it's tough. Who do you think would really kick uh, ass in that one if you had to fight him? Mm, Colin's Colin's you know like uh, compact and, and <laughs> tough, but I've got reach on him. You know, like, yeah. I, I think I could like do the thing where you hold him by the forehead and <laughs> and you know keep him swinging at air and then just. So what what what's your build in this one? American History X or um, <laughs> Fight Club build? <laughs> what's that? Oh, uh, you know, cops. I got winter chunky. You know? Oh, okay. It's thick. You know what? Probably probably thick. Have you a little that? a little, like, a little thick. Yeah. More toward Fight Club. Skinny, show me a skinny New York cop. <laughs> it's right. true. <laughs> Edward Norton. And, and friend Jim Norton. I mean, there's something about the oh, ring of that, well. which I think a lot of people would, a big buzz would be created. What if? Should be a buddy film. Yeah. The Nortons. What if it just said Norton? Norton. Yeah. Absolutely. Norton. Yeah. Edward, Edward Norton. Norton. Like, both our names over it, kind of the way De Niro and Pacino have their names above a, yeah. a movie. Brothers. Like, we could have done, like, Step Brothers, you know? Yeah. That is the big thing to do I on know, the uh, ads. We were, I don't know why, we were, we're doing this film down in Louisiana, and, we, and there's some character actor whose last name is Cheeseman. Mm -hmm. uh, going to be in the movie, and we we started laughing, thinking like, you know, what if you were like this really like serious dramatic actor, and your last name was Cheeseman, and and it was like you know, Brando, De Niro, Cheeseman. Like, Cheese. <laughs> it would yes. be really hard. It would be really hard. Like some of them know. don't fit on the billboard very well. They don't yeah. look very good on Bro, a billboard. Cheeseman. Master and Commander. Like you know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> Jeez. What if what if it was like Jim Norton? 
Ed Cheeseman. <laughs> it's pretty bad. You know, you uh, you worked with our own Patrice O'Neill that we have sitting here right now. Do you remember guys from like small scenes you've done, like uh, or, or or guys that only had like a one scene? A lot of times, do you remember? Yeah, he was in. It was in Twenty Fifth Hour. Mm -hmm. um, Patrice, you played uh, big black door guy. Yeah, he's a big black door guy. Was oh, yeah. it? Yeah, at the club, at the club scene. Yeah, that's Patrice. Patrice, knock it off. <laughs> Were you, was Patrice uh, was Patrice a good actor? He's difficult to work he, with. Because he said that you're an intimidating guy to work with. You know, well, uh, Spike Spike kind of casts well, so it must, must, have, must have been something he saw. That's a backhanded uh, compliment. I like that. Hey, Spike liked Good. him. Fuck it, I got paid. <laughs> I got to say a few words in front of him. Screw it. <laughs> Patrice. Well, Tony Siragusa was in that movie. You remember him? The mm. goose. The Baltimore Ravens linebacker. Oh, really? He played the big Russian muscle guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, like, wow, yeah, yeah, yeah he was big. No, no. It, but I do remember movie, he was yeah. big. No, I haven't seen the movie, but I remember. No, <laughs> I did see that one. I think I've seen all your movies. Jesus Christ. I've not seen 25th Hour. That's a good one. Hey, Edward, your version of uh, The Incredible Hulk is out, coming out on DVD. What was it? <laughs> oh, okay. I'll see your. Okay. Well, then we got to. Well, it, it says his version, so I was wondering if you finally you oh, made no, good no, with no, that no. whole Hulk no, no, experience. No, no, no. Okay. I don't know what that. That's a. T that, wow, that's a bad typo, uh, then. I didn't even. I, I don't even. I thought know, you guys uh, made, uh, made nice, because I, I. You know, it, it's. it's it was, when's it coming out? It was well documented <laughs> that you were not, not happy with the whole Hulk movie. No, no, I, 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 I just wasn't, you know. It was more like Marvel. Those guys, you, the director and I were great. He was great. Yeah. You, you like? I like the fact that if you don't like a project, you, you're obviously not going to go out and promote it. But like a lot of guys, like you see, De Niro and Pacino just did uh, Righteous Kill, and you know we all know De Niro and Pacino are, you know, I mean they are who they are, and it wasn't a great film, um, and I'm sure that they knew that. I mean, you know, I mean they're not dummies. I mean they've both done enough brilliant work where they know when something is like eh, a paycheck or. Do you, what do you what what's going through someone's mind or as an actor when you got to go out and promote something that you know is kind of like uh, not your best or, yeah. or the or the film itself is there a frustration with that I mean at times I'm sure contractually I, they're I, obligated I haven't had that experience really too much <laughs> I mean I you know I really I pretty much try not to work on stuff unless unless I think there's something in it that's going to interest me you know to mm -hmm. talk about and um you know I, I I've I've had my differences with with on on some but but i guess you know mm. one thing is i i think one thing is you got to keep perspective i mean movies are movies you know it's not we're not running for president we're not we're not um you know i, I yeah I, I think that i think it's nice if i mean i i try to keep an integrity if i i'm not going to go and sit and say a bunch of crap about something that i don't feel right. um and and i definitely will say to people if like you know if don't put me in a. Don't, you probably don't want me out there in a situation where I'm gonna duck and dive around a question that because I'm not gonna fake <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it. But uh, and so in a lot of ways I'll leave it up to them. You know, I mean I, I'm a professional and I'll do my do my bit. But but you know it, the only problem to me is if people expect you to say something that you're not feeling in particular. I think I think that's always your right to kind of. Mm -hmm. Say, uh, how about the Jets this year? <laughs> <laughs> we, we may have asked you this the first time you called. I don't remember, but I know that there was a big thing. Where, where I think it was Tony Kay who directed American History X was really unhappy with the final thing. Do, do you know what it was that he wanted to happen that they didn't let happen, or what did he want to do that they nah, didn't? That was all a kind of a tempest in a teapot. He, he got into Tony was an interesting cat. He 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 kind of i just think had what i would call like completion anxiety you know some people never want to let it go and let uh. it be out there he didn't ultimately have he didn't ultimately have like he didn't ultimately have really specific differences with them i think he just literally never wanted to to keep working forever and but i you know i i know we have you know mutual acquaintances and he he's i know he i know he lo is very proud of the film um, completion anxiety is actually a good way to put it. It's like when you look at like uh, uh, Chinese democracy, Axel Rose uh, doing Chinese democracy. It's like it's like sometimes I think people are afraid just to kind of let the work be done and, and just kind of put it out as it is. They they kind of yeah, become perfectionist about it. Then it well yeah, then right. also I, I mean, it gets judged you get to a point where you realize like with these things that you never at a, at a certain point you let them go because you're too you're too close on them and 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 you never really know how they're going to break across other people and and. 
you got to you got to get out of the way. You know, you just got to let it. Yeah. Let it let it be what it is. But um, are you are you going to be on Entourage or what? Nah, you know I. They're talking I, about you I, a lot I on this. Uh, about it secondhand from everybody. I, hmm. Yeah. I, 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 a lot of people you know, thinking you're going to make an is, appearance is there a on Entourage. For me in it? Huh? You know, is, is this a big payday? Can I get a like you know a huge <laughs> like fee for a, a brief guest spot? Yeah, a quick little cameo. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Jim, are you still doing the cellar? I am. Yeah. Um, I'm there. Uh, I'm there sporadically throughout the week and on weekends when I'm in town. What about like you know like mid November? Yeah, yeah. I'll be. In, I'm actually in town. I'm, I'm doing book promotions starting early November, so I'll be gone probably like the first three weeks. But uh, say third, third and yeah, fourth I'm week. Be around home a lot more. And oh November, Jesus! Right? Don't do it. Now. Don't drop in to see him again because he'll he won't shut up about Why? it. Why? I didn't like... even mention it. If, if Edward, Edward wants to come and see a, a, a man of similar ilk, what's wrong with that? <laughs> a couple of celebrities talking afterwards. Uh, but yeah, I, I, you can. Uh, I'll have Roland uh, give you my information if you want to contact oh me. And, uh, this is not good. Come whenever you want, Edward. You have no idea what couple you just of, did. A couple of not, you know, yeah. mediocre looking Irish yeah. guys hanging out. Jimmy's yeah, getting to know people. Jimmy's gonna <laughs> skip home now because of you. Why? I'm just talking. <laughs> he's gonna be like zip. Did he do that? No. <laughs> a couple of friends that want to see each other's work. I'm gonna see. Uh, I'm gonna go see. Uh, Pride and glory. glory. Yes. Um, and, and they'll come see me. It's the way we work, guys. Guys like us. Um, <laughs> it's, such an ass. It's uh, October 24th. It's in. It's in theaters. And uh, I mean, everything you do, you're obviously you're obviously a great actor, man. It's I mean, good one. I, I think I think your 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 audience will like that movie. It's a, it's a good one for them. All right. It so it's like, it feels like a thin fall too. I, I don't really, you know. I mean, can you? I, I'm I'm trying to figure out what I'm really stoked to see. I can't really. Hmm. Yeah, it's not really much. You got. You should. Uh, you should come in and see us one of these days, Ed. Yeah, that'd be fun. Edward. Edward Norton. All I'll right, do. we should uh, let him go. Right, yes, yeah, he's, he's a very busy man. Pride right. and glory Thanks. in theaters October Thanks. nine days from now. Thank you, Edward. Thanks for the time. Bye. Good All luck, right. man. There he goes, Edward Norton. Maybe one of these days we'll actually get him in the studio. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> wouldn't that be something? That be I mean, it really seems like we do have good phone conversations he's with a, this he's gentleman. A, he's, a, he's a good phone. Uh, you know. He's, He's conversationally doesn't back off. I like him in uh, Rounders too. I didn't see that either. So oh fuck, you got to see that. He's he's really good. Plays a really good douche in that one. Uh, you know, I, I will actually probably see that before I see him at the cellar because I, I want to probably talk about that when he oh, comes. Oh god, oh, he asks Jimmy. about his, if he's going to be at the cellar and then asks, yeah, I'll be in uh, town, you know, November oh. maybe. Ah, oh, what's wrong with that? that? All of yeah, us Roland just, will give you my info. All of us just, just cringing. It's Believe just, me, I wanted uh, to say, you don't know how much I wanted him to say, get my info from Roland, but I didn't think that was going to come. So I offered <laughs> mine up. Offered Believe, if he said, fuck Roland, I would have said, well, here's my number, and I would have given it out on the air. <laughs> right on the air, just make sure he gets it. <laughs> That's very funny. Uh, what, what, what is, uh, what is what, that, Roland? Uh, Roland? I went to Mr. Norton's house where he threw a party. No, you did not. He means me. I had a party. No. None of you were invited. It was called a, a blanket party. It was me and a few I Marines and Roland. <laughs> we beat him with soap. Oh, oh. <laughs> no, but I did, though. You yeah, did? Yeah, he did. I was very bothered. I was like, Roland, why don't you bring me? He would have been so surprised and happy to see me. Were you just wow. sitting in the corner by yourself, or were people talking no, to you? people so, talked to me, the, yeah. the whole Judd Apatow crew. Mm -hmm. He party. They all what, did, what did you sweat on? <laughs> what kind Nothing. of furniture does he have? <laughs> he has a Bruce Springsteen memorabilia. Oh, he does. Yeah, he so told you, me, don't steal it. You had a, oh, you... <laughs> Walking out of his house with some shit. My dad has a guitar, Bruce. Really? Does yes. he? What were you telling me on the way home the other day? Elvis Presley autograph guitar. Oh, my dad has it. He's got an Elvis Presley autograph guitar in his family. Yeah, but it's bullshit because it's on 1985 calendar. <laughs> <laughs> they think that Roland. Um, I thought I expected more of that. <laughs> Quick improv calendar. <laughs> <laughs> said it was a guitar. We already said it was a guitar. Roland snored. <laughs> <laughs> he did. Oh, we already, we right. already established that it was a guitar. But it was a signed Jimmy. guitar. And you said a calendar. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Not even an answer, just, oh, all right. All right. What am I going to say? A literal open answer? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Jim, the joke didn't work because it was established. Jesus. It was established. It had already been pre-established. Pre we established the fact that it was a guitar, that's all. You're right. Fucking Rangers, go go screw, Roland. I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But you, but Why? You, but what? But, you, your, but your prospect dies of a heart attack, so there you go. Yeah, one down. <laughs> one down. <laughs> Why do you think they're Why do you think they're so good this year? I mean, are they, they going to remain good all year, or is this kind of like something that's just kind of you know, yeah. starting? Mm -hmm. Young players. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Find the day is brought to you by <laughs> WebEx.com. Hold meetings, make presentations, do it from the comfort of your own home or office. Check it out at WebEx.com. 
Let's get right into the runner-ups. A runner-up line of the day. I'm already making sacrifices. I just don't want to make more sacrifices. By pressing that button like, that says like, Negro. It's not <laughs> pressing the Negro button. What is, boy, is that a sacrifice? <laughs> I know you got copper tunnel syndrome in both wrists. <laughs> <laughs> we figured we'd throw the black man a bone today. Oh, uh, Jesus. Patrice That's wrong on a few levels there, Opie. I thought you were going to, like, cry or something. Patrice right. is just kind of you, mean, very, you got very emotional today. It's, it's a lot of shit today. Oh, I, haven't, like, I mm. haven't seen this side of mm. Patrice since the day he brought in the briefcase of the dildos. And we looked at him and said, what's wrong with you? <laughs> you all right? You all right? It's fine. Catch yeah. a rising star? Yeah. Providence, Rhode Island this weekend? I told you what, about Edward Norton, what would happen if you said I was in a movie with him. But you didn't talk to him, so he probably didn't. If you would have said, yeah, remember that scene we did? He might have related. Of course he would have, but we so had the real he... honesty, which was, that was yeah, yeah, Spike made the choice. If but, Spike made a choice, I'm sure he was good. I don't remember him for, from a hole in the wall. Because you weren't connecting him to anything. Like, I know what you're saying, but if you would have said to him, hey, what about... Uh, this thing we did, he might have talked to him, go, yeah, you were good or whatever. He just, he just one more guy. I wasn't, him I wasn't good. That's why I didn't say anything. Oh, because he, he said, listen, you tried it that way ten times. Why don't you try it this way? <gasps> did he really? really? Say that? Did he? Yeah, but oh shit. But Spike told me that I, I did something different, and Spike said, what the fuck you doing? He said, but uh, I said, uh, said, uh, I said, I'm the director. Ah oh, shit. That's true. No, I'm just, sorry. I brought, I'm sorry. I brought it up then, Patrice. Yeah. No, it doesn't matter. I, I I'll tell to, you. I just want to see. I was curious to see if he remembered you or not. But no, it doesn't matter. You're a memorable I, guy. Because he goes, he he just says, I th no, because but he doesn't. He, he was in character. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. You yourself were very memorable. When not you, not you're, you're then, an because he would character. only be in front of me during the scene. And then you I'll run tell away. You, I'll tell you somebody I met on that fucking set, who was as cool as anybody. Probably why he's not famous. Hmm. Barry Pepper. Barry Pepper. He, he's fucking, famous. That guy's fucking no, great. He's great. Who is he? But he's not an actor. You don't hear Barry too much. No. What's he? Well, who is but he? He's and what? really good. Barry Pepper. He's uh. He's one of those sniper. That fucking sniper. guy used to sing that song about him. I want to be a pepper too. <laughs> they everybody knows who Barry Pepper is. <laughs> 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 Barry Pepper was the sniper. Yeah. He in uh, uh 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 what movie is that? Exactly. Uh, no. <laughs> Not a big fucking Saving Private Saving Ryan. Saving Private Ryan. He was a sniper in Saving Private yeah. Ryan. Yeah. But, but he was, was up on the oh. tower. And he's saying a yes. prayer and he's shooting motherfuckers in the head. He was the little dog in this boy's life. <laughs> 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 asshole. There he is. There's, fucking guy was a great yeah. guy. There's Barry Pepper. Barry Pepper. Fucking dude was great. Yeah, yep. he's good. But uh, yeah, I knew he wasn't. Cool. He was, but how many yeah. different? But he was cool. How many different people could he play? He's Barry Pepper. Pepper. He's I don't know. He's like, he's like he a character right actor. He's good. He fucking a great actor. Yeah, yeah he, he was. And he was a yeah. fucking human being. Was he? He was a just talking. An yeah. asshole. A fucking great information. Watch him marry. Really? Oh. Good about inside that shit. shitty John Travolta movie. But which one? Oh ever... fuck! What? That, which one was that? What the, the worst movie? The fucking of all time. The Scientology movie. Oh, oh that, that fucking what? Battlefield, Battlefield Earth. Earth. Yeah. Oh. Battlefield Earth. Oh, so he was saying Dude. some shit. What was he saying? Like John well, Travolta would go suck you, some you dick know what? before. <laughs> nah, but you know how you joke with a motherfucker, right? And he goes with a nice joke. Where you go, he uh, he had just came out, I think, with 40, what, what's that movie, uh, 51 or something? That, yeah, um, the baseball movie. The baseball movie, yeah. movie. 60, 60, 60, 61. 61, sorry. And yeah, he 51 goes, was no good because that was still nine, <laughs> 10 short of the record. <laughs> and so he does that, he does that. But I just go, I just fuck with him, and I go, hey, man, I, I, I loved you in Battlefield Earth. Thought that was the best. Oh, shit. And, and you touched it, the reality of a motherfucker, by saying... What evidently is the worst movie ever made? And of said all he was time, yeah. And if he had a went, thank you, thank you. And I don't know. And this guy's a dick. Yeah. But he looked at me like I'll fuck you up. You say some shit. Like, <laughs> like he really was like. Ugh. And I go, good man, good fucking man. And he just goes that movie. And he just started yapping about shit. Yeah. And it was hilarious, dude. Uh, and, that's you know, cool. He was Roger yeah, Maris. Yeah. And, and then he, you know, then he asked Pepper. Patrice a question because he thought he was a lighting guy. He had no idea. He was actually a guy who oh, would go on the radio shit. and say it. <laughs> no, but, but it's, but, uh, I didn't say, that's what I'm saying. I'm not betraying what he fucking no, said. No, no, you know, I don't want to. But fucking, um, but, but I knew he would, because I only saw Ed, Ed Norton during the scene. He would, I mean, after, he, after he said cut, he would walk away and go back into what he was doing. 
Yeah. And, and it was weird because it was all like um, those type of actors. It, they were all not. Actors. After cut, it was done. So mm-hmm. it was like Anna Paquin and but not Rosario wants Dawson. A yap like you do. It's not a yap. Oh, shut the fuck. Oh, fuck it. Wait, what do you think? It. It's it's it's, it's, is it a method actor thing, though? I, it's I don't know. not even. It's just. Oh, Dick Cheney's going to the hospital. Oh, that's shit. What said. Oh, no. Well, that's, oh, that was, that's news about. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now he's no big deal. It's going so, uh, Heather Hoffman, we were going to see that film. No, they were all. You know, they were all um, actors. Meg Ryan. Any movie I've been in was just with actors. Like they do their thing. Was Meg Ryan's the same thing? Yeah, just... What's she being like that for? If I do like 14 takes, it was never like, hey, what's... what's hi. <laughs> really? Oh. No. No. All right, now I'm into this. It's not wow. even. A, it's not. So a it's not even acknowledgement that thing. you're a human being. All right. It's not well, a, I apologize about the yap thing. It's man. not just the hey, well, how's the weather? Because I'm not that guy. There was no. You're saying I'm an aloof asshole. So it was just like it was just the connection not a, thing. There was no connection. Like hard to connect with them off the camera. Yeah, it was just. It was just absolutely. You nothing. would think they would actually mm. talk a little bit about something. I just, got it now. Yeah. All right. I'm sorry. Uh, and Patrice. cut. Nice shoes. Nothing. It's just, like uh, watching extras. You know, with your base. What happens is when you do it, especially when you're doing a series. Oh yeah, yes. You, you a lot of times mm-hmm. would just do it and then you go back to your trailer for a little while. Like there was there were times. That's was, your training. Trailer. No. Oh, the, the, I training was training. something I apparently have never had. Yes, if you've seen my work, <laughs> yeah. sure I have. Open Stan- mouth, Stan- Stan- money up front. Stanislavski is the name of that fucking transvestite. He sucks. <laughs> Mr. Slavsky. <Hey>, Stan. <laughs> Why am I helping him with this? I'm chipping in on my own faggot joke. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it wasn't bad. I just knew, you know, he just didn't cut. And then yeah. The only thing he had to say was try it another way. Like and I, and I did. Did he say was he being trying to help you? Or was of like, course just he not didn't say, "Hey, it. you fat non-actor." No, but was Spike. he trying to help you, or did he not like it? You think like? Yeah. No, he didn't like it. Where was fucking Spike to just say? Spike I'm is somewhere the directing, and then why weren't and he then, directing? And then his one, I was so basically, I was doing okay at the time because Spike didn't say nothing. As soon as I did it his way. Spike goes, what was that? Were you changing? Because I would laugh at, I would laugh. Spike liked I was laughing at him for doing seven years. For whatever reason, Spike thought my character should be like, damn, that's fucked up. Because that's how niggas would be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, damn, nigga, you get ready to do seven years? But in 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 white method world, it'd be like, you should be more concerning. Because a white guy would go, dude. But a oh. black guy goes, God damn, nigga. But because that's our way of loving you. It's like, yeah, yeah. nigga, you got AIDS? God damn, nigga, that's <laughs> fucked up. Let's go out and chill, you know? <laughs> yeah. But I was doing it just like that. Like, so God he wanted damn. like, oh, man. Like, oh, oh sugar, sugar beats. Oh, and, uh, seven years. So, oh. So how'd you, so how'd you, how'd you do it for, for what Edward's take? I cared. Like you were like, oh, seven years, man. Yeah. And Spike was like, what happened to the laugh? I go, Boop, boop, boop. What made it in the movie? Which version? I've never seen I the movie. I forgot. Don't know. You didn't see it? Who are you, fucking Spencer Tracy? You don't watch your own work? <laughs> nope. What's the matter with you? I don't. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Guess who ate all the dinner? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. That's fucking funny. Uh, uh, Let's do another runner-up. <laughs> Line of the day. Webex.com. Here's another runner-up. We're only five minutes into the first period, and this is Willie O'Ree's fifth fight. <laughs> and he hasn't even gotten off his own bench yet. <laughs> right. Right. Just, uh, stupid Willie tech. O'Ree. First yeah. black uh, hockey Who's player. Who's the other guy? Pudgem? Pudgem? Uh, 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 Pumpsy? Pumpsy. Pumpsy Green. Pumpsy Green. Pumpsy. Mm. Give me a Pumpsy. <sighs> the go, fuck is this? Rolling. Go Sabres, <clears throat> motherfucker. Go Sabres. Hey, can I get a copy of um, Go Sabres, motherfucker? Thank you. Pride and joy. Pride and I wanted to talk about that Marvel thing, but that wouldn't have went them. Like, Marvel is... The fact that he said that, it means Marvel is coming out. They're assholes. Marvel, yeah. Marvel Comics, that's they... You know, they like... John Farrow not going to get his money. And, and and it's really... Any time yeah. a, a, a successful movie comes out, the sequel, motherfuckers get double. What they right. made before, mm-hmm. and they fucking with Favreau about that, and Terrence Howard wanted his money, and Marvel's like, motherfucker, the characters are the star, yeah, not, not you. you. Go fuck yourself. Who did Terrence Howard play? I didn't see the Damn. first one. He plays War Machine. Which, which, which War Machine is that? Well, it's it's Iron Man's sidekick. Mm. Is he critical in the movie? 
Uh, War Machine, if you're a comic fan, War Machine and Iron Man is like Robin. Here's why they said that about Terrence Howard, because they replaced Batman 50 times. Like, like you're, It is the character. Uh, yeah. They also replaced but look the at Joker. What we do, look at what happens. You know what, though? X-Men. Mm. Look at what happens. Look at the Batman movies and what happened to them once they start going into yeah. changing. Yeah, but I don't like You Terrence. can't change like Wolverine, though. I didn't like Terrence Howard in Iron Man. No. Okay. I was thinking about <laughs> it. I was honest with you. Yeah, it was unbelievable. You're a fan. You're a fan of. I love Cheadle and everything he does. I love both both of those guys. Are I'm a fan of Terrence Howard, but I don't know. But he kind of took me out of the movie a little bit. But do you know the character of the of War Machine? Hell no. It doesn't matter, right? I feel you. Hell no. Yeah, I mean that's that. I love the movie, by the way. But you know, but I could see why they might want to replace him. I wish. Well, they didn't replace him because he sucked. They replaced him because he wanted some money. Yeah. Yeah, I wish Ludacris would want to talk more about Crash. I want to talk about Terrence yeah, Howard. He had nothing to do with Crash. How he should have fucking. Uh, well, Chris was barely in Crash. How uh, he was actually really. He had a great moment it at was the end too, where he fucking. He had a, a few those Chinese very people go, and, and there was so many fucking. And Matt D Matt Dillon should not have been nominated for that. As much as I like him, should have been Terrence Howard. Was was should have been the supporting Matt actor. Matt Dillon was. Fucking great. He really man. was, but I thought the deeper role was fucking Terrence Howard playing that guy tortured by Hollywood and break it down and fucking fighting the breakdown for so long was crash. Not as predictable. His crash was amazing. Yeah, fucking man. I'll, I'll, like I'll, I'll argue. I'll argue. What? Trees don't like I'll argue crash with anybody. Cheetle was fucking irate. I rate you. Stupid role in his goddamn Rangers. Fuck the Rangers. And they pulled her out of the car. I rate you. Well, that saved you. But that was a statement. No, that wasn't about him and her. That was kind of a statement about the duality of the way you look at cops. Where yeah, because Hollywood always paints the racist white cop asshole. But in this case, they show you like, all right, there are this side of them. But then again, these are guys that fucking will crawl into a burning car to pull you out. It wasn't about the, the, the symbolism of him saving her was not him saving her. It was just about the duality of everybody. Everybody got was painted stereotypically and everybody was given redemption. Everybody. I love the fact that they show him being a fucking scumbag because that's how you expect him to paint a white cop. And then you see the side of him holding his father. And you're like, oh, yeah, there is another side that you don't fucking just like with Ludacris and the other dude. Yeah. I mean, the other dude is a fucking they're robbing somebody. And and then all of a sudden he's got this St. Christopher medal and you see that he's, there's a fucking gentleness to him. There's redemption for every guy. Don Cheadle, a motherfucker. But that's why The Wire is good. That's why mm. The Wire is a great show. Because there is no... You know, when you pitch a show in a room and you go, Hey, listen, I'm going to play a motherfucker that just says fuck you, right? <laughs> so where, where's the... They, they call it this, the comeuppance. Where's, where's the comeuppance? It's like, what come up and mm. where, where does the character, for being what he is, end up suffering? It, it, it that's what I'm saying. I, there is no, the wire would write a death for a motherfucker who was really, really not supposed to die <laughs> in Hollywood land. And I don't, I don't give a shit about redemption. No, 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 but, no, no, but I'm saying, this is not, but it wasn't a politically correct redemption. It was, they were just showing the, the fact that they showed the white cop being a fucking, uh, uh, a scumbag is how you expect it. They showed things you didn't expect them to show. Like the little girl, when she was about to get shot, I, I was absolutely convinced she was going to get shot. Yeah. Because that's the big emotional scene. But they did it a different way. When Ludacris and the other guy robbed fucking them, they showed you, you know what? She's not some paranoid white suburban bitch who's just scared of blackness. You know what? There was a right okay, reason for her I, to make you, that you know judgment. Where, okay, I'll go with... Here's, here's where... Only thing I go with is this. Like I'll go, I go with you on everything except for it would have been cool if Matt Dillon had a finger popped, what's her name? Yeah. Like he did, and then another white cop saved her. Like instead of him, it wasn't about saving the same bitch that he finger raped. It wasn't about her though and him. I, I think that you had. Do you understand to, what I'm saying? Yes. I'm with you 100 percent except for the the little girl. Like it, like the the ludicrous and Lorenz Tate didn't have to rob her, the girl who was like, fuck black. <clears throat> like, have another arbitrary black person do it, and then have them rob somebody who's not fucking her, and instead of right, right, all these the six degrees of... Don't forget, it is... Bug me. You, don't forget, I mean, when you look at The Wire, which I mean is my favorite show ever, you have five seasons of development. When you look at a movie, hour you have an hour and 45 minutes, minutes is, yeah. to get your point across, mm -hmm. which is, uh, when you look at a guy like Matt Dillon, they didn't want to give redemption to all cops. They were just showing you an individual, almost like 
a little piece, and it wasn't necessarily, if he would have rescued another black woman mm -hmm. in a fire, you would be like, who gives a fuck? But this was to kind of make the point a little bit clear. I didn't take it as literally as that. They were showing you like, yeah, this guy was a scumbag, and he caused this rift, and then they showed you this fucking turmoil that these fucking two people have to go through in their marriage because of the shit he did. That it's not just, hey, they go home and don't care about it. You know what I mean? They, yeah. they almost destroyed the fucking marriage. They sh I love the fact they showed what Hollywood does to black directors. Uh, isn't he supposed to be the smart one? Like, with the, 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 with Terrence Howard was fucking fighting to hold on to this thing. And this, you, you know what I mean? It was like they really got in deep, I thought. But you had to juxtapose these people together for that to make sense. I mean, that, that was just... Matt you Dillon. know what? Yeah, you you should have diddled her when she was hanging by the fucking seatbelt. <laughs> and you're you're loving it. <laughs> I would have shown. You love it more than I hate it. So I'm oh you know, like Norton. Norton loves it. His point is, which by the way is why I'm, you know, Obama just because he's black. Because I don't want to be convinced <laughs> <was> otherwise. Because <laughs> he might convince me otherwise. Like, cause like his, damn, now his, I can't. Th his thoughtfulness is way outweighing my thoughtfulness of why I don't like it. I just uh -huh. don't. I just didn't like it. On a, on just a fucking prehistoric level. No, I think it was like an NYU film student. Yeah, but I really studied it. So yeah. I, I that movie really it. hit me. Like most movies don't, because I so you, you so know the formula in yeah. all. Of, you know what I mean? It's like you. What what did they show recently? Where they just this is the, how they deal with stereotypes? Is they just put a black guy and a white guy and switch them with no thought to it at all? Uh -huh. Like oh look, the bad guy's white, the cop is black. It's like such a phony. Like I hate it. I hate it when they had um, Michael Clark Duncan as Kingpin. I'm a big comic book guy, and Kingpin is a big bad white dude in the comics, mm -hmm. and I don't want to see a black Kingpin. Just yeah. just cause. Just because why? Like I don't want to see nothing black that's like. You know, here's Negro for you. Like, yeah. please don't. I want to see white people yeah. where they're supposed to look be. How, look how good we are. We actually, yeah. we know it's a white guy. It's supposed to be a white guy. We cast a black guy in this. You know, it was another, yeah. another great mm. great moment. Like, Jaws it, it, will be played by a stingray. Fucking hilarious. Fucking awful. Oh, shit. That's right on, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with that, let's do uh, another that's, runner yeah, up. That's a damn good one. <laughs> another runner up line of the day, slowly going through these. It, what did you say? It would look more realistic. If he just, like, wrote hair on a piece of paper and tape it to his head. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that had me laughing my ass off. That fucking wig oh. was har I've Atrocious. seen I've seen burn victims look better in baseball caps <laughs> than that guy. <laughs> that fucking wig. I wish we took a picture of that. Dude, it oh. was horrendous. We'll be back. We'll see I tried to my camera kept closing. <laughs> it was embarrassed for him. The shutter wouldn't open. <laughs> Paul in Brooklyn was winking. Paulie, what's up? Hey. Hey guys, hey. Uh, I know you guys are trying to wrap up, but I, I kind of wanted to just piggyback Jimmy's point about the duality of the characters because uh, the guy that shot Lorenz Tate is he Ryan Felipe, the guy who played the the, the cop who was originally uh, Matt Dillon's partner. Yes, right. So so he, so he was this you know do good cop and stop judging people based upon you know what they sure. look like, and then Lorenz Tate gets in the car and he's so afraid of the guy that he, he basically blows him away and he leaves him in the in the in the, uh, in the field, you know. It, it was it was it was a good scene. I really liked the movie, and I kind of disagree with Patrice. And no, no, wait a minute, man. Left, I'm so. not I'm not against. I'm just saying my problem with the duality of man is that it happened to all the characters intertwined in the movie. That's all. Yeah. I, I agree with you, the duality of man, but his duality had to be to shoot one of the. It's like that affected him. To, if well, he I, did I, that, I why didn't he just shoot any arbitrary trying. nigga? That's what would happen in a, in real life. I think they were trying to say that that's in, in each one of us, and 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 I mean, it would have been great if they could have just you know had fifty million actors trying to portray. Hey, all you two roles, motherfuckers right? love that shit. You have have deconstructed it. All I did was like, ah, fuck this, and your deconstruction outweighs my fuck it. Mm -hmm. You guys yeah. like it uh, more than I hate it. But you know what, him shooting that former point, him shooting that guy was again. There's certain anti Hollywood things I liked about it, and they always make the idealistic guy like him, the hero who is without flaw. And in this case, you're like, wow, even a guy who thinks like this is a fucking fearful, reactionary, little racist shit, too. Ooh, it just reminds me of you Pretty know, Woman. It's just like, yeah. you know, I just remind me of... No, well, Pretty Woman well. was so good. You carry the hooker. You know, I love... <sighs> hooker make good. I, yeah. uh, it, 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 but I get what you're saying. Well, I just, this guy you know. gets it. Topper in uh, Reno says you have a point there, Patrice. Topper. How you doing today? Good. Hey. Patrice, you got a point in what you're saying because in the first Batman, they cast Billy T. Williams to be 
you know, the black guy, Harvey Dent, and then realized when they were making a second Batman that they screwed up because Harvey Dent turns into Two-Face, and it had to be a white guy. So Billy T couldn't replay his role because... Right, because they added they added Mr. Black Guy. That's what I had. Mm. I did, they, here's the on in here here Negroes. <laughs> where does it spoil? I'm I'm re- I put whoever's black in the comic. There's not many black comic book motherfuckers, but you know it, Spawn <laughs> Spawn and that movie sucked balls. About but Meteor Man. They've oh, made me- eighty five Meteor Man. <laughs> they made eighty five um uh, uh <laughs> Punishers Meteor. Man. They can make another Spawn that's better. Yeah. yeah, or Power Man. They it's didn't not care. A, it, 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 no one, no one cared about Spawn. A lot of pun- and they will not let Punisher suck. No. Thomas Jane did it. Shitty, uh, what's his name? Did it. Dolph Lundgren did it. <laughs> did and, Dolph? Do yeah, it? he did the original Punisher, and and yes. and uh, Thomas Jane did it, and they both stunk, and they're doing another one. Wow. Because <laughs> he's white. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, maybe not. Let's, ain't ain't let's... no second nigga characters there. Ain't no, they'll have a green motherfucker come back for a second movie, <laughs> which is the Hulk before <laughs> before a bad nigga movie. <laughs> ain't, <laughs> ain't no boys in the hood redux, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfuckers, uh, man, sick. Here's, here's another runner-up. Comedy tomorrow. Here's another <laughs> runner-up line of the day. <laughs> Watch Midnight Run. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm prepared for the end of their career. Lawrence Taylor Chrysler. <laughs> Come take a crack at our prices. <laughs> <laughs> We're breaking the legs of high prices. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> We gotta we gotta find some of those commercials. Yeah, find some bad acting, bad the old, the old football guys doing their uh, car dealership commercial. It's like all sports guys go yeah. to that. Baseball players mm-hmm. have done it, and there was one I saw. Uh, shit, doesn't what's his name from Denver from the Broncos? Yeah, John Denver we played used on to our show. Yeah, <laughs> no. Elway, Elway. Yeah, Elway. Oh, John Denver, you know, playing playing oh. company. <laughs> <laughs> Boo. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Edward Norton's been on hold the whole time. He just heard that bomb, he, Jimmy. He Jimmy joked his plane yeah. into the ground. Yeah. <laughs> Edward Norton wanted. See, when? <laughs> uh, no, I think Edward would appreciate the fact that not only have I been standing at the plate, yeah. but I've swung at every pitch. <laughs> yes. And I've fouled a few off. Good eye. Good I've eye, got Jim. a few doubles off the wall. That one. Uh, was good blowing bad, outside, Jim. and yeah. I swung in the yeah, back of my bad. hand. He got him. He got him. Ultimately, struck him out. Team play because the pitcher got to leave because he spent about twenty pitches on, just on Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, God bless I was bad like job. fucking Bugs Bunny, just swinging back and forth and back and forth on both sides. <laughs> One, of the two, three, <laughs> yeah. Actually, it was the uh, guest house gorillas. <laughs> How was it? That were swinging. What Bugs Bunny was pitching. I'm just a boy, and he was also playing first base. Bugs Bunny. Second, you say I'm play, just third a base. boy. <laughs> You was you did grow when fucking goddamn Bugs Bunny could be racist. Of course. Oh yeah. God, they people. What do you mean could be? There's there there's racist fucking Bugs Bunny. Co- not racist. Racist. Oh, no, they're yeah. fucking uh, gone. Oh, I got him. I got a copy. I got him at do, home. Do you have unga bunga bunga? Binga binga oh, binga bunga. Motherfucker, wow. was, the funniest hmm. racial co- uh, ever. And Tom and Jerry, the black maid, just oh, racist. Yeah. Actually. Oh no, she holds up a little dress and. The way they drew her, all ro- all shiny. Mm-hmm. After his first date, they went to see a Birth of a Nation. <laughs> <laughs> Great movie. Yeah. Do you see how he's blinking his eyes forty-seven times in a row? <laughs> oh, look at how vivid watermelon is in the twenties. Fucking fucking Lucas Arts couldn't make watermelon that vivid. <laughs> vivid watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> so bright, it's with the, great. With the, with the silent film piano thing as they're hanging a nigga. And then the, the, the word board comes on, that'll teach him. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, oh. Jesus Classic. Christ. Well, we, uh, we're we going to go home now. <laughs> yeah, let's... Uh, Line of the daytime? Oh, we hadn't done that. Patrice is going to be at Catch a Rising Star in Providence, Rhode Island. Thanks. Starting tomorrow? Yeah, if I can get through this. Hang in there. I'm going to hang in there. I mean, it is yeah. what it is. You need I just hug? don't want to be misunderstood with Dude, the whole you thing. Want yeah. hug, yeah? You want Roland to hug you? I don't want Roland to ever touch me. <laughs> you are going to be an American with a black president, so don't worry. Yeah. I, uh, it's going to happen. I hope so. I don't gonna think happen. so, but I don't I don't think so, but I hope so. Oh, it's not going to make a difference. There's a little honey. There she is. 
Who? See, when you ask me what black now, chick Now, would you I fuck thought... the one on the right of the bottom to get to her? <laughs> no. <laughs> wow. That's a... Oh, I wouldn't fuck her either, Would you though? fuck her to get because... to the, the little, the cute black one? Okay. You would? <laughs> no. no. would you fuck the other one to get to the cute black one? No. <laughs> Not a chance, right? I, for the story, yeah. I'd, I'd fuck Lucy a ball right now to get to that bitch. Lucy a ball. <laughs> oh, Ricky. Uh, oh, oh, oh. I mean, I hope you uh, Anthony likes, um, there's a little black on, on MSNBC. She's, on MSNBC. She's like, oh, she's about, about now. About nine. Not, They're not showing now, her. Now. Where is she? They're showing well, this they, dog face bitch. With she's things. just a guest, though. The bitch, she, she'll be on like... Seconds. Gotta be a couple of seconds. They can't yeah, get go back to her. Fucking list. They certainly ain't going back to her. There you, there you go. go. The Look on, on the left. left. The one on the bottom that. right, that ugly bitch on the no, red. The no, the one all the way on the left. left. Look at She's her. ugly. She got a big fat sh fucking sherry from the view head. No, no the one on the left. left. I know. I, I got it. On the left. Look at her. The one that looks like Patrice in a way. Oh, it does not. Leave Fred Berry alone. Leave her a fucking. She does not. It kind of does. Holy shit. And I'm not going with the with y'all look alike bullshit. No, that kind of looks like you in a way. Doesn't look like me. She certainly does. I don't know what she's saying, but she's burning a bridge. With that vet girl hairdo. Oh, is she awful? God damn it! You want fucker to get to that other piece of ass? Ugh. Come on, right, who's your fi would Why you fuck her to get to Jessica Alba? What would you do? Let me think. Would you fuck her to get to, would get you to fuck this Jessica big black Alba? bitch to get to Jessica Alba? Jessica Alba's pretty hot. But you had to eat this fat chick's ass if she had a roid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Why do you have to add this? She oh, has to have a roid. Motherfucker! She has to have a roid. A pristine, <laughs> she's a wait, fatty. No. <laughs> a pristine that bitch. Uh, uh, a at her at her best, that uh, bitch. The, would you the, fuck that, her to get to that one at her best? <laughs> would be 150 pounds lighter. <laughs> Jessica Alba, to get to um. As she is, her best. Yeah. Her asshole smells good. Yeah. You know. Uh. She might have some shaving bumps on her pussy. Yeah. Oh, she yeah. Her well. pussy has white stuff in the corner, like the mouth of a mannequin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, God. You see, like, those guys that you don't see for a while, and they're on fucking antidepressants. You're like, things are good. They have the spittle oh, trail. She has a pussy that sounds like this. Yeah. Oh. Sounds like a fruit roll off when it opens. When you're storing <laughs> Elmer's glue in there. <laughs> uh. All right, and you, have Jessica to, and you have to eat it till she comes. Yeah. I would, oh, oh no, now I gotta God. go down. Yeah. Well, you gotta go down. Oh, you have no. to eat it till she comes. Sixty nine, her on top. Oh, you talking about just sticking it in? I would just yeah. stick it in. I'd fucking wouldn't but you even look fuck, at her. You gotta fuck her until you come or she come. Oh damn, that's right. You can't just oh, stick it that. in. What the fuck? You gonna make no. us go down on black pussy now? Uh, why not? She's, she's all right. It's, it's, she got to do something different with her hair. She got a fucking I go down, I'll go down great to kazoo hairdo. Look like uncooked chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go down on your bald white oh. pussy. Go. Better than fucking burnt steakums. <laughs> <laughs> it's all delicious to me. It's all protein, motherfucker. <laughs> uncooked chicken. Uncooked chicken. I go get E. coli, salmonella, eating white pussy. I didn't say nothing about it. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. That's good. Uh, that's oh, terrible. All right, should we do line of the day? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is Jessica Alba. Look at that, my man. Right here. Yeah, she's... Oh, yeah. All right, she's definitely. ridiculous. Yeah, why not? Would you let her take a dump on your chest, Aunt? Who, Jessica Alba? Yeah. Uh, Say it was a one log... Yeah, no because her, her shit smells different. Hey, one it's log. coming out of a delicious yeah. white lower intestine. Uh, <laughs> one log on your chest. One log from Jessica Alba. Yeah. And see. you have to kiss... The taper tip, you have to lean down and go, oh, Jesus, no, no one turns it see, all into dust. You know why? You know why? Because he sensed I was going to say yes. <laughs> so he's kind of like, he's got to make it more but disgusting. I will, I, will, right? I will say there are women who are pretty enough to be that disgust. Like, yeah. it's yes. almost not nasty looking at her. Watching just, Thank her, you. Like, shit. It's just almost now you not move nasty. Now, now have it. Now yeah, but trannies don't fall in that category. Oh, if you let a tranny <laughs> shit on you, you need psychological help. You never let a dude <laughs> okay. take a dump on you? Ugh, no. No man colon. Just thought girl. it was his black cock. <laughs> no, <laughs> so, let me explain something. Let me explain Would you let uh, Serena yeah. Williams uh, drop a log on your chest to get to Jessica mm, Alba? No. I, no. Her shits are probably liquid and awful. Who? Yeah. Serena. 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 Serena got a lot of Gatorade. Ass, like, no. Her ass is too big to let you dump, though. It's just... 
I know oh. it's something. It's something like she just has a a full a baby shit no could be out of her asshole, <laughs> and you couldn't see it yet. Like it's got to travel to the crack. I don't know if I'd let. <laughs> like Jessica, yes. for some reason, she just looks her butt so little. Mm. It's almost not, Serena though. I I put my face right in it in a mm. second without a problem. Baby Jessica shit stink. Like before she shits, the log probably pokes out in here. Oh, God damn. You wouldn't take a log out of that Man, ass? Man, <laughs> I might. <laughs> Look the at that. What the is even that? start saying that's luscious. That's a little, too, it's a little, a little too juicy. Are you the fuck fucking... You say. I don't want to... I'm not going to talk... I'm this not is... going to talk to white people about that ass I not being fantastic. That's, it's a little you too big. You discuss it. That is devastating. <laughs> In a good that way? It, that's not a good picture. Of it. When a when a when, listen, a if a nigga t- says anything that's wrong about an ass as the right, if I say that shit's tremendous or unbelievable or fucking, f- any, that's good. Yeah. That shit is monstrous. Absolutely. That is a juicy, no. fat, <laughs> kidding ass. That's I where we're. But I wouldn't let her take a dump on me, and I wouldn't no. let Jessica Dude, Alba take a fucking dump. Th- on me either. That's where but we're. That, I put my face in there. That's where we're different. Most white guys are are scared of that ass. Wow. White guys are ridiculous. But a white Why? guy packing, Why are we a, packing a monster. If you're packing at least that banana, you should take it up. Look, I like a big I'm fat not even, ass. I'm not packing nothing, and I'm going for that. I'm going to do what something. Is this nineteen fucking ninety six. Look at this ass. Look at this, at this ass. Fuck no. Are man. you fucking crazy? Her I'm ass cheeks have no. nothing to do with her asshole. She Dude. washes her like, asshole. Is Danny into this ass? He's not. Of course nodding. he is, because he's the one that pulled it up. Uh, yeah, I like I like big dumpers. Can you show a better picture of her ass? Like big right. black uh, dumpers. There is no I don't care better what picture there. of her ass. That, that is a shape is like that. A big fat, uh, no, not unattractive ass. ass. Not that so unattractive, but no, if, you need, if you need to, I'll take that. But I love it. I'll tell you what I'd like to see that ass in. I don't like the bathing suit she's wearing. It's not to me. It's not like a fat ass. I would rather see that in a thong. I think would show the shape of it better because it looks like it's like. Uncomfortably big and hard. I would rather see it in the phone. I wouldn't give a fuck if somebody nailed a paper bag to it. I fucking put my face <laughs> in that oh, ass. Her oh, ass man. is delicious. Hell no, man. Let me see that, Danny. Go down a little way, bit. Let me see that picture. There's way too much going on. Oh. That's a better picture of it. Oh, that shows. Yeah. Hell the fuck no. That shows the juiciness of, and and the and the firmness juiciness. of it. Juiciness. Oh. Yeah, I like a big ass dude. Oh, yeah. Common is it? Looks like that, man. Common. Looks like Lawrence Taylor in a bikini bottom or something. I don't if you didn't disrespect. See the, don't even no. be that racist. If you didn't see the the rest of her, you would think that might be a guy just, in a bikini. Oh, just said, oh damn! Wait a minute. If you didn't see the top of you, go wait. You would go. That's. That's I, LT. That's fucking. Like you saw that ass, you would go, oh shit. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Fuck no. That's, that's Vince Wilfork from the Patriots. She looks like, it looks like two different people have been melded together in a yeah, fucking yeah, photo. That, that's, that's a terrible that's, photo. Oh, that, that ass is horrid. Oh, fuck you. Fuck all horrid of Horrid ass. See, I was getting over everything. Would you and put then, your dick in it? Dude, this. Would I put my dick in it? <laughs> in the ass. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Let me tell you something. <laughs> I would. I would poison my girl like they did in Flowers in the Attic slowly. If if Venus will, is she, I mean, if Serena promised me some pussy, I slowly poison my girl with um with with what's that poison that kills you slow? Uh, strychnine. Strychnine. Or, slowly. You know, if she says, as soon as your girl's dead, arsenic. you get to sniff my asshole. Not even go with me. Mm-hmm. Just sniff no. my asshole. <laughs> Just sniff, just put my face in that onion. Hell no, man. Smell an asshole is fucking good. Here's, here's where Danny really shows his talents. Yeah. He could navigate the web and just find anything uh, that has to do with pornography. Oh, this is tame, though. This is only ass parade. Yeah. Oh, let's see ass This parade. is rookie ass stuff. Let's see ass parade. All right, ready? All right, well, ready? Let me ask you a question, Hope. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Anybody that'll make you murder your woman? Hell no. Murder. Why? Hypothetical murder. <laughs> oh, play murder! Play murder! What what girl would cause you to, to oh, give it God, all up and leave? Play murder! <laughs> As parade! Play murder! I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give the hacky answer. Nah, because then this they're gonna kill me. They're gonna kill me. Because I'm, I'm very happy. Dude, I can't think. I'm very happy. Oh, and I, I can't telling think you, of I'm anyone. I'm play murdering my girl for Serena's Jessica asshole. Biel. But you you're not even in this. I'm you just can't saying. be. I play fucking. When you I play murder anybody. For Jessica <laughs> Biel. Fuck well, it's yeah. easy for you to say that. Would you, who would you play murder? What woman is out there that you play murder your woman for? Play murder. That oh. you say I'll kill a bitch for that. Yeah. Mm, I don't know. 
Nice talking to you. I'm being honest. <laughs> nice talking I'm to you. I'm fucking being honest, Patrice. <laughs> fucking goddamn it. <laughs> nice talking Where am I going to go with the basic Jessica Biel? No, anybody. Jessica somebody that's hey, I just killed in. someone for Jessica Biel. Yeah, like you somebody else. I was... <laughs> I know about, you're happy. We know, everybody's dude, happy. I, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm playing it real. I don't... I used to be really into Drew Barrymore. You would have killed your girl for Drew Barrymore back in the day? An oh, E.T. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but we still, we're talking man cold pussy shit. We the, just talking the old, some pussy. The old, <laughs> the old girl? Yeah, no problem for Drew Barrymore. Yes. Yes. Yay. What like is your not Drew's older and uh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah she's yeah. not uh, yeah. she's not murder anyone a bull. Like I would ruin yeah. any relationship. Yeah. And I've ever had happy ones even. Mm hmm. For Scarlett Johansson. Any oh, girl I dated. Oh, there's another one. I, I would ruin. That right. was pretty good. My ex-girlfriend, I would have pushed into a fucking manhole face first. <laughs> for Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> she, my girlfriend got mad at me Push one time. Push her into Serena's ass. To get the, she, and if you're talking, and I, and I just, I play killed my girl for just Venus's ass. But, mm -hmm. um, I, I, right now. And on my mind is probably Raven Simone. I'd like to. Wow, uh, really? Yeah, I'd just like to see Little what's fucking, going on. Uh, really? Raven Simone. I'd like to see from, what's going on with Raven Simone. Show. She's about 22. She's getting into her yeah. world. I, yeah. I just like She's to, got a big ass on her. I like, nah, it's like a flat butt, but I'd is like it? to. Yeah, I like to take a take a shot. I thought she had a bigger ass. So I mean, I'm, play kill is one, and then you know, yeah. but you know, my mm. my taste in terms mm. of like whatever play killing. Well, what do we got here? What are these big ass white chicks? Wow, that looks like an arm. Oh fuck! <laughs> that, that is that looks like somebody's arm. <laughs> That's bizarre. It's like fucking it's, Siamese twin Uncle Festers. It's it's camera angle though. It's all about camera is it? angle. Yeah. yeah, sometimes they make it look like a mosquito. And look how oh, looks like oh, the okay. two big bug eyes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and look at her cute, look at her cute little asshole. <laughs> mosquito, two big bug eye butt cheeks, and a dick going in. Looks like the stinger. <laughs> that's gonna make me laugh all day. <laughs> Fucking holy that's, shit! That's classic. Yeah, but that's forced perspective or whatever. Oh, like, you oh, can't man. shoot a camera angle. <laughs> That makes a cock look that big if it's not. Mm -hmm. There's a fucking car park next to it. <laughs> There's a fucking cloud around the that's head of it. That's too much ass for you? No. No, that top line on the That's the same ass Hell as Serena. Fucking no, you fucking it's, racist it's not bastard. the same. It, it, it's the same ass as Serena. Hell no, it's that's not. That's Serena's ass. Hell no, no, it's white. There you go. Thank That's you. Right. Thank you, Anna. At least, oh, thanks. At least, thank you very much. I just want to point out the difference. <laughs> thank you for being. Thank you, <laughs> thank you so much. But the, but the bottom line, but what you're saying is not accurate because it's like who, ca the Anthony, you're raising like yeah the wholesomeness and just the inbred goodness of it. Right. But that right. doesn't that doesn't make it a better ass. Well, uh, yeah. I hope for that. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That was Norton. You should have thrown it, thrown it, thrown it. Never mind. Have, no, I'm throwing that joke out. We should have thrown it. He should have explained it like he was talking about Crash. He just should have thrown it in Crash as a part of that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that that ass has redemption. <laughs> the duality the of duality sheets. The duality of those sheets. <laughs> <laughs> they drop a watery shit, but then you clean them and you can eat them. <laughs> oh, Jesus. All right. Let's do line of the day and get out of here. Line of the We're day. We're actually running out of show. Yeah. We're going to turn yes. us off in less than a couple nice. minutes. Five minutes, Cause, man. Because we, uh, we didn't do any breaks today. Just a little one. All right. Patrice, thanks. Always a pleasure. A pleasure. <laughs> thanks. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm, just like, I'm like that tone. Well, I, I know. I'm with you to a point. I mean, I'm I'm the only one here openly that admits that I got a thing for black girls. But the Serena Williams things that's that's fucking I've way a lot too of black much shit. That's too much. That's too much. That's too much shit going on. All right. Well, uh, let's see. So I fucked a lot. Of, I, I have. <laughs> but Patrice, that's too, uh, that's just it's a, there's a racial angle there. There's too much muscle, man. But y'all like your women that just look like they, you know, y'all get mad if they are five, seven, one hundred and ten pounds. It bothers you. Look at the sex symbols. You call them a fat bitch. M uh, most, of the, most of the white sex symbols way, way back, J. Mansfield, Marilyn Monroe, look at that, girls. Johansson. They so, were voluptuous. Oh, now well, look at them. Well, Scarlett look Johansson's like a fucking big, juicy ass. And what is she doing? That bitch is in a movie every every other f fucking mm -hmm. millennium. No one puts her in shit. No, they love her. Are you kidding me? They what love she her. In? Are we gonna, she, she probably just chooses the prestige. The prestige. The prestige. It was on last night. People that suggested. Great. That's another one I'll fucking put on every time I'm just to fall asleep. I've to. never seen The prestige. I saw the other one, The Illusionist. No, The Illusionist isn't. 
no, 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 no. Prestige is good. Is this Look, anal hell? Oh, the one on the right. The one on the Keith right. Keith and Philly wants anal hell. The one on the right. Which one on the right? On the there's, right with the light blue one. You mean that the, one there. the two on the right? <laughs> Look at that. That's too much it's ass. It's too big. It's just not too much ass. It's too big. It's Where? just not too much I like, ass. No, I like a big. I gotta be honest. A big ass. That's that's. I kind of like a big fat one. A nice fat ass. That's Fat. I don't get, understand oh. why you don't like. I with mean, the, I, with the cellulite and all that. Look at that shit. pussy on that. Look at that Patrice, fucking you, fat pussy. You openly admitted that you like the cellulite and all that that's going on on the ass too. I, I, there's a to it me. Looks like a here's here's me. I, it's hard for me to have this argument because even ones that you you guys will find to be attractive. I find value in a teeny booty up in the air with the asshole showing and the pussy showing. There's value to that. Yeah. But but this this, this is the delicious ass, man. That it's is not, not a, a turn on. Uh, a <clears> big <throat> fat like with the and, fucking and a bump. flat a flat oh, yeah. ass is not a turn on. But I, you uh, know there's value. Shutting us off. Yeah. Oops. Literally, they're going. Yeah, yeah, that's what the music is. Uh, what's our line of the day? Out of curiosity, webex.com. Here's your line of the day. Here. Here. Did you have to do the intro? I know, right? Line of the day. Line of the day. Line of the day. Yeah. Let's go from one to ten. We'll give you a thirty. The sports with white people still dominate. That's the ones they pay attention to the we, white guy. We wrote root for off. The, we root for the astronauts. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking There's nice. a little improv stand-up for you. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we get all the plugs in. Everybody good? Yeah. Patrice is uh, <clears throat> this week in uh, Providence, Rhode Island, in the, the catch. And I have uh, Boston, November 15th, Ooh. and L.A., December 12th, 13th, at the Viper Room. Ooh. So if I sell the fucking tickets. Nice. Please. Viper Room. Yeah, you guys small. Oh, right Thanks for having me, guys. Thank you, Patrice O'Neill. Oh, I, <laughs> I got to take